So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto was Kurama Mote in Shunin exams. The movie. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Being whole. Naruto rubbed his aching head as he came, climbing to his feet shakily. What happened? He grunted in pain as his head stung. Then the memory came back to him, distorted by a distinct crimson haze. Um, the grass shinobi mused quietly, Naruto in her grasp. It seems the Kaiubi brat is still alive. She then opened his orange jacket and rolled up his shirt. The grass Kanoichi was amused at what she saw, on the boy's stomach was an intricate seal on the boy's stomach, so this is the seal. The Kusagakur Kanoichi moved her right hand behind herself, a mini purple fire lighting up on each fingertip. Naruto thrashed in her grasp, trying desperately to free himself. The ninja's amazingly long tongue, however, would not relinquish him from its grasp. Hey. He shouted, wriggling as much as the foreign appendage would allow. Let me. Go. The super-powerful grass ninja, who was actually Orochimaru in disguise, thrust his flaming fingers into Naruto's unprotected abdomen, crying, Gaju Fuin. Naruto's face contorted into a silent scream as the Hibi Senen's agile digits dug into his stomach, clenching around the soft flesh. The red bled from his eyes as the Kikbi's chakra disappeared, returning his eyes to their natural blue. His canine teeth shrunk to their original size, and his nails were once more blunt and soft. Then, without warning, the blonde boy slumped, unconscious. As the grass Kanoichi tossed him into the depth of the abyss, all Naruto heard was a scream. Erg. Naruto gripped his head as white chakra started to form around him. Its energy sizzled, crackled like food under the stove. The white energy hissed upon bodily contact, causing Naruto great pain. He screamed when memories suddenly flashed once more. For a brief second he saw a red-haired woman being held by a blonde-haired man. Naruto a feminine voice echoed his mind. My Naruto isn't a fussy eater. Eat a lot and grow up to be a big boy. Go to bed early and sleep well, take your bath every day. The voice coughed. She sounded like she was in pain. Make friends, it doesn't matter how many. Just make sure they're real friends. People you can trust even a few is enough. And study your ninjutsu. I was never good at it, maybe you will be. Everyone has things they are good at and things they are not. So don't feel bad if you can't do it all. Make sure you listen to the teachers at the academy. Naruto's head continued to spin as he kept screaming. The white chakra whirled around him and began to sprout tails. One. Two. Three. And remember to avoid the three vices of the shinobi. Don't borrow money if you can help it. Save what you earn from missions. No drinking alcohol until you're 20 and don't overdo it or you'll ruin your body. Four. Five. Six tails. The agony continued. And as for women, well I'm a woman so I don't know what to say, but there are only men and women in this world and you'll want a girlfriend someday. Just try not to pick a weird one, try to find someone like your mother. A man spoke now. Another warning. Watch out for Jiraiya Sensei. The voices grunted, but the female voice again spoke this time and was very sad. Naruto. You are going to experience a lot of pain and suffering. Flashes came. People scowled at him, there was anger, sadness. Freak, monster, mom said I can't play with you, he's that boy, demon, remember who you are, find a goal, a dream and don't stop trying until it comes true. The female voice spoke again and brought forth another memory. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone soon laughed at him. Like you can be, Doba boy with a dog in his head insulted you failed twice now. Yeah and Naruto Baka. A pink haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Dope. There. There's so much more I want to say. To teach you about. I want to stay with you. I love you my baby. Weeping can be heard as Naruto felt great sorrow, the woman was crying. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time she said when the male voice entered now. It's okay, Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Naruto let out an ear-splitting scream. The pain was unbearable. Seven. Eight. Nine tails. Finally complete. Eight trigram seal. Both the female and male yelled. Arg. Naruto fell to his knees and became unconscious. What he didn't know was that he stood before the seal. The white chakra surged into the cage and two red slitted eyes opened. It said I am complete. Erg. Naruto groaned softly, the splashing water waking him. He looked around, his expression was a bit dazed still, where? A sower is what he saw, pipes that leaked a bit hit the water creating dripping sound. He looked around and was surprised to see a huge cage before him. The cage Naruto said was still confused about where he was. Where am I? 
Last thing he remembered, he'd been in the forest of death during the second part of the Chunin selection exams, and he had fraught against a strong Sun Agakur ninja. He had been surrounded by trees and roots and then darkness. So where was he now? The only place that had sowers was the sowers he used to venture to when he was little. This is no ordinary sower and this cage, the blonde thought as he looked at the cage, a cage. He walked to the cage and touched the bars, so, a deep voice, like the rolling thunder, spoke. Nearly jumping out of his skin, he suddenly froze, coming face to face with a crimson fox, you're finally here. Its fur was like fire, wild and uncontrolled. Nine flames appeared behind the beast. Uzumaki Naruto began to tremble, but his feet refused to move. It is nice to meet my jailer the fox spoke, its voice brought shivers to his spine. Naruto felt its hot breath making him sweat. Tell me, do you know who I am? The fox moved closer, its glowing red eyes boring into his own. Can you say it with that tiny mouth of yours? Hey Kayubi Naruto stammered this was true fear he felt. The fox chuckled coo, coo coo coo. Naruto took a step back when suddenly claws attacked the bars. The massive claws stopped Naruto in his tracks as they tore his clothes, like knives tearing through his skin. The Yuzumaki screamed in pain. With eyes closed and fear overcoming him, he screamed your name is Kurama. Ayubi's eyes went wide in great surprise when suddenly light escaped the seal and a ball smacked the blonde Yuzumaki on the head. Naruto fell backwards. He groaned when he felt something on his lap. He looked and saw a beautiful glowing orb. Ayubi chuckled you are not stupid after all. It seemed that the brat too went through the process. W. What do you want and why am I here? Naruto suddenly heard a huge back can be heard as fires came rushing towards him, but enwrapped the bars of the seal. I am the Kaiubi and you are in the seal the fox spoke its eyes studying the blonde like a specimen under the microscope. Seal? Naruto moved away from the fox fearing he would lash out at him. So the snake woman sent me here. Harshly, the Kaiubi spoke I sent you here. Naruto was surprised, but his surprise came through a croaked voice wy. It is not your concern the fox said. Wah. What do you mean? Naruto got up now holding the orb in his hand. Why did you send me here? The orb glowed and the fox slanted its eyes a bit. The seal is complete. What Naruto blinked at the seal, you mean the 8 trigram seal. Yes, the seal is fully complete. Kaiubi said what was lost has been found. What was lost? Naruto said, you mean you lost something Kaiubi chuckled, its damn chuckle always making him shiver. Indeed, it smirked. But it appears I wasn't the only one. What do you mean Naruto asked, but the fox spoke. Now is not the time. Wake up, eyes wide open Naruto woke with a gasp, his head aching and his stomach sore. It felt as though he'd been run through with a katana to the heart. Bedding up he heard he looked around to see Team 10, 7 and another team. Ear wake Naruto, Chaoji spoke, getting his attention as did everyone. Naruto Baka. Sakura yelled as he saw her with Ino it seemed she was done getting her hair done. Naruto just ignored everything and held his face. What is this feeling he thought, he felt more spiritually aware, like an empty void inside him was filled. What was lost has been found and what Kaiubi said rang through his mind. Bendikus, troublesome, that fight was a waste of time. Shikamaru groaned as he sat next to Chaoji who opened a bag of chips and began to inhale them. Don't. Be. Like. That. Shikamaru. We won. Chaoji offered positively between bites. Yeah, you're right Chaoji. It's just too troublesome to think about, Shikamaru replied as he leaned back to look at the clouds. Niji stood off to the side as he watched Tenten wake their teammate Lee up while keeping a discreet watch on Ichiha Sasuke. Sasuke sat under a nearby tree by himself just reflecting on this latest development. At power, I felt that nothing could beat me, it felt great. Sasuke thought as he remembered what happened not too long ago, however he looked at Naruto who also was in deep thought. We got the scroll. Let's go, Sasuke said, now getting up. This alerted Sakura who also got up. Naruto remained still. There are still plenty of teams out there who could easily beat us separately, Ino pointed out as she looked at everyone else in the clearing. Yash. We can all make it through with the combined might of our youth. Lee all but shouted as he gave his nice guy pose, before Tenton clocked him with a fist to the back of the head and pulled him down to sit and be quiet. Need I to remind you we are enemies for the remainder of this part of the exam, so teaming up wouldn't be wise. Let's go Lee, Tenton Niji ordered Tenton nodded and got up Lee did the same they left now. Troublesome but we have both our scrolls, Shikamaru got up let's go. Chaoji and Ino nodded as the Ino Shikacho trio left. HRN Sasuke grunted and walked off. Naruto called out to his teammate. Un Naruto snapping out of his thoughts. We're going, Sasuke ordered as Sakura followed. Naruto just got up and went with him. The other team followed. Junin exam forest of death tower. I suggest we open the scrolls, Naruto said. After three hours of non-stop running, team seven had finally made it to the tower. They were now deciding what to do. Idiot. Sakura punches Naruto over the head, a vein popping out on her brow. Anko-san said not to open the scrolls. 
we get disqualified. She was talking about it before we got to the tower. Naruto shouted back, rubbing his head. Besides, we would probably still be looking for a second scroll if it wasn't for me remember the decoy scroll, I don't care. Sakura fumed, glaring at him. I'm not about to let you and your stupidity get Sasuke-kun disqualified from the Chunin exams. Stupidity. It's common sense. Naruto argued, blue eyes burning. We're in the tower now. The only explanation is that the scrolls have something to do with our qualification into the next part of the exams. Silence ensued as both Sasuke and Sakura were greatly surprised. That really made sense. Aka. Sakura hissed since when do you have common sense? I won't allow you to mess this up. Then what do you propose? He said seriously. Come on tell us. Sasuke looked at her, and Sakura now was intimidated a bit as she was put into a spot. Well. I, we just move forward, she sputtered, having no idea. Where are we in the tower, Naruto asked. Where do we go? We just move forward. Sakura snapped at him. Jeez. Naruto flung his hands up in exasperation, rolling his eyes. For the smartest girl in the academy you sure are pretty dumb. What did you say? Sakura's voice rose. I dare you to say that to my face. You heard, Naruto yelled back looking at Sakura like she was the stupidest woman in the world, Baka. How dare you? Sakura was about to hit Naruto again when Sasuke spoke. Hey, guys, both of them froze as Sasuke looked at them with his serious face. I think we should open the scrolls. Naruto now sighed as Sakura squealed and droned about how writer Sasuke Kun was and about how he always had the best ideas. Wasn't it his idea? Yeah, Naruto Baka. A pink haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Sakura chan. Naruto froze with his head down, the shadows covering his eyes. Akaha, he said to himself eerily, Sakura. Why did I even like her anyway? It didn't make sense. Come on, Baka. Sakura pulled him by the sleeve of his jacket, shoving the heaven scroll into his stomach forcefully. Help me open the scrolls. Grudgingly peeling open the scroll given to him, he stared at its contents. Several characters were written down, focused around single kanji in the center, the scrolls began to bring out smoke. Sakura let go of the scroll Sakura quickly listened oblivious of the way Naruto called her name. The scrolls were hurled at the floor as it rolled away from them. The smoke rose to cover the as the smoke began to clear, a shape could be seen within the dispersing cloud. Team 7 tensed, but was surprised at who it was. Aruka sensei Sakura yelled. The person that came was the academy teacher, Yumino Aruka. He grinned at them, waving in a friendly manner, hey, guys. It's been a while, huh? Aruka. Sensei Naruto said in a quiet voice. Memories flashed. Bet out Naruto Aruka was scowling you have been disrupting the class. But I didn't do anything. Young Naruto groaned. Bet out. Aruka yelled. It's been a while Naruto Aruka smiled, his hand landed on his hair and softly began to ruffle it. Naruto flinched at the touch and suddenly slapped the hand away. Don't touch me. He hissed, eyes gleaming dangerously much to the shock of Aruka. Aka. Sakura came and bonked his head don't do that to your sensei. Naruto had his head down. He couldn't understand where these memories were coming from or why he was acting the way he was. I am complete. But it appears I wasn't the only one. Hayubi knew something. Naruto. Sakura yelled getting him out of his thoughts. Ah he smiled scratching the back of his head exactly the way he used to do sorry Aruka sensei. Aruka was deep in thought. He was confused. This wasn't the Naruto he knew. Sensei. Can you explain our next task? Sasuke spoke. Oh, right, Naruka rubbed the back of his neck. I am here to tell you all that you have passed the second exam. Team 7 was surprised. Really? Sakura asked. Yes, Naruka smiled. Now it is the third exam. You guys don't overdo it okay he looked at Naruto, especially you Naruto. Don't worry about me, it's not your job, it's mine he said suddenly surprising the teacher. He grinned, rubbing his neck sheepishly, yeah, I guess so, huh? Naruka was beginning to worry. What happened to Naruto? Let's go, Sasuke said walking off. Yeah. Sakura yelled following Naruto went after them until Aruka stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. Naruto. Did something happen in the forest? He asked, a bit worried. With his back turned to his sensei, he shrugged the hand off his shoulder. He walked off completely ignoring a shocked Aruka. All Aruka heard was a dead voice laced with traces of sadness and confusion. I am. Complete. Chapter 2. Dope no more. The Hokage looked over the assembled genin, resisting the overwhelming compulsion to smile when he saw Naruto among them. Twenty-one had made it, the majority of them from his village. They were all rookies, and another three were a team that was only about a year old. It warmed his heart to see such strength and courage in one so young. But the Sandium stood a group of Chunin, Jonin. Protruding from the front wall was a pair of stone hands forming the seal for Ram. Banko smirked at them from where she stood, congratulations on passing. Hokage-sama will now explain the third test, so listen carefully. 
Saratobi looked at the candidates and was impressed with his ninjas, he coughed and then said well done everyone for passing this portion of the exams. I will explain to you why you are here and what you shall be doing, but before I explain the third and final test for the day. Do you know the reason why the Chunin exams are held? The Jenins looked confused as they listened. Gara just watched emotionlessly and Naruto watched with a serious expression. The Chunin exams are not here for a shinobi to go up just in rank. The truth is it's a replacement for war among allied countries, the Jenins were getting more confused as Saratobi spoke. A village's strength is determined by the strength of its shinobi. By holding the Chunin exams, you have the opportunity to stand out and show feudal lords what you can do. Also, the strength you show will attract new clients. He was about to continue the third exam when Heid interrupted as he coughed Hokage-sama, may I? Saratobi nodded. After all, you are in charge of the third test. The chronic coughing caught the Jenin's attention. Was he sick? My name is Jack Mahade, and I'm the proctor of the third exams. He coughed again and said the third test is to cut down the number of candidates as too many have passed. So we are going to do preliminary matches. This shocked everyone as they thought it was unfair. The feudal lords will be attending the final exams, and we need the strongest ninjas available when they arrive. So this test will bring forth those who are the strongest between you all, Hayde answered their questions before they had to ask. So we. Gara was about to speak, but Naruto finished fighting for him. Damari and Kankuro looked at him in shock. He interrupted Gara. Everyone's eyes fell onto Naruto, but he ignored all of them, choosing instead to meet Sandium's gaze. Siratobi eyed Naruto carefully. Hayde nodded. So before I start does anyone want to quit now? Silence ensued. Naruto noticed Sakura and Sasuke were speaking silently and listened in. I'm fine Sakura Sasuke said dangerously I won't quit, but that mark made her worried. Mark Naruto thought, taking note. Just worry about yourself. Sakura had no choice but to obey. Anyone else want to quit? Heid asked again. Sakura looked at Sasuke and softened. She relented. Sorry I quit. Someone smiled. Kabuto-san. Sakura spoke in shock. Kabuto looked at Sakura and smiled. I'm injured all over. So you see I'm not fit to fight. He smiled at them but looked at Naruto. When their eyes met, Naruto's eyes narrowed as Kabuto walked off. The Jounins and the Hokage noticed how Naruto looked and pondered what changed in him. All right the rules are as follows. As the referee you listen to me. If I say stop you stop. If you don't do that then you fail. Fights will be one on one and the winner will proceed to the final. Your opponents will be chosen at random and the match will end when an opponent dies, loses consciousness or gives up. If I see that a match is unable to continue I will also end the match. All right now let's begin the first round. Everyone turned around to look at the screen as multiple names popped up before stopping at the first two names. The Chiha Sasuke vs Akadu Yoroi. Naruto just looked while Sakura looked scared of Sasuke-kun. Bakashi watched his prized student as he knew what happened and what the boy was carrying on his neck. He was told along with the Jounins that Orochimaru had attacked Team 7. As the Jenins moved out of the way, Kakashi touched Sasuke's shoulder. Remember Sasuke doesn't use the Sharingan he muttered. I know Sasuke nodded. Once everyone went up the stairs to watch the fight both opponents stood facing each other. Are both fighters ready? Heid asked as he received a nod from both Yoroi and Sasuke Hajim. As soon the fight began Yoroi started to go through several hand signs and his hands glowed blue. Sasuke flashed his Sharingan, but then suddenly he started to feel pain coursing through his neck, making him fall to the ground. Shit it's the sea Lanko muttered as she wanted to stop the fight, but her leader disapproved. She touched her mark remembering the event and how she met Orochimaru in the forest. Yes Sasuke-kun let it control you Orochimaru thought with a happy expression while he was in his disguise. Once that happened the fight became one-sided as Sasuke was getting beaten easily, as those glowing hands of Yorway kept draining his chakra. Yorway had Sasuke's head on the floor and kept draining his chakra. Sakura was worried as she clenched her heart and looked away. Bakashi watched with full concentration as Sasuke got out of the man's hold and gained some space. He then dodged Yorway's swings and then at a fast speed Sasuke appeared under him and then did an upward kick on his chin a technique that belonged to Lee. Both Lee and Guy's eyes widened as they recognized the technique. Neither were happy that Sasuke copied a comrade's technique with his Sharingan. Lion's Barrage. Winner Ichiha Sasuke. Hayde announced. Most of the Leaf contingency was amazed at Sasuke's skill. Wow Sasuke-kun is great. Ino commended happily, while Sakura sighed in delight. Bakashi was impressed while Asuma nodded. He was the rookie of the year, Kurinai nodded. Bakashi nodded while Guy frowned, both thinking of different things. Lee looked sad, but Guy reassured him, making him smile and began another youthful rant. Naruto just gave the spandex-wearing youth a look of sympathy. He must have copied it from Guy's student, he thought. So that's the Achea. Kankuro looked impressed as he stood from the other platform opposite Naruto and Ko. Ara looked unimpressed while Tamari agreed with Kankuro. The sound team just watched from afar. 
while Yorui was being pulled away on a stretcher, Sasuke still had problems getting up due to the seal on his neck. Orochimaru gave a gleeful look from behind his disguise until he saw Kakashi shunch him down and take the Achiha away. Everyone watched while Naruto looked at Sakura. What's with him? Sakura looked shaken as she ignored him. And nothing. Kakashi sensei told me not to tell you anything about Naruto. Just worry about your match Sakura frowned. Whatever Naruto frowned. So that's how it is if they wanted to keep secrets from him, it showed him that they couldn't be trusted. Where are they going? Ino inquired while Shikamaru looked at them deep in thought. Alright I shall now begin the second round Hey, coughed again as the screen changed until two new names appeared. Tenten vs Tamari. Gosh go Tenten. Lee perked up as he cheered for his teammate as Guy joined in. Niji nodded as Tenten smirked and came down the stairs where Tamari was waiting. The blonde flipped over the edge of the platform and jumped down. HMPH the girl won't stand a chance, Kankuro smirked. So that's the sand team, Kurinai said as Asuma nodded. Tenten Naruto muttered watching the genin. Naruto Baka, you are a loser. She smirked you're not fit to be a ninja and never will be. His eyes narrowed. He looked at the sand ninja who was smirking. Never before had Naruto wished harm to another fellow leaf genin. But right now, he really wanted Tenten to take a real beating. He wasn't sure if that was a good or bad thing. So are you ready little girl Tamari smirked while Tenten took out a kunai and twirled you are going to pay for that comment. When the fight started Naruto was right because it was the most one-sided fight he had ever seen since. Well ever. Tamari's wind manipulation in conjunction with her fan made all of her long-range weapon usage futile. Naruto couldn't deny that he felt some satisfaction from the weapon mistress's defeat. Tamari smirked. Are you really a Kinoichi? It felt like fighting a child Lee wanted to retaliate, but Guy stopped him stop Lee. This is an exam, it's the rules you know. Lee just gritted his teeth in anger. The third Hokage looked impressed. The shinobis from Sand are well trained. Anko and Ibiki nodded as they too were impressed. Damari scanned the crowd until her eyes met Naruto's. She smiled and he smiled back. Suddenly Kakashi appeared on the platform and greeted everyone Kakashi sensei. How is Sasuke kun? Kakashi gave her an eye smile. Don't worry Sakura, he will be fine. Sakura had a downcast expression okay sensei. Naruto watched with a stoic expression as Kakashi looked at him and smiled. Naruto just ignored him and looked towards the screen. Hey, he coughed for a bit as he commenced the next round, now let's begin the next round the screen flashed as it landed on two people. Inuzuka Kiba vs Uzumaki Naruto, ha! The dobe. We got lucky, Akamaru. Kiba gloated, jumping down into the arena. Akamaru, his dog, gave an enthusiastic bark of agreement. Naruto froze. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone laughed at him. Like you can be done by a boy with a dog in his head insulted. It was Kiba you failed twice now. Naruto felt anger rise up when another voice entered his thoughts. Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Naruto kun Hinata looked at him, but his hair covered his expression. Naruto ignored her and walked down the stairs. The greatest. He muttered to himself but no one heard. Naruto now stood before Kiba as hate stood between them. Ha, eh, Kiba clenched his fist. I feel bad for you, so I'll end this in one punch. Can you Naruto mutter, can that actually be done? Yup Kiba smirked smugly against a dope like you anything's possible. Dope huh? Naruto smirked. Up in the stands, Yuhi Kurinai, Kiba's teacher, smirked at Hata Kakashi. Looks like your student doesn't belong in this exam, Kakashi-san. Kiba will finish him. Ma Kakashi scratched the back of his head, let us see shall we. Naruto is surprising after all. Hey, eight looked at Naruto and Kiba. Are you both ready? Naruto unzipped his orange jacket, took it off and threw it away to the side. This one will be faster than Tenten's, he said, seriously getting everyone's attention. Tamari raised her eyebrow. That's unyouthful. Lee yelled when Naruto insulted his teammate. Lee guy chided looking towards Naruto. The Tajutsu specialist saw something in the blonde's eye but couldn't pinpoint what. Ha. Kiba smirked I won't even need Akamaru to beat you. Naruto didn't respond. Inuzuka Kiba, Genin rank ninja, and the heir of the Inuzuka clan known for their nin dogs, Naruto thought his eyes narrowed. Begin. Hey, began. And with that, Kiba charged in for a head-on assault, fist cocking backwards. Meaning without their dogs as Kiba came closer and closer, time seemed to move slower and slower for Naruto. They are nothing. At the last second, Naruto caught Kiba's fist his left hand. Silence ensued. Then in one fluid motion, the blonde took a step towards Kiba, cocked his right elbow back, and slammed it into Kiba's own right elbow joint. A sickening crack was heard as Inuzuka's arm was literally bent in two the wrong way. The collective gasps of the audience were drowned out by Kiba's blood-curdling scream as he dropped to his knees. Naruto finally let go of Kiba's limp arm before giving him a vicious roundhouse kick to the face. 
the last few seconds didn't actually register in his mind until he saw Kiba fall over in a bloody, broken, and unconscious heap. It was as if his body had acted on its own. The adrenaline rush he felt as he broke Kiba's arm was unlike anything he'd ever felt before. Part of him was scared. A part of him wanted more. The latter won out. Who's the dope now, mutt? Growled Naruto as he walked back toward the stands, not even going to pick up his jacket. Only the silence was broken by Kankuro. That was fast, the puppeteer said with a shocked expression. He beat your record, sis. I can see that. Tamari watched Naruto leave with interest, as did Gara. They ate was finally snapped out of his shock and ended the match. Winner by knockout Yuzumaki Naruto. The medic speed out with a stretcher, prepared to put Kiba in intensive care. Kiba kun. Hinata yelled as Kurinai jumped down the railings and went to her student. Several members of the Konoha contingency met Naruto at the top of the stairs. That was uncalled for because Naruto Shikamaru said frowning you didn't need to do that. Shikamaru's right. There was no need for such brute force, Asuma said as he saw Kurinai coming back while Kiba was taken away. He wanted it to end quickly, and Naruto answered, who am I to deny him? Asuma's eyes narrowed. Where did you learn to fight like Naruto? Kakashi asked because as far as he knew Naruto wasn't good at tojutsu. The fluidity of Naruto's movements didn't match his previous assumptions. Not from you that's for sure he said walking through the blockade of Konohan Inn. Instinct guy answered that it was all instinct. Instinct? Really? I find that hard to believe. Ino said, shaken to the core at how quickly and brutally Kiba was beaten. That girl is seriously stupid, he thought as he turned his back to his comrades and leaned on the railing. Naruto answered Kakashi Sensei Sakura asked honestly, curious and frightened at Naruto's ferocity. As I said, not from him. Naruto didn't even bother dignifying the question with a look. The remainder of Team 7 frowned. Kiba has his right arm broken in half, a broken nose, a fractured jaw, and a mild concussion, Kurinai told them about the damage. The Genins gasped. I don't know where you thought such behavior was tolerable Naruto, Kurinai's eyes narrowed. Enough Sandame spoke, getting everyone to look at him. Kiba was defeated. This is an exam, he knew the rules. Although he appeared calm, deep down he too was a bit unnerved by Naruto's performance. But. Kurinai tried to explain, but one last stern look from the Hokage stopped her right in her tracks. Naruto-kun, Kiba. Hinata spoke in her usual reserved soft voice. Naruto looked up at her, and another memory flashed. Hey you alright Naruto smiled cheekily at a little blue-haired girl who wore a blue kimono. The girl suddenly ran off to her bodyguards who came to Lady Hinata. Did he hurt you one of them asked. Hinata just hugged one of them burying her face into his leg. The Hayuga bodyguards assumed the worst. Why are you no good brat? The man charged at Naruto who tried to explain look, I didn't mean it. Naturally, his explanations fell on deaf ears so he was forced to run. Hayuga Hinata stalked him wherever he went since that day. She fainted whenever he got close. Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly. She saw his troubles and didn't do anything to help. He simply turned away from her as the screen began to speed through names. Worry about your own match he just said surprising a few people. Hinata flinched at his tone and looked down. Kurinai's eyes narrowed at him. Nara Shikamaru vs Kintsuchi. Hey, called out their names when Shikamaru sighed a girl. Mindakusai, their match didn't last very long either. Shikamaru was caught in her trap. Using his Kajime no Jutsu, he forced her to hit her head against the wall. She knocked herself unconscious, thus winning the match for the lazy Nara. After Kin was carried away on a stretcher, the screen flashed again, revealing the combatants of the next match. Tsubaku no Kankuro vs Tsurubi Misumi. It seemed everyone wanted to beat Naruto's record, as Misumi was able to stretch his limbs to wrap around Kankuro and threatened to crush him if he did not yield. When Kankuro didn't relent, Misumi crushed his neck only to find out that Kankuro was really a puppet, surprising everyone on the platform to save his brother and sister. After that Kankuro came out of the bandages, revealing that he had hidden himself inside his puppet crow. Suddenly, crow grabbed and bound Misumi, forcing his surrender. Shino vs Zaku. I will make this quick, Zaku commented as he jumped down to get the battle underway. Good luck Shino-kun, Hinata smiled at the boy who nodded. Good luck Shino winning this, Kurinai smiled at her student. When the battle started Shino looked at Zaku and said, you cannot use your arms. I suggest you forfeit. Zaku smirked. Your teammate was that bitch that got a major beatdown right. Then my answer is. He then raised his only working hand hell no bitch. Zanka. Decapitating airwaves, he then shot an airwave which Shino dodged and dissolved into bugs when it hit him, shocking Zaku. Zaku kept trying until Shino managed to get his bugs inside his air hole, disabling the technique. Shino then warned him not to use his technique, but the Odonin didn't listen, and in the end, it cost him the match. The group was amazed. Wow Shino is strong, Ino said watching Chaoji nod and greet Shino who came up the stairs to meet them. Well done Shino, Kurinai praised her student. Yeah well done Shino, Naruto added. 
Gurunai looked at him and he raised his eyebrow at that. Naruto we will talk later, Kakashi said touching his shoulder. Why? Naruto asked, looking at him. No reason, Kakashi smiled. Oh, but I thought you wanted to see me. If there's no reason then we won't talk later, then Naruto's answer surprised everyone. That wasn't something they'd ever thought they'd hear out of the blonde's mouth. Kakashi knew had no choice but to come clean now, I just want to know what you learned. I learned what you taught us, Naruto said, raising his eyebrow. I didn't teach you to fight like that, Kakashi pointed out. Naruto smiled. Exactly you haven't taught us anything surprising everyone again. Naruto shrugged off Kakashi's hand that was on his shoulder. Kakashi had no reply. If he pushed for more information, Naruto would make it seem as if he had neglected his students. We will talk later, Naruto Kakashi just said. Just to make sure there's a reason this time, Naruto added finishing the conversation by turning back toward the screen. Shikamaru was surprised, Naruto just out-talked his teacher. Naruto Baka how dare you say that about Kakashi sensei Sakura was about to put Naruto in his place when the Yuzumaki pointed at the screen. The names that came up were. Naruto Sakura vs Yamanaka Ino. Sakura sweated a bit when Naruto touched her shoulder. She looked to see him smiling at her. Don't worry Sakura, show Ino what Kakashi sensei taught you. He did teach Sasuke after all Sakura flinched. Naruto looked at Kakashi and gave him a pretty good imitation of the Cyclops' own one-eyed smile, right. Sensei. The Jounins didn't like what the blonde was implying about their comrade. Kakashi closed his book and put on a serious expression. He went to Sakura and touched her shoulder. Good luck Sakura Kakashi gave an eye smile Sakura nodded. Good luck Ino Asuma said his team nodded at her. Kakashi and Naruto continued their stare down. The blonde was smiling while the Jounin had a serious expression. Sensei let's watch, Naruto said. Sasuke's become much stronger with your teaching. Ino can't possibly win. I get it, Naruto Kakashi said, ending the matter. Then you know we won't be talking later as I have some serious training to do, he responded. Kakashi was silent as a crypt. I was disappointed, Asuma shook his head and Kurenai stared curiously at Naruto. He was nothing like she had expected. The fight between the two girls went exactly how Naruto thought it would. It was the most pathetic thing anyone in the stands had ever seen. Words and weak attacks were exchanged between the girls as they battled with Academy-style B.U.N.S.H.I. and clone until Ino managed to catch Sakura with her clanch intention no J.U.T.S.U. mind transfer technique. Ino was going to force Sakura to say that she forfeited. Damn this is pathetic, Kankuro said as Tamari nodded. Gara just watched. The fight carried on as Sakura somehow kicked Ino's spirit out of her body and they resumed their fight which ended in a double knockout from the equal haymakers the girls gave each other. When it was all said and done and both girls came a bit later they made up and mended their friendship a little. All were their friends again Dosu said in a sarcastic and mocking chuckled while Tamari smirked. Hayuganiji vs Hayuga Hinata. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Hayuganiji walked past him. I tried to hope, fate has decreed you will never be a ninja. HMPH. You should give up Lady Hinata, it is your fate to do so. Niji arrogantly smirked as he looked at her and walked down the stairs. Hinata looked sad as Kurunai put her hand on her shoulder, Hinata didn't let him get you down. Just do your best. Okay. Thank you she then went to begin her fight against Niji. She looked at Naruto who turned away from her. She was determined not to let him down I won't let you down Naruto come. To everyone's surprise, Hinata was able to fight Niji on equal footing for the first few moments of the match. Kurunai looked at Naruto because she knew Hinata's newfound confidence was all thanks to him. But this new confidence wasn't enough in the end as Niji simply overpowered her with his superior Jiken, ending the match in his favor. Tsubaku no Gar vs Rock Lee. Yash. It's my turn. Lee exclaimed, proud, making his teacher scream in glee. Oh, my student. Guy gave a thumbs up and Lee jumped down to fight Gara, who was waiting patiently. This was by far the most competitive match so far. Gara's sand defense seemed pretty much impenetrable until Lee took off his weights. When Lee released five out of the eight Hachiman gates, his speed was absolutely outrageous. I can't believe someone can move that fast. Naruto thought in awe. Naruto realized that if he faced Gara or even Lee as he was now, he would get creamed. Damn it what was I doing all this time? He thought. Lee trained until he dropped for years while he was busy playing pranks, chasing after a pink banshee and foolishly listening to his sensei. However, Lee's body couldn't withstand the pressure of the Hachiman gates for very long. Gara's second sand armor simply outlasted Lee's body. The reverse lotus was the last straw. When Lee fell over in pain, Gara used the opportunity to attack Lee with his sand. The sand latched onto his arm and leg. Gara was about to finish him off, but Guy stopped him before Gara could complete his sand burial technique. Man that was amazing. Naruto looked at Niji. You have an amazing teacher. Want to swap? No, Niji just replied looking stoic. Why not? Naruto pointed at Kakashi. He's the copy ninja. He will not benefit me, Niji just said. 
quite frankly, he didn't want to talk with this dope. Oh my god Kakashi, Naruto looked shocked at his sensei he just called you useless. You're not useless because you'll help me in my training, right? No one said anything. Naruto smirked, I want to see how he's going to get out of this one. Makakashi gave an eye smile later okay. Naruto groaned, channeling his kill me orange personality, but. Sensei, that's what you always say. Sakura and Sasuke have gotten stronger, why not me? Sakura was confused by the lack of suffix on her name. The Kashi single eye went white a bit. They both wondered the same thing. What happened to you, Naruto? You humans are funny, Kaiubi chuckled as he watched everything. Naruto froze. What is the fox planning? You know what, forget it, I'm done with your excuses. Naruto dismissed Kakashi. You were never there for me and you never will. Kakashi's eyes widened at that. He thought of more than just his failures as Team 7's Junin. He thought of his failures to protect his sensei's legacy. Sensei, I'm sorry. He looked down in shame. Naruto. How dare you speak Sakura yelled but stopped when Naruto gave her a dark glare. Shut up. Those two words effectively ended the conversation as the next two competitors were called. Akamichi Choji vs. Dosu Kanuda. Choji lost pretty quickly. He simply couldn't win against Dosu Zhao techniques. Even with his Baika no Jutsu, he wasn't able to win against the Odo Genin. You will tell me everything Naruto whispered to himself. The fox heard but didn't respond. But the preliminaries over, the winners were then briefed on the last portion of the exam. Okay now you will get a tab telling you who you will face in the final exams, here is in gesture to Anko to get the box of tabs and give them to everyone to pick. Alright everyone picked a number Anko went to everyone who put their hands inside the box and pulled out a tab. Anko winked at Naruto when he got his. The Yuzumaki raised his eyebrow at the eccentric woman. What are your numbers? Sarutobi spoke. The Genins answered. Five guard drones. Three Kankuro says. Seven Tamari calls out. One Naruto says. Nine Shikamaru responds. Four, Shino responds. Duniji spoke softly. Eight, Dosu said. Six Kakashi responds in Sasuke's place. Okay the matchups for the finals are as follows. First match Yuzumaki Naruto vs Haikuniji, second match Subaku no Kankuro vs Aburam Shino, third match Ichiha Sasuke vs Subaku no Gara, fourth match Subaku no Tamari vs Dosu Kanuda finally Nara Shikamaru faces the fourth match Victor, hey it called out. That concludes the second phase of the Chiknin exams. You each have a month before the finals to prepare yourselves and get stronger. Any questions? Sandium asks. Does the winner automatically get promoted? Shikamaru lazily points out. Not necessarily, the winner of the finals may not be promoted at all. Likewise the losers might get promoted or no one at all. If you show you have both the ability and mentality to be a chknin, then you will be recommended for a promotion. From there, it will be up to your cages or council to decide, the Hokage informed them. The genin seemed satisfied with the answer. You all may leave and rest. Good luck. The third Hokage waved his hand to conclude the Chunin exams as the genin saluted and left. Immediately, Kakashi, Sakura, and Saratobi eyed Naruto hoping to talk to him at some point in the next month to get some answers. As Naruto left, he knew he had a big month ahead of him. First, he had to get some answers. Kaiubi was experiencing his thoughts and actions, and it troubled him. And these darker thoughts, feelings, and intentions weren't making him feel any better. But more importantly, he needed to get stronger. He thought back to his father's last words to him. It's okay, Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. I promise dad, Naruto grinned. I'm going to be the greatest ninja ever. Believe it. Chapter 3. Believe. Naruto reached his apartment just after sundown in a pretty somber mood. He knew his first and foremost priority was to try and figure out what the heck was going on. The thoughts, the urges, and the frustration and hate. He had never experienced them before. It was almost as if they weren't his. Oh. They most definitely are yours, chuckled the Kaiubi. Kaiubi? So now you talk. The answer was given. Damn it. Answer me. He screamed. But his mind stayed silent. Fine. If you won't answer me, I'll come get some. After eating a quick dinner of cup ramen, Naruto got on his bed in the lotus position, trying to find his way back to his seal. He tried probing the recesses of his mind for sowers back to the Kaiubi, but it wasn't working. All he saw in his mindscape was an endless sea of white. It was as if something was preventing him from facing the fox. Come out you stupid fox. Growled Naruto. Instead of silence, he heard menacing laughter. Who's there? He asked, looking around. All of a sudden, a dark shadow rose upright in front of him and transformed. Into him. Why? I'm you of course. He cackled. W what do you mean? Asked a shocked Naruto. I'm the real you. The one that's been hidden away all this time, said dark Naruto. Yes, the seal is fully complete. Kaiubi said, what was lost has been found. What was lost? 
Naruto said, you mean you lost something Kyubi chuckled, it's damn chuckle always making him shiver. Indeed, it smirked. But it appears I wasn't the only one. What was lost has been found. He mumbled. You're my darker half. You're the reason why I'm having these thoughts. No, I am the real you. You're nothing more than a mask trying to hide your sadness, frustration, and anger, laughed Dark Naruto. And then he charged. Before Naruto could snap out of his shock, he got a mean right hook to the face, knocking him to the floor. Pathetic. You let all those villagers walk all over you. They hate you, he said. Freak, monster, mom said I can't play with you, he's that boy, demon, they want to see you suffer. They want to see you fail. He continued. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all. Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone soon laughed at him. Like you can be, Doba boy with a dog in his head insulted you failed twice now. Yeah and Naruto Baka. A pink haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Dope. No one cared. No one loved you. But you don't need them. All you need is me. Join me and we'll get our revenge, he said, extending his hand out. Maybe he's right. No one's ever cared for me. No one's ever loved me. Naruto thought as he slowly reached for his darker half's hand. There. There's so much more I want to say. To teach you about. I want to stay with you. I love you my baby. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time. It's okay. Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. I love you my baby. T they. Loved me. Me. I love you my baby. They loved me. I love you. They loved me. No. Instead of grabbing the outstretched hand, Naruto punched Darker half in the face, sending him to the floor. You fool. How can you possibly forgive those who have wronged you? Dark Naruto screamed. I didn't say I've forgiven them. I never will. But that doesn't mean massacring them is the right thing to do, said a calm Naruto. You don't understand. They'll never accept you. They'll continue to walk all over you. They'll continue to hurt you. No. You're the one who doesn't understand. Kaiubi was right. I am complete now. You make me complete, explained Naruto. W what do you mean? Asked a dark one. You are my inner darkness. You are the anger, the frustration, the hatred I felt for all those who have wronged me. And I am or was the happy-go-lucky Naruto who let everything just roll off his back. But neither of us are complete without the other. Deep down, even when I would grin and bear it, there was a part of me that felt that same anger, frustration, and hatred you felt. And somewhere underneath all that hatred that you've let overwhelm and control you, you don't really want to hurt anyone either, am I right? His darker half didn't respond, only looked away. With a lack of response, Naruto decided to do the only thing that seemed to make sense he walked over to his darker form and offered him a hand up. How do I know you won't just forgive and forget like you used to? Asked Dark Naruto looking up at the offered hand. Why? You'll be there to make sure I don't. Said Naruto in a more exuberant voice than was necessary. Ah, you're right I can't trust you to do this on your own, so I'll have to be there to make sure you don't screw this up, chuckled the Dark Naruto as he reached for his light side's hand. Besides, I think we would be pretty baddest together. Am straight. And at this Naruto both yin and yang grinned, sealing the handshake. Soon, Naruto's darker form disintegrated and was absorbed by his yang self. When the emerging was over, an odd sense of calm washed over him. He suddenly felt stronger. He suddenly felt faster. He suddenly felt more at ease than he'd ever felt in his entire life. More importantly, for the first time in his life, he felt. Complete. Before Naruto could gather his bearings, the endless white became a lush meadow full of life. A meadow really? I didn't think the inside of my head would be so weird. He thought. He wasn't the only one. You certainly have some weird things happening in that head of yours don't cha Naruto-kun? Asked a feminine voice behind him. Naruto turned around to see a beautiful red-haired woman with blue eyes in a long pale green dress. She walked hand in hand with a tall blonde-haired man wearing a standard Kanohan in uniform underneath a long white coat decorated with flame-like motifs on the edges. Wait. Long white coat decorated with flame-like motifs. He thought. Only one person was ever known to wear such a coat. Beyond Aim Ho he started. I bet he gets that from you Kashina, the yellow flash joked. What was that, Minato-kun? Care to explain what you mean by that? The now dubbed Kashina said in a menacing tone with a visible twitch in her eyes. She even brought her fist up to his face. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time she said when the male voice entered now. It's okay, Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Beyond aim. My father. He thought. Nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't mean anything by it. Yandane pleaded, holding his arms over his head, trying to shield himself from the beating he was surely going to receive. Read deeds and their tempers. Sheesh. W-Y. Naruto mumbled. This was beginning to become too much for him to handle. He tried desperately to hold back tears. 
This got the couple's attention. Would you do it? Why did you seal the Kyubi in your own son? He screamed. His parents looked down in shame. All the hate. All the loneliness. All the suffering. How could you do that to me? This time the tears couldn't be stopped. Silence reigned. For what seemed like hours, no one knew what to say. Naruto, how old are you now? Asked Minato. Well, going on 13, he said, trying to wipe away some of the waterworks. Minato sighed, not even 13, and already shouldering the burden of the world. He couldn't help but feel that stab of pain watching his son cry in front of him. We know that after all that has happened to you, we don't deserve to be called your parents, Kishina began, our greatest regret was passing on this burden without being there for you to shoulder it. Again, there was silence. Although, it was a little less awkward and depressing than last time. What made you think I could handle it? He asked, remembering their last words to him. Because you're our son, they answered in unison. It's only natural for the parents to believe that their children will surpass them. Continued his father with a smile. Ha. Ah. You have some high expectations dad, chuckled Naruto. I know. But I know you'll surpass even me one day, his father said with the utmost conviction. How can you be so sure? He asked. Thus call it a hunch, Minato smiled. And never doubt a mother's intuition. His mother exclaimed as if that defeated all possible negatives. Somehow, Naruto couldn't help but smile at his mother's enthusiasm. Naruto. There are a few things we need to tell you, his father said in a serious tone. First, your mother was the previous host of the Kaiubi. On the night of your birth, your mother and I were attacked seconds after your birth. That man's name was Madara Che. And so Minato recounted the events of that fateful night. I see. I'll need Kaiubi's strength one day to stop whatever he plans to accomplish, Naruto summarized. Yes. Kishina and I sealed some of our chakra in the seal before we passed away in order to help you on that goal. My chakra was to be awakened should you prematurely start losing your mind from the Kaiubi's power. And your mother would be there when you would fight the Kaiubi for control of his chakra, said his father. But with Kaiubi's yin chakra returning and you now knowing its name, neither of us need to fulfill our roles anymore, his mother finished. So you're going to just leave me? But I have so much to ask you. How did you guys meet? How'd you fall in love? Would you name me Naruto? He asked. This would be his only time meeting with his parents. He couldn't just let them leave so soon. Ah. That last one's easy. We named you after the hero from Jureya Sensei's first book. We hoped that you would one day be a great ninja like the one from the book, chuckled Minato. Jureya Sensei? I thought you told me to stay away from him, mused Naruto. As you should. He's a pervert. Kishina huffed. A pee pervert. Yeah. He tried to peek at your mother and me during the process of creating you, his father said clearly embarrassed at the turn the conversation had taken. The process of creating me. You what? Naruto shivered at the thought of his parents doing the nasty. As for the first two, your father and I went to the academy together. One my first day there, the class was going around talking about our goals. Both of us said we wanted to be Hokage. Of course, Minato looked like a total flake and wuss when he was younger, so no one took him seriously, smiled Kishina. An indignant cry of hey. Was heard from the Yandame, but was promptly ignored. But one day, some Kumo ninja kidnapped me in order to use my special chakra chains to gain control of the Kaiubi. On the way to Kumo, I secretly plucked and left strands of my red hair to mark the trail, hoping someone would find me. As fate would have it, your father found the trail saying how he admired my hair, even though I hated it. I guess you could say it was the red thread of fate that brought Kanoha's yellow flash and red hot-blooded habanero together, she finished. Hmm. I always knew there was a reason why I liked orange. I guess subconsciously I was carrying on the dream you guys passed on to me, mused Naruto to himself. Naruto, you should know that we'll never actually leave you, his father said, coming closer to him. We'll always be right here with you, he finished by touching the spot on Naruto's chest where his heart was. We'll always be there guiding you, helping you, and watching, said his mother, bringing her face down to meet him. I can already see it in your eyes, Naruto-kun. You are already strong. And you'll only get stronger as you go. And for the first time ever, the entire Uzumaki Namika's family shared one heartfelt hug together. No one present could hold back the waterworks. A few minutes later, it was time to go. Naruto, always knowing that we loved you so very much, cried Kishina planting a soft kiss on his right cheek. And remember that no matter what we'll always believe in you and be proud of you son, finished Minato ruffling Naruto's hair. A few seconds later, Minato, Kishina, and the meadow disappeared back into the endless sea of white. They believed in me. They were proud of me. They loved me. Smiled Naruto. Now, I have one last task to complete. Again, the white disappeared this time becoming a dark dank and dimly lit sower. So, you've met with your parents. Why am I not surprised that they left some chakra in you? Snarled Kaiubi. You could tell I was with- I meant to bring you here after you fought your darker half, but your parents got to you first brat. I see. 
What do you want from me then Kurama? Asked Naruto going back to the original question. At this, a ridiculous amount of killer intent leaked out from behind the bars. You will not call me by that name Ninjin. Screamed the Kaiubi as it tried to lash out at Naruto. It was suffocating. It was like trying to breathe underwater. A fine Kaiubi. Why did you want to see me before? He asked, cowed by the sheer amount of chakra. I want to know what you intend to do, they started finally reeling in its chakra. The train for the month I have off, Naruto said matter-of-factly. And after? It's okay, Naruto, this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. To be the greatest ninja ever. Whispered Naruto. It would be interesting if you become Hokage Kaiubi smirked. You make it sound like I would reject the offer. Will you? You aren't who you were before, probed Kaiubi. We'll see when the time comes, said Naruto, returning Kaiubi's smirk. But I have one other goal. Oh, and what would this grand ambition be? Joked the dot. To make you see past your hatred, stated Naruto. Do not patronize me, boy. I am the Kaiubi no Yoko most powerful of all nine biju born from the foulest chakra to ever exist. There is nothing in me but hatred. Roared the Kaiubi. This time the killer intent felt the weight of the entire world on Naruto. But unlike last time, Naruto didn't waver. You're wrong. You said it yourself, we are now complete. You have your yin chakra back and I now understand my inner darkness. Even when I forgave and forgot the abuse I suffered, deep down inside I still held on to some of that hatred and sadness. As such, even through all the hatred you must feel for us, the suffering from being sealed into Jinchuriki, and the loneliness and sadness of never having a friend, there is still good in you, Naruto declared looking the Kaiubi right in the eyes. You lie. It thundered. I'm not. I can see it in your eyes, Kurama. I can see the pain and sadness of losing someone precious to you, said Naruto never losing eye contact with the nine tails. At this, the Kaiubi flinched. Please don't go, a younger Kaiubi pleaded. I'm sorry Kurama, but my time has come, a man with ripple-like patterns in each of his purpler eyes has said. Come here, he gestured for the teary-eyed Kitsune to come closer so they could see eye to eye one last time. No matter how far apart you'll be, we'll always be connected, the Rinnegan user said. He pointed to his heart, right here. And one day, you'll be guided down the right path. One single tear fell from Kaiubi's eyes. Father. After several minutes of silence, they looked back at a dot. His eyes. They are so much like him. So full of passion. So full of understanding. So full of determination. Karama thought. No matter how far apart you'll be, we'll always be connected, the Rinnegan user said. He pointed to his heart, right here. And one day, you'll be guided down the right path. After centuries. Maybe. Just maybe. I can believe in those words one last time. All right you little brat. I'm going to make you a deal. I'll share my power with you and in exchange you shall acknowledge me as your master. Grint Kurama. Of course Kurama-sama. Naruto beamed. He held his fist out to the kitsune. It's Kaiubi-sama to you, pathetic dod I refuse to allow Shukaku's container to be stronger than mine, so you'd better train until you drop this next month brat, the Kaiubi smirked. But nonetheless, he returned Naruto's gesture. That fist bump would go down as one of the landmark moments of ninja history. Chapter 4. One month when Naruto woke up, it was already well past noon the next day. As he got out of bed, he noticed something was off. His clothes no longer fit him as well as they used to. He was at least two inches taller and had much more muscle mass than when he entered his meditative state less than 24 hours ago. Never had he felt so strong or so alive. I take it you like your makeover. You can say that, Naruto smiled. Is this the effect of our deal? No. This is the result of my yin chakra returning to me. Since I am whole now, my powers have returned to me. Ours? Naruto questioned. Yes. Each has a unique ability. My younger brother the Ichibi grants that soon a boy can troll over sand. One of my most prized abilities is chakra replenishment. I can take the natural energy of the world around me to replenish my chakra indefinitely. So how does this affect me? The seal your parents put on you gradually converted some of my chakra to become yours. Because I am complete, the amount of chakra converted has increased dramatically, thus the extreme change to your appearance and body in such a short amount of time, the Kaiubi explained. You don't seem to be perturbed in the least that I am absorbing your chakra at a faster rate than before, Naruto mumbled. It would take many centuries before your reserves could even begin to compare to my own, laughed the Kaiubi. With the return of my chakra replenishment ability, I can replenish my chakra much faster than you can absorb it. Wait a minute. You said that was one of your abilities. What else can you do? Asked Naruto. You'll have to just wait and find out for yourself Brad, said Kaiubi. Naruto could almost imagine it smirking at him. A few moments of silence occurred as Naruto took in this information. By the way, since when were you smart enough to use big words like perturbed? Joked the Kitsune. A rather large tick mark appeared on Naruto's forehead as his left eye twitched uncontrollably. 
mutterings of stupid fox and thinking the sun shines out of his ass, were heard as Naruto left to get some ramen. Lunch was a rather pleasant experience. Naruto enjoyed well over two dozen bowls of ramen as he told Tuchi and A.M. of his advancement in the Chunin exams. After lunch, he went to the Kanoha shopping district to find new clothes. Finding something orange yet tasteful wasn't easy to do. Excuse me ma'am. Do you have this jumpsuit in orange? Asked Naruto. Orange? What are you crazy about? Do you have any fashion sense at all? The shopkeeper asked incredulously. Naruto answered her with a glare. The shopkeeper merely scoffed and went off to attend to another customer. I let her know that oranges are awesome. Said Naruto with a fist pump. Orange. Awesome. In what alternate reality is that possible? Said an amused feminine voice behind him. What was that? Naruto asked, turning around to meet the gaze of the smiling Sabaku no Tamari. The civilian clothing and bags of clothing let him know that he wasn't the only one shopping today. Naruto couldn't help but stare at the difference in Tamari's appearance from civilian clothing to ninja gear. She is a rather fine specimen to look at, isn't she Brad? Much better than that other teammate of yours, said a certain devious fox. A rather large blush appeared on Naruto's face. Shut up Hiro Kitsune. He screamed in his head. In no way shape or form will orange ever be fashionable, Tamari teased, snapping him out of his stupor. Ha! When I become the greatest shinobi in the world, people will be dying to wear orange. Declared Naruto still trying to hide his blush. That got Tamari to raise an eyebrow. Bold words, can you back them up, Naruto-san? You'll see in a month now, won't you, Tamari-san? Naruto grinned. I guess I will. I'll see in a month then Naruto, stated Tamari walking out of the shop. Of course, Tamari-san, Naruto chuckled. Oh and drop the suffixes. They don't really suit me, she said, turning back around to face him. Alright. Good luck in the exams. Tamari-chan, Naruto teased. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at the noticeable twitch in her eye before she left the shop. As Naruto left the shop, an Anbu appeared before him. Okage-sama wishes to speak with you, said the Anbu. I see, was Naruto's response. He had been expecting this. The old man probably wanted to know what changed in Naruto. That was fine because Naruto had some questions of his own that needed answering. Hiruzen Saratobi was very concerned about the sudden changes to surrogate grandson. From reports, he learned that Orochimaru had placed a five-pronged seal onto Naruto. He hoped nothing disastrous happened to the Kyuubi seal. Was it him or was Naruto walking through the door slightly taller than he was yesterday? Have a seat Naruto-kun, said the third. First, I must congratulate you on making it to the finals. Your match against Kiba was most impressive. Thank you, old man. But let me guess, the real reason you want to see me is to talk about my recent changes, isn't it? Asked Naruto. Yes, I wish to inquire about your more aggressive nature recently, the Hokage stated calmly. Though, on the inside, he made a note about how Naruto was far more direct and to the point than before. I finally got tired of everyone treating me like I was a demon, Naruto said in an even tone. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, the aged Hokage said, bowing his head in shame. Why do people hate me old man, why? Young Naruto cried. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, it would have been better if the third hugged the child who cried in his arms. That's what you always say to me. Naruto roared suddenly. He was huffing now just. Just stop saying that his voice was breaking. All right was the only thing the third could say. After several minutes of awkward silence, Naruto began his most important question, why didn't you tell me my father was Yandame? At this, the third's eyes widened to comic proportions. Naruto, how did you? It doesn't matter. Just answer me. Please. Just this once, to answer my question, Naruto pleaded. Here is in Siratobi let out a rather long sigh. Your father was beloved by the people of this nation as a hero and as the strongest shinobi ever produced within these village gates. But outside of the land of fire, he was feared and hated especially in Iowa. Your father alone won us the third shinobi war. I can't even begin to imagine how many Iowa ninjas he killed with his Horatian no jutsu. That alone gave him the first and only flea on side order in the bingo book. Even today, Iowa is still crippled by the damage your father inflicted on them. By giving you your mother's last name I was trying to protect you from possible Iowa assassins as well as politics. Politics. Yes, politics. Do you know my advisor Danzo? He has always wanted to train you to be one of his emotionless root pawns for the benefit of the villager so he says. Being the son of a former Hokage and the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi would make you an amazing weapon to have in his back pocket both militarily and politically, answered the third. I see, and what about the villagers? Was there nothing you could do about them? Naruto asked. I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm sorry. There was no way I could stop all the ignorance and abuse of the civilians without revealing your identity. All I could do was make a law forbidding anyone from speaking about it directly that way at least the children in your age group would grow up not knowing the burden you held, explained the Sandame. It didn't help me make friends did it? No, I suppose it didn't. 
Most parents ended up telling their children to stay away from you, sighed Saratobi. I hope one day you will find it in your heart to forgive me and the village. I don't know if that day will ever come Jiji-san. There are just too many memories, too much pain, and too much loneliness to ignore. I don't want revenge or just punishment, but I don't think I'll be able to forgive either. I just want to move on, said a somber Naruto. I see. You have indeed become strong Naruto. Minato and Kashina would have been proud, smiled Hiruzen. I know. They told me. They left some of their chakra inside my seal. I saw them last night, said Naruto enjoying the genuinely shocked look on the third Hokage's face. The third let out a boisterous laugh. Your parents were stubborn until the end. He reached for something in his desk and pulled out what looked to be a picture frame. This is something that you should have, he said, handing the picture over to Naruto. I meant to give this. It was a picture of his mother and father on their wedding day. Naruto couldn't stop the tears from coming out once again. I also want you to have this as well. Think of this as a memento from your father, he said, handing over a three-bladed kunai with strange markings on a longer-than-normal handle. Horation. Odd Naruto. Yes, this kunai made your father the most feared man to ever walk the elemental nations. Maybe one day you will be able to recreate it, but first you'll have to study up on it if you want to do so, said the old man. Do you have any scrolls on Naruto asked. He remembered that both his parents had been experts at the obscure ninja art. I'm afraid I don't, but I have something even better, I have a teacher in mind for you, smiled Saratobi. You should go meet him by the hot springs today. But first, he reached into his desk again this time to pull out your piece of paper, I want you to first channel chakra into this. Naruto nodded and began channeling his chakra into the paper. He watched as the paper glowed blue for a brief second before splitting down the middle while the two halves, one became soaking wet and the other wrinkled to bits. Saratobi went wide-eyed at seeing Naruto have three affinities. Amazing, the third whispered. He was attuned to three elements. He smiled softly, it seemed fate smiled at the boy. For the third time today, he went into his desk, this time taking out three scrolls. Well, it seems you have three elemental affinities. Naruto-kun. That's very impressive for someone of your age. You seem to have high affinities in wind, water and lightning. Now these three scrolls here have three for each of your three elements. He put them out for him to take. My Naruto isn't a fussy eater. Eat a lot and grow up to be a big boy. Go to bed early and sleep well, take your bath every day. The voice coughed and she sounded to be in pain to make friends, it doesn't matter how many. Just make sure they're real friends. People you can trust even a few is enough. And study your ninjutsu. I was never good at it, maybe you will be. Ninjutsu? Hey kid my boy, the third smiled. Th. Thank you, Naruto bowed a bit. It's what you deserve, Naruto-kun. Train and get stronger, the old man smiled as Naruto put them in his pouch. I promise. Old man I won't let you down. Naruto promised. I won't let you down either mom. I know you will, the third smiled that boy never did. Naruto hugged the old man and thanked him one last time before leaving. It was not until after Naruto left that Hiruzen acknowledged the present sitting outside his open window. You're going to have your hands full, Jiraiya, smiled the elder Hokage. His personality is a mix of Kishina and Minato. Hopefully he didn't inherit his mother's temper, joked the toad sage. His potential is indescribable. Three elemental affinities and the Kaiubi alone would make him a force to be reckoned with. Of course, he'll need a lot more chakra control than he has now. Then I'm going to give him his birthright. If he can master that then his chakra control problem should disappear, stated Jiraiya. That's going to raise some eyebrows a young boy that looks like a younger Yandane using one of his signature techniques. I will be up in arms, said Saratobi with a touch of concern. Then I'll just have to make sure he's capable of defending himself by the end of the month then, won't I? Laughed Jiraiya. Of course, I'll have to do a checkup on that seal first to make sure the snake didn't damage it. Maybe Minato's and Kashina's presence changed the seal some. A third nodded, be sure that you do. After all that he's gone through, I would love nothing more than for Naruto to show the village what a splendid ninja he can become. The toad sage simply nodded and left in a swirl of leaves. A third looked up at the portrait of Yandane. He will grow strong Minato. I can already see it in his eye, he's going to surpass you one day, I'll make sure of it. He declared. Needless to say, Naruto was absolutely giddy about the possibility of learning so many from the scrolls in his hands. He briskly walked back to his apartment trying to get ready to meet his new sensei for the month at the hot springs. Wait a minute. Hot springs. Why would my sensei be there? He thought. His train of thought was broken when he noticed his silver-haired jonin sensei leaning against the railing of his apartment. Hello, Kakashi sensei. No porno book today? No, not today. Although, there should be a new edition out next week. No, I'm here to talk to you today, said a surprisingly serious Kakashi. Oh, and what would this be about sensei? Asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Kakashi let out a sigh. 
This was going to be long and hard to explain. Naruto, I want you to know how sorry I am. I've let you down in more ways than just as your sensei, he said before pausing. I know I wasn't the best sensei to Team 7. I taught you guys teamwork, but nothing to better ourselves individually. As a result, Sakura barely put up a fight against Tino. Sasuke simply fell back on his clan techniques and Sharingan to help him pull through. You, on the other hand, relied solely on instincts to win your match against Kiba. You showed strength no one else thought you had. Now by the looks of those scrolls, it seems like you are learning elemental for your affinities. Naruto, I know that I can't take credit for it, but I'm proud of the ninja you've become. I don't know if anyone's ever said this to you, but many times you can know how strong someone is simply by looking them in the eyes. And in your eyes, I see someone who's been able to overcome the hardship he's dealt with his entire life and resolve to become stronger. Your parents would be so proud. I know they've told me, smirked at Naruto. At Kakashi's shocked expression, Naruto idly wondered if everyone's reaction he told this information to would be as funny as Kakashi's and the old man's. How? How did? They left some of their chakra in my seal, Naruto said, giving him the same explanation he gave the Hokage. At this, Kakashi had to chuckle and shake his head before he adopted a more downcast expression. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but I was on your father's genin team. Your father. Was a great man, he was like a second father to me when my own took his own life, and your mother became something of an older sister to me as well. One of my greatest regrets in my life was not being able to shield you his son from the hate and abuse you took at the hand of the villagers. When I was a part of the Anbu, I would often guard you from ninja or villagers that would try to harm you. But I couldn't always protect you due to my other duties as an Anbu operative that would take me out of the village, and I couldn't adopt you because of how suspicious it would be for the Yandame's last living student to adopt a small child that looks exactly like him. I know you are tired of hearing it, but I'm truly sorry Naruto both for failing you as a sensei and as an older brother, finished Kakashi. An older brother? Questioned Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Yes. Your father was like a father to me as well, so I guess I can call you my younger brother, one-eyed Kakashi. I already talked to the old man. I understand the situation you two were placed in because of my father's prowess as a ninja. Had you adopted me, Iwa would have sent their entire Anbu team to try and assassinate me, starting Naruto. And as for your failures as a sensei, how about you remedy that now? I could use some advice learning my wind, lightning, and water affinities. Grin Naruto. Three affinities huh? You are definitely Kanoha's most surprising ninja, chuckled Kakashi. You know, the cage bushin you are so fond of using can definitely help you out in your elemental training. Did you know that any experience you gained by your clones is returned to you? The total amount of experience the user gains is multiplied by the total number of clones being used to be trained. At this, Naruto's eyes widened at the implications of this new information. Oh, that will definitely speed things up, said the voice in his head. Now as for your affinities, I don't know any Futen Jutsu, but I've copied a few Suiten Jutsu, and Raten is my main affinity. I'll definitely send over a few scrolls of Suiten Jutsu whenever your sensei says you're ready to learn them. As for Raten, I've decided to teach my first original technique. Bakashi's eyes gleamed. I'm going to teach you Chidori. Later that day, Naruto found himself at the Kanoha Hot Springs. Again, he wondered why he was here. Perhaps, it was to use the hot springs water to learn the water walking exercise Kakashi had told him about. His musing was interrupted when he heard a rather perverse giggle one that he often heard from his new friends when he read his trashy porno books. Following the sound, he saw a rather tall man with spiky white hair and a large scroll on his back bent down behind the fence of women's hot springs scribbling down notes. Wow. This guy is a total perv, muttered Naruto. Be careful. Appearances can be deceiving, said the demon fox. It seemed to be talking a lot more recently. Hey you. Why are you? Naruto shouted, only to be stopped by a hand on his mouth. S-H-H-H-H-H-H-H. Be quiet kid. Are you trying to get us in trouble? The pervert asked in a whisper. Who are you and why are you peeking in the women's bath? Asked Naruto, finally breaking free of the man's grasp. Why I'm doing research for my book series. He exclaimed as a familiar book magically appeared in his hand. So you're that pervert that writes those trashy porno books. Accused Naruto. They are not some trashy porno books. They are works of literary art. And I'm not a pervert. I am Jiraiya the super pervert. He declared happily. Naruto sweat dropped at the last part of his rant. Jiraiya sensei. I thought you told me to stay away from him, mused Naruto. As you should. He's a pervert. Kashina huffed. A pee pervert. Yeah. He tried to peek at your mother and me during the process of creating you, his father said clearly embarrassed at the turn the conversation had taken. So this was my dad sensei. I hope he didn't corrupt my dad. Or me for that matter Naruto thought. So you're Jiraiya. Naruto said walking closer to the man. Ah. 
So you've heard the tales of the gallant Jirai Jiraiya began to brag until Naruto gave him a rather hard kick in the man's own. This left him on the ground moaning and groaning in pain. Somewhere in the village of Kanahagakur, Saratobi Hiruzen and Hada Kakashi shivered in fear and moved to protect their family jewels. That was for peeking on my parents during their alone time, said Naruto walking away. About three minutes later as Naruto was walking back toward his apartment when Jiraiya finally caught up to him. So you really met your parents yesterday? Jiraiya asked. Yes, I did Kyofu. My father wanted me to stay away from you so you don't corrupt me, he smirked. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes and muttered something about a disrespectful blonde dot. They shared a moment of silence until Jiraiya spoke again. So you're wondering why I left you alone, right? Naruto simply nodded. I don't know if you know this, but I run Konoha's entire spy network. I'm the one who works to make sure that nothing threatens Konoha. It would draw too much attention if a Sanin suddenly adopted a child that looked like his previous apprentice. And I can't handle espionage missions while taking care of a small child. Is that why you're back? To stop your Sanin teammate from getting the Sharingan? Naruto questioned. Perceptive, aren't you? Yes, part of the reason I'm here is to make sure whatever my snake of a teammate is planning fails. The other part of the reason I'm here is to see what's going on with my godson after all these years, to train him so he can protect himself and to give him part of his legacy, Jiraiya grinned. That last part caught Naruto's interest. Legacy? Yes, I'm going to give you the toad summoning contract and teach you one of your father's signature techniques, Jiraiya started. The Rasengan, he finished creating a swirling ball of blue chakra in his hand. I can tell you also want to do some elemental training as well, correct? He asked. Yeah. I'm going to abuse the hell out of the cage bushin to speed up the process, Naruto grinned. So, you know the secret of the cage bushin. That would definitely speed things along. But can you really handle it? The amount of chakra needed for that sort of training is pretty high, the toad sage asked. I think the fur ball in my gut can handle it, Naruto stated. If you're going to use my chakra, you'd better make sure you actually do get stronger. I will not get shown up by the Ichibi, said the Kyubi. And I'm not just some furball, brat. So, you're going to use the Kyubi's chakra? Is that wise? Asked a concerned Jiraiya. Yeah. We have come to an understanding of sorts. Apparently, as long as I refer to him as Kyubi-sama, he'll share his chakra with me. We even fist bumped on it, Naruto tried not to laugh as Jiraiya's eyes bugged out. Well, if you are going to be using its chakra, you just might be able to master all three of your affinities by the end of this month. You also want to learn some Fuinjutsu as well, right? Asked Jiraiya. At Naruto's nod, Jiraiya continued, okay. Here's what we'll do. Every day you will create 200 cage bushins for elemental training, starting with wind, since that was the first element that showed up and an extra 20 to learn and practice Fuinjutsu from one of my own cage bushin. By using the Kyubi's chakra, you won't have the problem where your chakra is evenly distributed among your clones. Afterwards, we will go to lightning because water will be the hardest for you to use during the exams. At Naruto's questioning gaze, Jiraiya continued, water is much much easier to use in the presence of a body of water. The finals will take place in a dry stadium, so learning Suiten Jutsu won't be incredibly useful for the exam. That's why you'll be learning at last. After you've learned the Rasengan, we'll be working on your strength, speed, and Tejutsu. Does that sound good to you? Not finding any fault in the plan, Naruto simply nodded. Good, the Toad Sage said, unsealing a water balloon and throwing it to Naruto. Now I want you to pop this balloon using only your chakra. Four weeks later, Naruto was on his bed reading Jiraiya's first book. The last month has been hellacious. After learning the Rasengan, Naruto's physical training under Jiraiya began. Early on, even with his enhanced physical abilities due to the Kaiubi, he was still no match for Jiraiya. But through the use of weights and gravity seals, Naruto's strength and speed increased dramatically. He had mastered nature manipulation for both his wind and lightning elements. He could now manifest his wind chakra into his tajutsu and use the chidori he even found a way around the tunnel vision problem with the chidori. But he did run into some problems. His progress with yuinjutsu was slow moving as well as his water manipulation. As Jiraiya had said, it was extremely hard to manipulate water without a body of water already present. Also, because he lived in the land of fire, there was a distinct lack of wind and lightning jutsus to learn. As a result, he had to resort to trying to create his own jutsu, but that too was also slow moving though he had been able to create a few through using known jutsu for inspiration. Also, Naruto learned from Jiraiya that wind manipulation was several times stronger when used in conjunction with a weapon like Tamari and her fan. But given that he only had one month, he couldn't possibly learn how to use any weapon with enough proficiency to use in the finals. Despite all that, Naruto, Jiraiya, and even the Kaiubi were confident that none of the prospective genin would be able to hold a candle to him. Jiraiya had also drawn up some chakra-suppressing seals, just in case Gara's little friend wanted to come out and play. 
according to Jurea's spy network, there were rumors of dealings between Odo and Suna. The fact that Orochimaru had shown up at the second part of the exam and that Suna's Jinchuriki was a part of the Chunin exam finals made their plan very clear. War was coming. If worse came to worst, Naruto would have to unveil some of his more powerful jutsu to stop the invasion. Since that was the case, Naruto made it his goal to end all of his matches as quickly and efficiently as possible. Hey, Hiro Senen. Can you give me a copy of your first book? Naruto asked. Don't call me that but I'm so happy that you're finally becoming a man. Here's a first edition autographed copy of Itcha Itcha Paradise. Jiraiya cried in the anime tears of joy. Not your first Itcha Itcha book, you perv. I meant your first ever book the one where my parents named me, Naruto finished in a quiet voice. Oh, I see. Alright, I think I still have my original manuscript for that one. I'm going to give you the last two days before the final so you can rest. You can read it then while I help the old man prepare for Suna and Odo, Jiraiya grinned. Naruto read the title of Jiraiya's first book. The tale of the utterly gutsy ninja, huh? Soon, Kanoha will learn the tale of the ultra baddest ninja, he smirked, turning to the first page. There were mutterings in his head from a certain demon fox about it being more like the tale of the utterly stupid brat, but since he didn't ask for that certain demon fox's opinion, they were promptly ignored. Chapter 5. The legend begins. The day of the Chunin exam started out as a normal day in Kanoha. That is if you didn't notice the Anbu in the background preparing for the invasion. In the last two days, the third was able to inform all the trusted Anbu and Jonins in the village to prepare for the invasion, as well as secretly prepare all the civilian shelters. Jiraiya was outside of the village working on a lead that he hoped would finally put Orochimaru in his place. But he assured everyone he would be back in time to help with the battle. At the actual Chunin Stadium, the crowd was abuzz with excitement. The Chunin candidates themselves varied in emotion. Tamari and Kankura were anxious about the upcoming invasion. Their brother Gara was excited by the possibility of blood. Shino, Shikamaru, and Niji watched the others with indifference. At the moment, the final three contestants were missing. Everyone expected Sasuke to be fashionably late how can you not, considering who his sensei was. The surprise was Naruto. Everyone thought the loud mouth orange brat would be the first to show up. In the cage box, the Kazakiyaj expressed concern over the Acheha. Hokage don't know it seems like the Acheha is missing, Arachimaru stated. Oh, I'm sure all the candidates will show up in due time. After all, they don't want to be disqualified from these exams now do they? Perhaps we should give the Acheha extra time should he need it, the Kazakiyaj suggested. You seem rather infatuated with one of my gen in Kazakiyaj Dono, the third gave the Orochimaru in disguise a curious look. So many people came here today to see him compete. It would be a shame for him to be disqualified, he explained. I see. But it's still my call to make. If he's late, he'll be disqualified. Besides, his match isn't until much later, so I doubt he'll be late, said Sandane. You were never very subtle Orochimaru, he thought to himself. Five minutes before the start of the first match, the two Kanoha Sharingan users showed up via Leaf Shunshin. The Kashi Sensei your Sakura screamed from the stands. Early? She asked, confused by the odd occurrence. Many of the other Jonin sitting next to her were also confused. Kakashi's early? Kurinai asked. She then put her hands together to try to dispel the Jinjutsu. It didn't work. Well at least he's still reading Icha Icha, so I guess that's still normal, right? Asuma sweat dropped. Sasuke Kun looks so cool. Ino shouted blushing. Well, it seems like certain people are happy that you've arrived, huh Sasuke? Kakashi teased his face in his book. The Ichiha chose to ignore the joke and instead search out his blonde teammate who strangely wasn't here. Kakashi, looks like you've had quite the effect on the dope, Sasuke smirked. Kakashi simply waved off the jibe at his punctuality with a one-eyed smile, oh, he'll be here. He probably wants to make an entrance. Sounds like the dope wants to show Sasuke began until he heard a crackle of lightning. Off. He smirked. This was going to be interesting. But the second crackle of lightning, Naruto arrived via lightning shunshin dressed in black anbu attire underneath a long orange cloak decorated with black flame motifs reminiscent of another certain blonde Kanohanin. The Kashi sensei. You're early. Naruto's eyes bugged out as he pointed a shaking finger at his older brother figure. The Kashi simply waved at Naruto as he continued to read his prized Icha Icha. Oh hello Naruto, I told Sasuke here that you'd be on time. Naruto then looked to Sasuke for answers with a finger still pointed at Kakashi. The Ichiha simply shrugged. That new outfit better not be all for show because I expect to meet you in the finals, Sasuke said. Oh, I'll be there. I hope you can handle a little tanuki, Naruto grinned. All Naruto got in response was a grunt. Everyone in the stadium besides Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sandane was shocked. That was Naruto. When did Naruto get it? Hot. Ino asked from the stands. I don't know, Sakura answered. You know, I've only ever known one other person to wear a coat like that. Asuma said. 
Yeah, and that was a lightning shunshun as well. Was he really the dead last of the academy? Kurinai asked. Ha. Ah. I knew I made the right decision to place my money in the Anko said, walking over to the group. He's totally going to cream them. Are you sure? I mean he beat Kiba, but for him to get past Niji might be a stretch, Kurinai said. Oh, I bet he has quite a few surprises in store for us. He always seems to have something up his sleeve, Anko grinned while taking a seat. Genma Shiranui came forward and called the beginning of the finals of the Chunin exams. Uzumaki Naruto vs. Hayuga Niji will now begin. All other participants please move to the viewing box to await your match. Sasuke and Naruto nodded to each other before Sasuke walked away. Kakashi simply shunshined up to the stands and took a seat near his fellow Jonin, Kakashi Sensei. Sakura screamed, happy to see her sensei after a month's absence. Hello, Sakura. How have you been? Kakashi asked with a one-eyed smile. I've been good. How was your training with Sasuke-kun and Naruto? She asked. Sasuke is as ready as he can possibly be for his match against Gara. the jonin said in a cheerful tone. As for Naruto, I can't tell the true extent of his skills because I didn't train him, he said. But I can say with confidence that he won't have a problem making Chunin in this exam. This surprised everyone except Anko who was now more confident than ever in her bet. But how can he improve so much in just one month? Kurinai asked. Let's just say that Naruto has more potential than anyone in this generation. And he's finally realized it, Kakashi said in a rather calm tone. But he was never any good at the academy. He was a dead last. How could he have more potential than Sasuke-kun? Ino asked. This time Asuma answered. They were certain. Circumstances that prevented Naruto from succeeding in the academy. All the Jonins immediately knew that he was referring to the hate he received for being the Kaiubi's host. What circumstances? Sakura asked. It's Naruto's secret to tell, Kakashi answered. If you want to know, you'll have to ask him. Do you really think Naruto will beat everyone that easily? Kurinai asked again. Oh, I have no doubt that he will. If Naruto really wanted to go all out, he'd be able to beat me as well, Kakashi said as he took out Icha Icha tactics. What? You can't be serious, Kakashi. You're the strongest Jonin in this village. Naruto can't be that strong. Kurinai said in disbelief. Oh, I'm very serious, he calmly stated with his head in his book. Everyone was now very interested in what Naruto could do. Back at the battlefield, Niji arrogantly stared at Naruto thinking this was the same dead last he had heard about. Naruto on the other hand stared at Niji impassively. You should give up now. It is your fate to lose to me today, Niji preached. Naruto simply raised his right eyebrow. I know about your dream to be Hokage. You are a fool to believe a dead last like you can become Hokage, Niji sneered. Naruto lowered his right eyebrow. Only to raise his left. Hajim. Gemma shouted. The second the match began, Naruto took one step towards Niji and disappeared into thin air. Startled, Niji activated his Byakugan just in time to see Naruto come at him head on with a roundhouse kick. At the last second, Niji had to block the kick with his left forearm. The second the kick made contact, the bandages on his forearm exploded and blood gushed out. The silence in the stadium allowed Niji's scream to echo. That was wind manipulation. Asuma screamed, dropping the cigarette from his mouth. What? Ino and Sakura asked simultaneously. Wind manipulation works by making your chakra as thin and sharp as possible. By channeling wind chakra into his kick, Naruto was able to turn Niji's arm into a bloody mess. Kakashi, how was Naruto able to learn to manifest his wind chakra in such a way? Most Futen users are never able to do such a thing, a disbelieving Asuma asked. But you'll have to ask Naruto-sensei, Kakashi simply answered with his head in his Icha Icha book. What I want to know is how he was able to move so fast. It was like he teleported right in front of Niji, Kurin I mused. That would be one of the ones he created. He calls it Shunpo, Flash Step. He channels a large amount of chakra on the soles of his feet. So whenever he takes a step and pushes off on the soles of his feet, he can basically jump to a location, Kakashi explained. That's amazing. How much chakra does the jump require? Anko asked. Naruto estimates every 5 meters traveled costs about as much chakra as a cage bushin, Kakashi answered. Wow, that much chakra. It's amazing that he can create such a thing, Kurinai said. Wow, Naruto's so strong now. Sakura mumbled thinking about how weak she was compared to her teammates. Oh, he hasn't even begun to show anything yet, Kakashi mused. But we probably won't see any more of this match because Niji's lost an arm already. For the first time in that match, Naruto said, unless fate can heal your arm, I think you've lost here Niji. How can you be so strong? You were the worst student in your class. Niji screamed, still holding his bleeding arm. There's no such thing as fate Niji. We decide our own destinies. I used to be a dead last knucklehead that couldn't even do a simple bushin. But one thing I always had was a dream to be Hokage. Everyone in my class laughed at me, everyone scorned me, and everyone ridiculed me. 
but I never gave up. To me it was a dream worth chasing after, a dream worth striving for, a dream worth fighting for. Now, I stand before you as the strongest genin in this tournament. He took a step forward. Now, I stand before you no longer the dead last everyone thought I'd be. Another step. Now, I stand before you as someone who spit in the face of fate. And then he disappeared. Naruto appeared in front of Niji and launched him into the air with a spinning heel kick. The crowd watched in awed silence as Niji's unmoving body was launched several feet into the air and dropped back down to the ground with dull thud. Naruto walked over to Niji's unmoving body and sat down next to his head. You've been trying to fight fate as well, haven't you, Niji? I know about the caged bird seal. One day, you'll be able to defy your fate as well, you just have to keep fighting. Getting that stick out of your ass won't hurt either, he joked. Chousa, Yuzumaki Naruto. There were several seconds of stunned silence as the crowd tried to comprehend what had just occurred. Slowly, the applause started in the general vicinity of Anko, Kakashi, and the other Jonin senseis. What happened to that noisy orange knucklehead a month ago? Kankuro asked. That was what the majority of the prospective Chunin wanted to know. It seems he has gotten much stronger, Shino said. Man. I didn't think this guy could get any more troublesome, but it appears I was wrong, Shikamaru groaned. Then he noticed that Sasuke wasn't all that surprised at Naruto's newfound strength. You don't seem surprised by your teammate's performance. We might have sparred in the last month, Sasuke said cryptically. That blonde seems to be very strong, Hokage Dono, muttered Orochimaru. My seal should have weakened him, not strengthened him. What happened? Yes. Naruto was always Konoha's most surprising ninja. I dare say this is his greatest surprise yet. Saratobi smiled. Even with his new powers, I highly doubt he'll be able to defeat my son Gara or Uruchiha, the Kazuki had stated matter-of-factly. We'll have to see, won't we? Maybe he'll surprise you as well, the third said. Leave it to Orochimaru to underestimate the power of hard work. Naruto realized that the eyes of everyone in the stadium were on him as he walked back towards the other genin. As he reached his fellow competitors, he immediately realized that they were weary of him. Surprisingly, it was Subaku no Tamari who broke the silence. I see the month of training paid off. Orange isn't as much of a fashion disaster anymore, is it? Naruto jokes. No, it's still ugly, she smirked. Well, I still have a few more matches to change your mind, don't I? Naruto returned her smirk. If Naruto's new powers confused people, his familiarity with Subaku no Tamari left everyone absolutely dumbfounded. Kankuro's eyes bugged out as he stared stupidly at his older sister and the leaf genin. Naruto noticed Sasuke staring at him with a raised eyebrow. What, team? Ichiha simply nodded towards the sand Kanoichi silently asking what was going on between them. I'll tell you later, Naruto said. The raven-haired boy just nodded and looked back at the battlefield in anticipation for the next match. The second match between Subaku no Kankuro and Aburam Shino will now Genma starts. I forfeit. Kankuro screamed. He didn't want to show off any of his abilities before the invasion. His forfeit definitely piqued the interest of his fellow genin. Something's not right here, Shino and Shikamaru both thought. Very well. The winner by forfeit is Aburam Shino. The next match will now commence. Well looks like you're up team. You think you can handle the Tanuki? Naruto asked. I remember the plan he drew as he walked toward the battlefield. He thought back to his spar against Naruto a few weeks ago and to his part in this invasion. Flashback, what the hell was that dope? How can you be that fast? Screamed a bloodied and dazed Sasuke. That was a new move I created just a few days ago, the blonde said calmly. Teach me it. No, Sasuke. You don't have enough chakra to use this technique effectively. Enough. Naruto's right. You don't have the chakra capacity to use that technique for any reasonable amount of time or distance, Kakashi intervening before Sasuke could retort. But the frustrated cry, Sasuke walked away from the training ground. Naruto wanted to follow, but Kakashi raised a hand to stop him. Let him cool off a little before talking to him again, he said to which Naruto could only nod. You've gotten really strong since the last time I saw you, Naruto. I'd have a hard time keeping up with that technique even with the Sharingan. Thanks, but it's not complete yet. I've been experimenting and I think I can go faster if I channel Wind Chakra instead of just regular Chakra, Naruto stated. Just be careful, Wind is known to be a very dangerous element to play around with. This tiniest of mistakes can be disastrous. I know, he said as he walked off to find Sasuke. Ten minutes later, he found Sasuke sitting against a tree tending to his wounds. He sat down near another tree facing him. After several moments of silence between the two, well, how are you going to do it? Do you have a plan? What plan? Sasuke asked. Itachi is an S-ranked ninja. You need a plan if you are going to kill him. Have you ever looked up his profile in the bingo book? The lack of answer was all that Naruto needed to know. Itachi's biggest weakness is his below-average stamina. His biggest strengths are his ninjutsu and jinjutsu from his sherigan. 
if you want to take him down, your best bet would be to find a way to slow down his two strengths with your own ninjutsu and shiringan and just outlast him in a war of attrition. Sasuke could only gape at the advice he was getting from his blonde teammate. It sounded like it could work. I would recommend gaining a familiarity with earth jutsu to protect yourself against his fire and water jutsu, training your shiringan to nullify high-level jinjutsu, and gaining strength, speed, and chakra capacity to outlast him. Why are you helping me? Sasuke asked. I didn't ask you for your help. We're teammates, Naruto said as if that answered everything. I don't need your help. This is something I have to do on my own. Why does it have to be that way? Because this is my clan my responsibility. He exclaimed. And then what? What are you going to do after you kill your brother? Are you going to follow in his footsteps and be a missing man of Konoha? Are you also going to hunger for power as well? Because that's the path you seem to be walking down towards right now, Naruto asked. I am nothing like him. Really? All you seem to care about in life is killing him. At this rate, you'd willingly give in to the power of Orochimaru's cursed seal for more power. At this rate, you'd probably sacrifice your own teammates if it meant a chance at Itachi. And at this rate, you'd just end up replacing Itachi with another power-hungry Itachi. There was no outburst this time on the Ichiha's part. You have a lot more in life to live for than just revenge. You have a chance here to rebuild the Ichiha into a powerful world-renowned clan once again. Let the Ichiha once again be known as the clan of great and powerful ninja, not a clan of traitors who only strive for power. We'll both rebuild our clans. Again silence reigned. What do you know about clan restoration anyway? Sasuke finally asked. Nothing to be honest, Naruto answered with a sigh. And seeing as we are both orphans, I guess we'll both figure it out along the way together. You have a clan, Dobe. Sasuke smirked. As a matter of fact, I am an arrogant asshole, Naruto smiled in reply. The Uzumaki clan once ruled Yuzushiagakur. We were renowned for our skill in, our incredible longevity, life force, and ridiculous chakra reserves. What happened to them then? They were destroyed sometime during the Second Shinobi World War. I see, Sasuke said in a low voice. So we are both the last of our once proud clans, Naruto. We'll have our first chance at recognition in a few weeks, Naruto started. During the Chunin exam finals, there's going to be an invasion led by Orochimaru, Odo, and Suna. What? Asked Sasuke, clearly surprised. Ureya of the sand and believes the snake is manipulating the sand into attacking us. That's why they brought their Jinchuriki to these exams. Jinchuriki? It literally means power of human sacrifice. It is the term given to people who have one of the nine-tailed beasts sealed within them. Jinchuriki often possess immense chakra reserves and destructive powers. As a result, all of them are hated, feared, and oftentimes shunned by enemy and ally alike. Tailed beasts? You mean like the Kaiubi? Sasuke asked. At Naruto's nod, he asked another question. Let me guess, Gar is their Jinchuriki. Another nod. Great. That should be fun, Sasuke sucked his teeth. But not up to the challenge of subduing him. Naruto jokes. Don't worry about me, Dobe. I'll get the job done. What are you going to do? Sasuke retorted. At this, Naruto was silent for a moment. Jinchuriki are often known as army destroyers. We are being invaded by two different villages. And while you may be able to nullify their trump card, we'll still one of our own to hold back the forces of two nations. I see, Sasuke frowned. That's why the villagers hate you and call you a demon behind your back. Yes, it's an S-rank secret punishable by death that I'm the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. Like many of my brethren, I am hated, shunned, and feared by our own village. From what I hear, Gara has had multiple assassination attempts on his life by his own father the Kazakiage. People are stupid, he said simply. For once, we agree team, Naruto grinned. Seeing Kakashi walk over to them, well, looks like it's back to training for us. Your mission for the Chunin exams is to subdue and detain Gara to prevent him from taking part in the invasion, do you think you can handle it? Who do you think you are talking to? Sasuke smirked, getting up. I'm taking on one genin. You're going to fight an entire army, can you handle it? I guess we'll have to see what we... Flashback end, Ud, Naruto said. As Sasuke walked past, he slipped him one of the chakra suppressing seals from Jiraiya that might come in handy. The Ichiha simply nodded in acknowledgement and continued on as if nothing had happened. The match between Ichiha Sasuke and Sabaku no Gara will now begin. Shouted Genma. The match began as Naruto thought it would. With the speed training help Sasuke got from Kakashi and himself, Sasuke was able to get past Gara's sand defense with relative ease as Lee did. Two swift body blow kicks and one punch to the face was all it took to put Gara on the defensive. Gara immediately retracted all his sand and formed a protective cocoon around himself. The defense proved too strong even for Sasuke's most powerful Katen Jutsu. So, he was left with just one option the Chidori. Backing up all the way up the wall opposite Gara, he formed the hand signs. Ushiyuseru. He held his left hand as the lightning chakra started to form around it. 
soon, it became visible, and it emitted a high-frequency chirping noise. And then he charged. With his Sharingan active, he could see all the counterattacks Gara used with his sand. As expected, the Chidori pierced right through Gara's cocoon. At the sight of his own blood, Gara went into a panic attack. Mother, what is this? Is this my blood? It's my blood. He screamed as the sand cocoon around him began to crumble. That was the opening Sasuke needed as he rushed in and placed the chakra suppressing seal on Gara's forehead. What is this seal? Why can't I hear mother? Mother, where are you? Gara screamed. Again, Sasuke took advantage of Gara's delirium. This time he moved behind Gara and knocked him out with a chop to the neck. Gara. Tamari screamed. And with that, Kabuto released a Jinjutsu through the stadium the invasion had begun. The Sand and Odo Ninja disguised as Anbu attacked led by Baki. The Kanoha Ninja engaged. And Rachimaru revealed himself to be the Kazuki as his sound force set up a barrier in preparation for his fight against his sensei. Hello Rachimaru. It's nice of you to reveal yourself, Sandium said. I see. So you were expecting this invasion. No matter, Kanahagakur will fall today and you along with it. The snake Sanin laughed. Not if I have anything to say about it. As Sasuke began to wrap the now unconscious Gara in ninja wire, Tamari and Kankuro tried to intervene. Get away from him. Kankuro cried. As Tamari was about to unseal her fan, she heard a flash and a voice from behind her. Sorry, Tamari-chan. I can't let you free your brother. And with one chop to her neck she too was now unconscious. You. Kankuro faced the blonde trying to unseal Crow. But he was too slow as Sasuke was able to subdue him with a punch to the gut. Shino. Grab Shikamaru and come help Sasuke take these three to Anbu headquarters. Naruto commanded. Troublesome. I was hoping to pretend like I was taken out by the Jinjutsu, said Shikamaru. But he and Shino nonetheless came to help. As the three Kanoha Jenin were about to move out, they were surrounded by several San Jonin. You're not going anywhere, said Baki. You three go. I'll take things off here, Naruto said, releasing all his weights and gravity seals. Shikamaru raised his eyebrow at that. Are you sure you can handle this, Naruto? At this, another presence appeared with one hand on Naruto's shoulder. He'll be fine. I'm here now, said the perverted Toad Sage. It is of the utmost importance that Gara does not get free. Do you understand me? The Ichiha, the Nara, and the Aviram nodded and sped off. I see you're right on time, Naruto jokes. Was your mission successful? It was. The snake's in for a nasty surprise, Jiraiya grinned. Once I'm done here, I'll help get rid of those snakes and... No. I'll take care of the snakes and the Odo army. You make sure Jiji ends the slimy snake once for all, Naruto decreed. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow, are you sure? You only have three minutes at most. It'll have to be enough, Naruto evenly responded. All right. I'll cover you while you get ready. Just be careful. I want there to be something left of Yuzumaki Naruto to train after this, Jiraiya said, giving Naruto a little shove in the back. Go. Naruto nodded and took a few steps back away from the other ninja as he began to channel a massive amount of wind chakra. All right, Kurama. Juice me. Are you sure three minutes will be enough? Your body can't handle the speed and power of that technique for longer than that. Kai would be asked. It will be because it must be. All right. Good luck, Kit. Insert Bleach Ost. Invasion. Begin. As the chakra washed over Naruto, the fighting throughout the stadium seemed to slow down to take in the sight that was the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Soon, the ground underneath him began to crumble as Naruto's wind chakra became visible on his body. The loud bell-like screech was deafening and seemed to stop all fighting in the area. Futen. Case Kaminikari. Wind release. Wrath of the wind god screamed a Kaiubified Naruto. Naruto flashed from the stadium to the gates of Kanoha leaving a trail of destruction in his path. Ureya smirked as he watched his godson go. Naruto shows the world one more time why it only takes one Namikaze to destroy an army. Naruto arrived right within the middle of the Odo army by slamming one of its ninja's face into the ground. He flashed, killing another with a kick through the stomach. Another flash, this time decapitating several ninja with a lariat. The Odo ninja began to panic. Their comrades were being methodically cut down and there was nothing they could do about it. All they could do was watch as the blur of white and orange decimated them. Seconds later, the body count reached several dozen. Then the hundreds. Two minutes and twelve seconds later, the Odo army was no more. But the Odo army gone, the Kanoha forces would be able to hold off the Suna ninja. Now, it was time to deal with the three snake summons. Gathering a large amount of wind chakra into his right arm, he flashed and rammed his arm through one of Orochimaru's unnamed snake summons. Forty seconds left. Naruto had to flash to the roof of a nearby house to escape the bites of the other two snakes. He was beginning to feel the toll his jutsu was having on his body. His 12-year-old body was just not strong enough to handle the speed that the jutsu allowed him to move at, and definitely not strong enough to handle the pressure of sustaining the massive amount of wind chakra cloaking him. 25 seconds left. 
Once again, the snakes tried to strike Naruto. This time, he was prepared. Taking in a breath of air, he performed three quick hand seals. Futen. Shinkuha. Wind release. Vacuum wave he screamed. The sheer amount of wind chakra put into that jutsu was enough to completely split the snake in half. Fifteen seconds left. Now, Naruto was beginning to pant, and the fatigue was beginning to overwhelm him. His muscles just wouldn't move, and the cloak of wind chakra was beginning to thin out. As the last snake summon coiled its head and prepared to strike, he considered his limited options. His body wouldn't be able to flash not anymore. Anything else would cause irreparable damage to his young body by tearing his muscles apart. Ten seconds left. Humming to a decision, Naruto channeled all his remaining wind chakra and willed his muscles to perform the necessary hand seals. Tora. The snake was 50 meters away from him. Ushi. 25 meters away. Inu. The snake's mouth now had him surrounded. You. The snake clamped down onto Naruto. Me. Putin. Ditapa. Wind release. Great breakthrough he exclaimed. Wind chakra bursts out from Naruto. Almost instantly, the snake's head exploded from the pressure. Naruto stood on top of the rubble that used to be a house where the snake summon's head was supposed to be. His orange coat now painted red as he teetered on the edge of unconsciousness. 2 minutes 57 seconds. Naruto said, collapsing onto his knees. Mission. Complete, he smiled letting the darkness claim him. Leech Ost. Invasion. And Gureya smiled as he saw the last of the snake summons fall to his godson. He's going to surpass all of us one day soon, Minato. I hope you're proud of him. I know I am. With Naruto single-handedly taking out the Odo army and Orochimaru's snake summons, the rest of Konoha's forces should be able to hold the defensive line against the invading sand. Now, for the final loose end. Creating a cage bushin to collect his godson, he shunshine to the barrier the Sound 4 had set up for Orochimaru. Several Anbu arrived to greet him on the rooftop. Jiraiya-sama, the four Odo ninja, created a barrier that prevented us from helping Hokage-sama. Anyone who tries to enter is immediately engulfed in flames. The ninja themselves are protected by another barrier behind them. I see. Interesting. As he examined the barrier. Each member takes a corner and powers a portion of the shield. But if we were to incapacitate just one of the four, the barrier would immediately crumble, he mused. Sensei can take care of himself against the snake. Orochimaru's own arrogance will be the end of him, he smiled. I want all of you to be prepared to apprehend those four when Orochimaru makes a break for it. But Jureya-sama, the Hokage and Anbu started. We'll be fine, Jirei replied calmly. I have a special surprise for the snake. It seems Konoha still stands strong, my student, remarked the elderly Hokage. It does not matter. I will still kill you today. Even if my fire is extinguished today, the will of fire will still burn strong. That was one thing you've never learned, and that was why I could never have chosen you as my successor. Silence. This is your end sensei. Kuchius. Ido tensei. Screamed the snake Sanon. At the clap of his hands, three coffins appeared marked one, two, and four respectively. Immediately, Hiruzen knew what his student was planning. Orochimaru. You dare desecrate the past cages of this village. Ah. So, you know about this dot then you already know that you have no chance against me now, grinned the snake as Shadame and Nidame walked out of their coffins. It seemed Minato's sacrifice to the Shinigami made him ineligible for subjugation under Ido Tensei. Hello Siratobi. You've gotten quite old, remarked Hashirama. It seems we've been summoned through use of my Ido Tensei. Such insolence. Said Tabarama. Never in my years had I ever thought we would be forced to do battle. Please forgive me, Siratobi frowned. Yes Sensei. With their help, my revenge will be complete, Arachimaru laughed as he placed the kunai talismans inside the reanimated Hokages. This is the end for you Siratobi Sen. His rant was interrupted by a punch in the face from the Shadame and a kick in the stomach from the Nidame. Right outside the barrier, Jiraiya had the biggest shit-eating grin to ever exist on his face. How dare you? With those talismans you should be under my control. Cried Orochimaru. It appears someone got to our bodies first and prevented you from controlling us, smirked Taburama. Now, you shall pay for what you've done. Mokuten Hijutsu. Jukai Koten. Wood release secret technique. Nativity of a world of trees cried Hashirama as wood began to grow on top of the roof. This is bad. I could take down Sensei one on one, but with both the first and second Hokages reanimated and out of my control, there's no way I could possibly win this one. Abarama looked back at the now brain dead and utterly confused third. Saratobi, I know you're old now, but shouldn't you be doing something? That man was your student, was he not? He joked. Right. Sensei, snapping out of his stupor. Performing a few quick hand seals, Katen. Karyu Endon. Fire release. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet. Orochimaru was narrowly able to escape his sensei's jutsu, but failed to notice the wood vine that had now wrapped itself around his left ankle. 
With one tug, the snake sand and crashed onto the roof as more and more vines sought to restrain him. Forming only one hand seal, Tabarama sought to drown the snake, Suetan. Sir Uitan. Water release. Water dragon bullet a massive swell of water formed into a dragon and launched itself at the restrained Arachimaru. The attack left a bloodied and severely injured Arachimaru still being held back by the Shadame's wood vines. As the three cages prepared for the final assault, they witnessed a pale arm shoot out of Arachimaru's mouth. Then another. And then a head. Finally, a newly healed Arachimaru crawled out of his previous body. Arachimaru, you have truly become a monstrosity. His sensei yelled. Quickly. Lower the barrier now. We have to retreat. Arachimaru ordered his sound for ignoring his sensei. The four Odo ninja did as told. They dropped the barrier and activated their cursed seals, hoping to draw on enough power to cover their master's escape. The combined power of four level two cursed seals provided power necessary to hold off the wood vines that sought to capture their master again. This gave Arachimaru the milliseconds necessary to meld himself to the ground and disappear to fight another day. He may have lost his elite bodyguards, but that was a far better option than losing his own life at the hands of the first three Hokages. After the Sound Four had been captured, Jiraiya walked over to his sensei who was talking to his own teachers. Hello sensei. Shadame. Nidame, he bowed his head at the two reanimated Hokages. Senseis meet another of my students. This is Jiraiya, Saratobi introduced. Jiraiya, what is the state of Kanoha? All the civilians have been evacuated behind the Hokage monument. The sand forces have been pushed back outside our gates. And the Odo forces are no more, the Toad Sage answered. No. More. The elderly Hokage asked, stunned. On. Massacred. Wiped off the face of the world, he answered. Be but how. At this, Jiraiya grinned. It only takes one Namakas to destroy an army. Saratobi's mouth hung open for one moment before he let out perhaps the heartiest laugh he's had in years. Minato, your son is going to shatter your legend. I'm sorry, but who is this Namakas? Asked Tabarama. His name is Namakas Uzumaki Naruto, a genin who took part in the Chunin exams in this very stadium before the invasion began. He also bears the same burden your wife did Shadame sama answered Hiruzen. I see. I must meet this boy, replied Hashirama, his interest piqued. I do as well. Jinchuriki or not, to take out an entire army at such a young age is astounding. Truly, you have kept the will of fire strong in our absence, Saratobi, said the Nadame. Yes, the will of fire burns strong in young Naruto, smiled the professor. The legend of Namaka's Uzumaki Naruto was born today. And one day soon, his legacy will outshine all of ours. Chapter 7. Truths, I see. The boy has been hated his entire life hasn't he? Frowned Hashirama. Saratobi and Jiraiya had just finished recounting the events since the Second Shinobi World War, including Naruto's life in the village hidden in the leaves, the events of the other Shinobi World Wars, the Kaiubi attack, the Ichiha massacre, and Orochimaru's recent invasion to the Senju brothers. Needless to say they weren't pleased at the behavior of the village they had built together. It is disheartening to see such mistreatment of a young boy for something out of his control. His own father had made him the Jinchuriki hoping to save the village. Yes. Soon after I made the decision to grant Minato's final wish, I knew it was a mistake. He believed that one day, his village would be able to see past the Kaiubi and treat his son fairly. Perhaps that day is today, but it didn't come fast enough to leave Naruto unscarred, said a saddened Sandame. Your successor must have truly loved this village Hiruzen. The faith he put in the men his son speaks volumes to that, said Tabarama. Minato always said, the fire's shadow illuminates the village Jiraiya smiled at the memory of his student. His prowess on the battlefield was on a level not seen since your era senseis, Saratobi commented. Indeed. Becoming Hokage before 30, taking space-time ninjutsu to heights I would never have thought possible, and the ingenuity behind his few ninjutsu and Rasengan would certainly make him one of the most powerful shinobi to have ever lived, complimented Tabarama. And it seems his son is well on his way to surpassing his legend. Yes, now that I think about it, what are the skills of this young Naruto? Asked Hashirama. Besides having massive reserves for a genin probably more than mine, he has three elemental affinities and decent tune in level to jutsu without enhancements, answered Jiraiya. Three affinities, huh? Mused Hashirama. What are they? Wind, lightning, and water. Wind's his strongest right now. Lightning is getting close, but water is still pretty terrible. The brat can't produce enough water to brush his teeth without a body of water nearby, joked Jiraiya. I see. Perhaps, I can help with that. Maybe I can also give the boy an intro space-time ninjutsu, offered by Nidane. I'm sure Naruto would be honored to learn water manipulation and jutsu from you sensei, smiled Saratobi. Now, Jiraiya, what was that jutsu Naruto used to take out the Odo army? All I could tell was that he was gathering an enormous amount of wind chakra. That's right it's called Futen. Kami no Akari wind release. Wrath of the wind god. 
By gathering a massive amount of wind chakra to cloak his body, he is able to move at unimaginable speeds by combining this with his shunpo technique while making his body into a weapon. Anything he touches basically gets torn to shreds by wind chakra. That sounds somewhat similar to the current Rakage's lightning release armor, but on a much more destructive scale. What are the drawbacks? Asked Hiruzen. He can't maintain it. Simply put, Naruto's 12-year-old body just isn't strong enough to handle moving at those speeds, or durable enough to handle the pressure of sustaining that amount of wind chakra on the surface of his body. Right now, he can't hold it for more than three minutes, and that's stretching it. It also takes more than a whole cage's worth of chakra to sustain the jutsu for those three minutes, answered Jiraiya. I see. The amount of nature manipulation and chakra necessary easily makes it an S-rank jutsu. I would like you to place restrictions on how long Naruto can use the jutsu until his body grows up enough, suggested the professor. Jiraiya nodded in agreement. So young and he's already such a technique. And he still hasn't mastered water or the Kyuubi's powers yet. Truly, his potential is frightening, remarked Hashirama. With my brother helping him with water and space-time ninjutsu, perhaps I can help train his biju powers. Now that I think about it, how long are we going to be able to stay in these bodies, brother? Because we are in control of our own bodies, we can dispel ourselves anytime we wish. I don't know about you, but I'd like to train the next carrier to the will of fire before passing on again, the younger of the Senju brothers answered. I agree as well, brother. The brighter the future is for this boy, the brighter the future will be for our village. Perhaps, it's time we meet the boy in question, suggested Hashirama. He should be waking up soon. My clone checked out his injuries. He had no physical injuries, just severe cases of muscle fatigue and chakra exhaustion. The muscle fatigue will likely keep him bedridden for a few days, but the chakra exhaustion should be cured by now, thanks to his tenant, Jiraiya said. Very well then, let us all go meet our hero, smiled Saratobi. The council meeting can wait. Hey dope. Get up. I know you're awake, commanded Sasuke. Damn it team. Can't a guy arrest? I'm so tired I can't even move my head to look at you, responded Naruto from his hospital bed. Why are you here anyway? I thought I'd tell you my mission was a success. Gara is being held at the Anbu Center right now sleeping. According to his siblings, he hasn't slept in years, replied the Ichiha. He'll probably be out for a few days to make up for the insomnia. I see. It's probably the fault of a crappy seal. Soon is not exactly known for its few injutsu. Maybe Jiraiya can fix it for him when Suna comes to sign a peace treaty, wondered Naruto. So care to explain to me how you manage to wipe an entire army off the face of the world and only come out of it with muscle fatigue and chakra exhaustion, he interrogated. Maybe I don't wanna, you jerk, the blonde grinned. But after a momentary stare down between the two, he relented, wind nature manipulation on a massive scale and a few dozen shunpos. Well, that explains the white and orange flash all the reports are talking about. How'd you learn both wind and lightning manipulation in one month? Sasuke asked, genuinely curious. Page Bushin. I get the memories of each clone after it dispels. If seven clones train for one day, it's the equivalent of training for a week. Sasuke's mouth gaped a little. You think I can learn that? I'd estimate each clone would cost as much chakra as two to three katen. Kakaku fire release. Great fireball jutsus. PSH. I wish I had an unlimited amount of chakra stored in my stomach, the Achiha grumbled. You're right. I don't have all seeing eyes that can detect jinjutsu, that see movement in slow motion, and can copy to jutsu styles, hand signs, and ninjutsu. Oh, lucky me. Naruto wailed. HMPH. Shut up, dope. After a few moments of silence, we'd better have gotten promoted. We both won our matches and played important parts in the invasion. Baby. Honestly, I couldn't care less about a promotion, I just want to get back to training. I still have so much to improve on. What else are you still working on? Water manipulation mostly. I can't do water jutsus at all unless I'm near a body of water. If I tried doing one at the Chunin exam stadium, I'd probably only get a puddle of water. Sasuke had to smirk at the last part. After thinking to himself, he reluctantly asked, since they were supposed to be helping me, got any tips for me? It felt so weird asking Naruto for help. There are plenty of skilled earth jutsu users in Konoha, starting with our very own sensei. Since he has the Sharingan as well, he'll probably have a unique way to help you along in that respect. You should ask Guy for weights to begin your tojutsu training. And for chakra capacity, try jogging while water walking for an hour or two every day. Then work your way up to jogging against the current of a river and eventually up a waterfall, the blonde suggested. The Ichiha grunted his usual noncommittal response, but deep down he was glad Naruto had given him such useful advice and had not ridiculed him for asking for help. I'm going to go find Kakashi. Hopefully, he can get me started on Doton. Later, dope. And you'd better get well soon. We still have to finish our fight. Yeah whatever, Team Naruto groaned trying to fall back asleep. 
Ten minutes later, Naruto was woken up by a bonk on the head. The first thing he saw was Jiraiya standing over his bed with a grin on his face. What the hell is Hiro Senen? You little brat. Not even your dad called me that. Aburama raised an amused eyebrow to Siratobi, Hiro Senen. Sandane just put his face in his hands and shook his head as Jiraiya and Naruto continued to argue. Naruto, you can argue with Jiraiya later. There are two people here that would like to meet you. At this, Naruto looked at the other two people in the room. Who are they? Idiot. Do you not know the first two of your village? Asked Jiraiya. Hey. It's not my fault the academy was boring and people hated me. Besides, how can they be the first two Hokages? They look younger than Jiji, retorted Naruto. Yes. My student Arachimaru brought them back to life using a forbidden jutsu. They wish to see the savior of the village. Also, Hashirama here is actually very familiar with your burden, answered the elderly Hokage. No kidding. I hate his stupid wood jutsus, said Kurama. You captured Kurama with your Mokuten? Naruto asked. Kurama. Does Kaiubi have a name? Asked Hashirama. Yeah. Kaiubi is a title not a name, Naruto answered. I guess you do learn something new every day. My wife was the first ever Jinchuriki of Kurama, and she never learned its name, replied Shadane. Naruto's eyes widened at that statement. So, why do you guys want to see me? It can't be just because I helped out during the invasion. As a matter of fact, there is, Jiraiya answered. I'm going to be out of the village for a few weeks starting tomorrow. So, I guess you can say I've found some suitable replacements. That's right. I'll be helping you with water manipulation and if we have time, an intro into space-time ninjutsu so you can eventually succeed your father. My brother will help you practice controlling Kurama's chakra, smiled Nidane. Ugh. Not looking forward to having to deal with Mokuten again after all these years, muttered the Kitsune. Kurama doesn't like the prospect of having to deal with Mokuten again after all these years, Naruto chuckled. I'd imagine no one likes the prospect of getting smothered by wood vines, Sirotobi mused. Well then, Naruto will come to my office tomorrow morning. I have something to give to you and afterwards, Tabarama sensei can go ahead and start your training. Let's see. We have about an hour before the council meeting today, how about we survey the damage around the city for the time being? I'm sure you wish to see the state of our village after being away so long, right? The Senju brothers nodded, while Jiraiya gave off a rather perverse giggle. One hour later, the post-invasion council meeting began. Hiruzen, Kakashi, and Hashirama were present. Surprisingly, Tabarama wasn't there. And Jiraiya was well, Jiraiya. He was likely doing research. Chikaku, would you please tell us the state of our forces and the damage to our village? Asked the Sandane. The elder Nara nodded. Because we were prepared for the invasion, we were able to safely move just about all the civilians to safe zones and only suffered minimal ninja losses due to the efficiency at which the enemy forces were eliminated. He said that last part with a shudder. There was some damage to village walls, but that can be repaired with some time. Okage-sama, is it really wise to allow that boy to be that strong? Asked a random member of the civilian council. As soon as he finished his statement, he experienced a rush of killing intent directed toward him. For the last time, Naruto is not Kaiubi. I'm sorry if your feeble mind can't comprehend that, responded Kakashi harshly. That is correct. The Jinchuriki are not the same as the sealed inside of them. In fact, the first ever Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi was my wife, Yuzumaki Mido. And I am certain she wasn't the Kaiubi reincarnated, Hashirama said, shocking everyone. The boy should be looked at as a hero. Less than an hour after being born into the world, he was tasked with holding back the strongest of all. Dot. He didn't ask this burden, but he has dealt with it for his entire life and will continue to do so. Mido Sama was the first of the Kaiubi? Asked Kaharu. How come we were never told of this? Yes, Mido sealed the Kaiubi inside of her after I released it from Madara's control, after my final battle with him, answered the first. The reason for not telling everyone was twofold. For safety reasons and the fact that many villagers would unjustly believe she was the Kaiubi. I believe I made the right decision if the treatment you all have shown the young boy is any indication. The startling revelation that the demon boy they had despised shared the same burden as their founder's wife weighed heavily on the minds of many members of the council. Moving on, I believe it's time for Chunin promotions. I move to nominate Ichiha Sasuke, Nara Shikamaru, and Aburam Shino for their successful mission in subduing the children of the former Kazakiage and preventing them from participating in the invasion. I also nominate Yuzumaki Naruto for his efforts in taking out the enemy forces and my former student summons. Are there any objections? Asked a third knowing no one would object to Naruto's promotion now with what his sensei had just revealed about the former Jinchurikis of Konoha. There was still some disagreement on the faces of some of the members of the council, but they couldn't voice them without looking petty and stupid. Seeing as there are no objections, I will award these promising genin later. For now, I assume many wish to know how our former Hokages have returned to life. 
Yes, how are you living again Shadin Dono? Asked Danzo. It seems we were brought back to life through the use of my brother's Edo Tensei technique by Hiruzen's former student. It was through the work of another of Hiruzen's students that we were no longer under their control, answered Hashirama. Perhaps when my brother and Jurei arrive, we may get answers to how this all happened. After Orochimaru found out that bringing our former Hokages back to life was a bad idea, he was forced to retreat. He left behind his four elite bodyguards dubbed the Sound Four. All four are currently being interrogated by Ibiki and Anko for any useful information they may have on my wayward students' workings, answered Hiruzen. And the fate of the children of the Kazakiage. Danzo pressed. It turns out my student was killed and has been masking the Kazakiage for a while. As such, Suna has denied much of the responsibility for their invasion. After things calm down in Suna, they will send a delegation for negotiation. Before Danzo could respond, the door of the council room opened. And Tabarama walked into the council room dragging a bloodied, battered, and unconscious Jureya behind him. I was walking around town and was about to come to this meeting when I noticed your student being chased by several women that he was apparently peeping on in the hot springs, Saratobi, Tabarama smiled. Hiro Senen indeed. At this, the professor gave a frustrated growl and banged his head on his desk. Of course Jureya had to get caught peeping at women with my sensei watching. Paharu, Hamura, is that you? It's good to see you again, said Nadine. Yes, likewise sensei, answered Hamura. At this, Tabarama looked towards the last member of the elder council with a scrutinizing gaze, Danzo, is that you? What happened to your eye and arm? During the second shinobi world war, I was injured fighting against Iwa, he immediately answered. Then why is it that I can sense multiple Sharingan signatures from you? His eyes narrowed. Last I heard from Saratobi, the only Sharingan left in the village belongs to one of the genin he just promoted in Hata Kakashi. At this, Danzo's visible eye widened. Damn it. I forgot that Sensei was probably the best sensor ninja to ever exist. Danzo. What is the meaning of this? Screamed Hiruzen. Everything I do is for the good of the village, he answered. And with a wave of his hand, several unidentified Anbu appeared before him. It seems I'll have to move my headquarters. Mokuten. Moku bind a wood release. Wood bind. As the wood technique moved toward the root Anbu, Danzo's bandages ripped as his wood cells came to protect him from the Shade Moan, knocking the other two elders from the table. What? Mokuten. Danzo, how could you betray Kanoha like this? As I've said, everything I've done has been for the betterment of the vil, Danzo insisted. Guchius. Gamaguchi Shibari summoning. Toad mouth bind. Jureya screamed and apparently recovered from his injuries at the hands of righteous feminine fury. There's no way out of this Danzo, surrender yourself. He said, taking out one of Danzo's root operatives. Never. Rikiri Lightning Cutter. With Jureya, Saratobi, and the first two Hokages distracting the root Anbu, the Team 7 Jonin was able to attack Danzo head on. With one swift jab, he was able to cleave Danzo's Sharingan arm right off. Without his right Sharingan and wood release arm, he had nothing that could stop the Shadame's Mokuten Jutsu from binding him. Take Danzo and his root ninja to Ibiki and remove his last Sharingan eye. Ordered the Sandame. He will be executed for treason. Hiruzen don't you think this is a little rash? Asked Hamura. No, I've had enough of Danzo's schemes. Years ago, I told him to disband Root, but it appears he went behind my back then. And he had the audacity to experiment on himself with Sharingan eyes and Hashirama's cells. No, this isn't rash. I should have done this years ago. I believe this meeting is over, we have more important things to worry about, said a rather disturbed Jureya. The rest of the council could only nod and move to leave the room. Hours later, the Hokages, Jureya, and Kakashi returned to the Sandame's office to discuss the fate of one Danzo Shimura. Saratobi, what are you going to do with Danzo? Asked Tabarama. He has committed many treasonous deeds in the name of our village's safety. Will you execute him? I'm afraid I will have to do so and in a swift fashion, the aged Hokage said in a pained voice. The only way for Danzo to have gotten away with this level of treachery is to have several of his operatives in high places all over this village. I can't imagine Danzo or his root will be happy staying in prison. And even if he no longer has his Sharingan eyes that he stole from the dead Ichiha or the cells from Yandame Sama, he is still a dangerous person to allow to live. He will attempt to break out in one way or another. And when he does so, he will attempt either a coup or will flee the village with his forces. Then it sounds like the best solution to this problem will be to eliminate him. How unfortunate. He was never this insubordinate when we were alive. I wonder what changed and caused him to do these acts, Hashirama thought out loud. I believe this all began when I was appointed as the Sandame Hokage by you sensei, he looked towards the Nidane. He thought of himself as my rival at everything. But when I was appointed to this position, I guess something broke inside of him and he has been after my job ever since. The fact that he never officially disbanded Rude only proves that he planned to one day take the title of Hokage using underhanded tactics. 
Yes, the fact that he had his destroyed right eye replaced with a Manjekir Sharingan is disturbing. Not many Achiha awaken those cursed eyes. Do you know whose eyes he took? Asked Nadame. Yes. I know exactly whose eyes he took and for that reason, I personally had to destroy that particular eye. It once belonged to a young man named Shisui Achiha, who was a prodigy that few rivaled. His Manjekyo has a frightening power known as Kodamatsukami. This technique allows the user to enter a person's mind and manipulate them by giving them false experiences, making it seem as if they were doing things on their own free will, Sarito answered. It is not difficult to see why Danzo would covet that eye. That eye would explain how he could get away with his schemes for so long, spoke Jiraiya. It's truly a frightening power. And the fact that took them off the dead is inexcusable. It makes you wonder whether he had a hand in their attempted coup before young Itachi stepped in, the Sandane wondered. Wait. The Ichiha planned a coup. Kakashi asked. Yes, the Ichiha planned a coup because of the way they were treated. Many were suspicious of them because only the Sharingan could control the Kaiubi. I tried to reason with them before it was too late, but my teammates and Danzo all thought it would be best to simply destroy the clan rather than let Kanoha suffer from civil war. I imagine Danzo hoped the civil war would give him the chance to take the title of Hokage. He could discredit me by saying that I let things progress this far, and if he could quell the coup with his root, he'd be a shoe in for Godin. But Itachi cared far too much for this village to allow such a thing to happen. Instead, he took it upon himself to deal with his own clan, sparing only his own brother. I guess since he couldn't get the Ichihaku to start, he decided to make the most of it by harvesting the eyes of the deceased, Kakashi continued. But that train of thought, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to claim that he also helped Orochimaru into this village. Someone had to help him get the DNA of Shadame sama and Nidame sama Jiraiya added. And it was Orochimaru's plan originally to take you out Sensei, meaning there would be a need for a new Hokage after the invasion ended. Tsuritobi simply shook his head sadly. How could you have fallen so far Danzo? After doing these things, I believe the only option has to be to execute him quickly, since we don't know the extent of his control over Suratobi. It's likely many of his operatives are planning his escape even now, Hashirama stated. Yes, Danzo Shimura shall be executed at dawn today, stated Suratobi. But I wish to be there at his execution. As do I, said Tabarama. The next afternoon, we find our favorite orange-loving hero still asleep in his bed. By his side though was the shy Hayuga Hinata. She was in the hospital because some of her injuries were aggravated during the invasion. She was allowed to leave a few hours ago, but she had come across her crush's hospital room and had decided to stay with him until he woke up in order to express her gratitude for what he had done for Niji. Last night, her older cousin had come to apologize to her for what he had done. Apparently, her father had come clean and told him the true events that had caused his father's death. It was a stunning revelation for Niji, and he realized most of his misgivings about the main family were simply clouded conclusions he made because of the anger he felt for his father's death. Niji said that after his beating at the hands of Naruto, he realized that there was no such thing as fate. People made their own decisions in life as his own father had done. She in turn told him of her dream to become strong enough to claim the leadership of the clan and do away with the caged bird seal and reunite both parts of the family. Needless to say, Niji was shocked about her dream and was absolutely dumbfounded when she asked for his help in making this dream come true. But in the end, he had agreed and the two had never been on better terms with each other. Anada was broken from her train of thought when she saw Sakura enter Naruto's room. The pink-haired girl had been mostly unharmed from the invasion. With Naruto taking care of the Odo army and the snake summons, she and many of the other genin had an easy time evacuating the civilians. Oh hello Hinata. What are you doing here? Sakura asked, noticing Hinata sitting by Naruto's hospital bed. I I, I am here to TT thank NN Naruto-kun for HH helping my cousin Niji, she stuttered. Naruto helped Niji. The pink-haired girl asked incredulously. I wouldn't call beating the crap out of Niji helping him. NNN no. It was because of his defeat that Niji was able to put his past behind him, Hinata answered, trying to get rid of her stutter. It would not be good for her to stutter in front of her crush when he woke up. Aa, are you also here to see him as well? Yes. I haven't been able to see either of my teammates since the preliminaries. Sasuke-kun has a meeting with the Hokage soon. I think he's going to be promoted to Chunin. She screamed that last part. Then NNN Naruto-kun should also be promoted for what he did as well, the Hayuga stated. Yeah. He should. Can you believe how strong he's gotten? He's stronger than Sasuke-kun now. Naruto-kun has always been strong. He just needed the chance to show everyone his strength, she said without the stutter. After all, it was Naruto who had inspired her to strive to become stronger. What? But Naruto's always been the class dope. How could he be so strong? Sakura nearly screamed. Ugh. Can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to sleep here, groaned the now waking Naruto. What do you guys want? He asked, sitting up. Hey. 
The least you can do is be a little polite. I came here to see if you were okay she started. You mean you came to see me only after finding out Sasuke-kun was busy with something else, right? Naruto finished. Sakura blushed a little, proving Naruto's assumptions correct. So, what brings you here, Hinata? I just wanted to ttt thank you for helping Niji deal with his fate problem Naruto-kun, she was trying so hard not to stutter this time. And to make sure you were okay. Well if you want to thank me for beating the crap out of him, then you're welcome. I hope you're feeling better as well, he chuckled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to sleep, oh my. I hope I'm not interrupting something, said a voice by the door. It was the first time the group noticed Tamari of the sand in their presence. As a matter of fact, you are. You're interrupting my sleep. They let you out of interrogation already, Tamari-chan. Smirked the Jinchuriki from his bed. She ignored the blatant use of the familiar honorific, we didn't have very much useful information. Apparently, my father has been dead for several weeks at the hands of Arachimaru, she sneered at the name of her father's killer. We were manipulated into joining this invasion. Wait. Your father was at the Chunin exams yesterday. Sakura said rather loudly. It was Naruto that answered. That was Arachimaru in disguise. He wanted another chance to take out his sensei. Wait. How do you know that? She asked. Iro Senen knew about the invasion for a while. That's why we were so prepared. We're ready to fight off the other sand and sound jonins. Iro Senen would help Jiji with Arachimaru while Sasuke incapacitates Gara, and I take out the Odo army and Arachimaru's snake summons, he answered. Iro Senen. Tamari raised an eyebrow in amusement. He's Arachimaru's former teammate and Jiji's student. But you know him better as Jureya of the Sanin. Naruto shows some respect. Sakura screamed. He's one of the most powerful ninjas in the world, don't call them that. Naruto ignored her command. You know those porno books Kakashi Sensei always reads. Jiraiya wrote them. He gets inspiration for those books by peeping on women in the hot springs. He's also known as the Toad Sage. Therefore, he is Iro Senen. Sakura's face went red with rage at the rather perverse actions of one of Konoha's finest. Anyway, was there something you wanted Tamari-chan? He grinned as Tamari's eyebrow started to twitch. There was a brief moment of uncertainty in her eyes until she stowed them away. No. It can wait until you're out of the hospital, she said walking out of the room. Well, that was fun, but I start training again tomorrow, so I'd appreciate it if you guys can let me get some sleep until then. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night, he said completely disregarding the fact that it was actually the middle of the afternoon. Hello, Sasuke-kun. How are you today? Asked the elder Hokage. I'm doing okay, he said sitting down in the chair in front of the Hokage. I assume there is something you wanted to talk to me about. A saddened look appeared on the Hokage's face, yes. There is something I wish to tell you. I have made many, many mistakes in my life. One of them was keeping secrets from your teammate Naruto. You mean he didn't know about the Kaiubi? I see he's told you of his burden. Yes, until the day of your academy graduation, Naruto had no idea of his burden. All his life, he's been hated and shunned, but has never known why. Perhaps if I had been more truthful with him, it would have lessened the pain. Sasuke grunted in agreement. But what does this have to do with me? I have called you here today because I do not wish to make the same mistake I made with Naruto-kun with you as well, it seemed like the elder Hokage was growing older and older by the second. Sasuke's eyes widened, what secret have you been keeping from me? Yesterday, a trusted member of our council was found to have committed very treasonous acts against our village. Not only did he implant the cells of our Shadeim into himself, he also implanted eleven Sharingan eyes. Those eyes came from the dead bodies of your clansmen after the massacre. What? Where is he? I'll kill him. Sasuke screamed as he got out of her seat. Sasuke, you have to learn that violence and vengeance isn't always the answer, the Hokage sternly said, but he killed and desecrated the bodies of my clan. I bet some of those eyes he took were my own father's. You can't keep giving in to the urge for vengeance. And besides, Danzo was executed a few hours ago. Sasuke sat down after hearing that Danzo was already dead. So is this the big secret that you've been trying to tell me? Yes, but that is only part of it. The secret I'm going to tell you today is the truth behind the Ichiha massacre, the Hokage grimaced. Chapter 8. Yin, the truth behind the massacre. Sasuke was almost afraid to ask. Yes. Danzo has always disagreed with the way the village has been run by all four of our great cages especially me. He's been trying to get my job for several decades. In fact, the only way Arachimaru could have gotten into this village undetected would be if he had help. Danzo knew that my wayward student wouldn't let an opportunity to kill me go to waste. Therefore, if Arachimaru had succeeded with this invasion, Kanoha would be in ruins, and without a Hokage, Danzo would have immediately put his name into contention for the title and have blamed the failure to push back the Odo and Suna forces on the teachings of my senseis and I, the Elder Cage spoke. Under such circumstances, it would have been all too easy to gain the title. 
I get it. He's a power-hungry warmonger. But what does this have to do with the massacre? It turns out this wasn't his first view for power. Are you saying the Achiha massacre was another of his power schemes? The last loyal Achiha nearly screamed. The Hokage decided some background was needed. What do you know about the Kaiubi attack nearly 13 years ago? Sasuke furrowed his eyebrows. He wasn't sure what Naruto's burden had to do with his clan. Not much. The Kaiubi attacked the village, and many died. The Yandame fought the Kaiubi and died sealing it into Naruto. Yes, that is the generalized version of it, Sirotobi nodded. But what isn't known by many is the fact that the Kaiubi was compelled into attacking our village. What could possibly control Kaiubi? Sasuke asked. There are only a few known things that can control the most powerful of all Baijus. Two of them originate from Konoha. The first is the Shadai's Mokuten ability that could suppress its power. The second is the Manjekyo Sharingan. Can Manjekyo control Kaiubi? Yes. It was your ancestor Ichiha Madara who first controlled the Kaiubi and used it to fight the Shadai, Sirotobi answered. Naturally, the Ichiha were thought to have possibly been behind the attack. It was the logical conclusion seeing as there were many powerful Sharingan users in the village and it was not impossible for one of them to be hiding the Manjekyo. After all, no one knew your brother had it before he did his deed. So my clan was blamed for the Kaiubi. Sasuke clenched his fists. Not necessarily. There was never concrete proof that someone from your clan actually did the deed, but Danzo definitely put it in the thoughts of many of our villagers and ninja. As a result, people were wary of your clan, but of course they never took any direct action against your clan, seeing as they had your teammate to take their anger on, he spoke in a saddened voice. So while there was no concrete proof that your clan was behind the Kaiubi, Danzo was sure your clan was somehow behind it. He saw it as a sign that perhaps the Ichiha were not happy with their position in the village and wanted more power. So he influenced many ninja and civilians on the council to enact certain measures to try to keep an eye on your clan. Among them were creating a clan compound that was far away from the village and tighter restrictions on the Ichiha police force to keep an eye on all your ninjas. Your father and your clan elders hated being left out of the loop and felt that the village was trying to suffocate them. And in a way, they were right because Danzo began to whisper in the right ears and pushed the right buttons to suppress your clan. Eventually, this all came to a head a few days before the massacre occurred. Your entire clan had finally had enough of the treatment Danzo, the ninja, and the civilians had brought on them, so they planned a coup d'etat. That's a lie. My family would never rebel against the village. Sasuke yelled. I'm afraid that it is true. In fact, it was likely Danzo's plan from the very beginning. In the background, he had always kept his root Anbu strong, even though I had long ago told him to disband his ninja. Should your clan have rebelled, the village would have been thrown into chaos and civil war. Using the fact that I allowed the civil war to occur, he would have sufficient reason to try and impeach me from my seat, and using his root operatives, he would have been able to put down the coup and easily declare himself the fifth Hokage. But Itachi wouldn't let that happen. He knew that if your clan was allowed to go through with the coup, it would mean the start of the fourth shinobi world war. He knew that if Kanoha the strongest of the five great villages dissolved into the civil war it would be an open invitation for the other four great villages to attack us. He wasn't going to let your clan start another world war for the sake of power. And he wasn't going to let your clan ruin their name in the name of a coup, so he did the only thing that could possibly preserve your clan's reputation without sending the world into chaos and death. He took matters into his own hands. Itachi killed our clan members because he didn't want our clan to cause a world war. Sasuke wasn't sure what he thought. That and he didn't want the clan to forever be known as the clan that tried a coup and ended up destroying the entire shinobi world with it. He also knew that should the rebellion have gone off, Danzo would have easily been able to take over the Hokage title and lead the village into ruin. So in order to preserve his clan's reputation and to save the village, he sacrificed his own freedom and his own humanity to massacre his own clan, Sirotobi finished. By now, Sasuke was in tears. Then why did he leave me alive? Because he loved you more than anything else. No matter what, he couldn't allow himself to kill his own brother. So he resolved to give you everything so you could rebuild the Ichiha clan and save them from their dark past. He told you to hate him so you would have a reason to grow stronger. I believe this would have two purposes. First, it would allow him to atone for his sins against your clan. Only an Ichiha should have the ability to lay down the punishment upon the Ichiha clan killer. And second, it would provide you with a noble legacy to continue the Ichiha name under. By bringing him down, you would easily become one of the most celebrated heroes of Konoha. Itachi sought to bury the Ichiha clan's misdeeds under his supposed betrayal and your heroism. Right after he subjected you to Tsukiyomi, he came to me and begged me to watch over you, to never tell you the truth, and to protect you from Danzo. He knew that by ending the coup before it even began, he had destroyed Danzo's plans and as a result would draw his fury and ire. The only way to get back at Itachi now that he was a fugitive on the run was through you. 
but Itachi was mistaken as Danzo was able to salvage the situation by collecting all the Sharingan eyes from your dead clansmen, including the Manjekyo Sharingan eye of Itachi's best friend Shusui. It was a long time before anyone spoke again. Why did you decide to tell me? Itachi didn't want me to know so why tell me? The last Ichiha finally asked with tears in his eyes. I made the mistake of not telling Naruto his burden until it was too late. Doing this caused him to suffer far more than he needed to. I won't make that mistake again. I tell you this now because I hope to save both you and your brother pain. Your brother most likely wishes to die by your hand to atone for his sins. And I can't let you dream of killing your brother without knowing why he did what he did. You both have suffered far too much at the hands of Danzo for me too in good conscience, let you continue to suffer. Is it true that you stopped an entire army on your own Naruto-kun? A.M. asked. Naruto had just been released from the hospital so naturally, he went to get some ramen in order to rid his taste buds of the taste of the evil evil hospital food. Yup. I'm awesome like that. Naruto grinned, finishing his sixth bowl of the food of the gods. And later today, I start training with Nidane. A.M. had to giggle at that. Her little brother who had been hated throughout the village had finally begun to gain some recognition around town. I knew you had it in you. Indeed. You are something of an enigma, Yuzumaki Naruto. A voice said entering the Raymond stand sitting down next to Naruto. One bowl of Maizo Raymond, please. You know Tamari-chan. You seem to be following me around quite a bit. Are you? Perhaps. Stalking me? Jinchuriki teased picking up his seventh bowl. Don't flatter yourself. I simply have some questions I need you to answer, the Suna princess answered without missing a beat. Neither said anything as they waited for Tamari's order to arrive. Why? She finally asked. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow at her and waited for her to continue. I know what you did during the invasion. And I have a pretty good idea of how you attained such power. My question is why aren't you like my brother? Was it because you weren't hated? Was it because people liked you? Was it because people respected you? Why? She sounded almost desperate to know the answer. As I understood it, I lucked out quite a bit. Your brother's seal was rather faulty. It allowed his biju to influence him making him think that it was your mother. My seal was done by the Yandame Hokage perhaps, the greatest seal master to ever exist, he spoke the last part with pride. He decided not to mention how his seal excluded Kurama's yin chakra at first. So, was it just the nature of the seals used? She asked. No, part of the reason why I didn't lose myself to the hate the villagers put on me was because I found people who truly cared for me, he said. He thought of his sacrifice to save his own life, Jiji, and even Aruka sensei People who cared. Yeah. The one time I almost gave in to my anger and hate, I remembered those who cared for me. Your brother needs to know that he still has you and your brother there for him. Damari's eyes widened at that. I know that you still care for him even if you are afraid of him. You can't give up on him. You need to talk to him and show him that you care. I know you think you've failed him and that's why you are compelled to ask me why I didn't turn out like him. Damari's silence was all Naruto needed to know that he had figured out her entire agenda. Once he wakes up from his nap, be there to explain everything to him, and if that should fail, send him to me. I'll set him straight, he grinned. I'm not going to say thank you especially not after you knocked me out during the invasion. In fact, you owe me a match, Mr. Kamikaze. Divine wind, huh? Naruto smiled. Is that what my nickname is in the bingo books? Apparently, Odo has you down as Kanoha's Kamikaze. They figured only through divine intervention could Odo have failed in that invasion. What about your Suna's bingo book? Well, seeing as we were deceived for a long time, we are probably going to renegotiate a treaty with your village. So, there's no need to put your name in ours. As for the other major villages, they probably won't even glance your way until you run into them. Why's that? Quite frankly, no one expects anything at all from a brand new village like Odo. They'll think it was rather foolish and ambitious of them to think they could topple Kanoha especially if a genin took out the majority of the army. Kiri, Suchi, and Kumo will probably just scoff at the fact that you took out an army. They'll downplay it as Odo being as stupid for trying to invade Kanoha and weak for failing so miserably. Furthermore, you didn't actually fight any of Suna's finest, so you'll get no respect from any of the major villages. Ouch. No love because I didn't take out any good ninja. Oh well, it's not like I need any more attention drawn to me. By the way, I'm a Chunin now. You got promoted. Tamari raised an eyebrow. I don't see a flak jacket. I better have. None of the genin would have stood a chance against me. I should get it the next time I go to Jiji's office. A little arrogant, aren't you? It's not arrogant if it's true, he said finishing his last bowl of ramen. Well, I've got to get back to training. See you, Tamari-chan. Don't call me that. She cried watching her fellow blonde get off his seat and walk away without even glancing back at her. As she watched him walk away, she couldn't help but think about how much the last few days had changed her life. Her village and another had tried to invade another. Her father had been manipulated, killed, and used.
and her younger brother was sleeping for the first time in his life. She also thought about how one blonde knucklehead had, here you go young lady. The bill. The cheerful old Raymond chef snapped her out of her thoughts. Thanks, she said, taking out her money until she noticed something peculiar about the offending piece of paper. Wait. How could one bowl of Raymond cost this much? Oh. You were eating with Naruto-kun. Since he left first, I assumed he left you the bill to pay for, he simply said. He ate 23 bowls. Amari's eyes bugged out at that. How could he have eaten that many bowls? How could she not have noticed him eating that many bowls? And he left the bill for her. Naruto. She screamed. Naruto had to smirk. Kakashi had taught him the art of skipping out on the bill. As he saw the waterfall of training ground 16, he couldn't help but wonder what the Nidame had in store for him. Hopefully, he could learn how to get a better grasp on water manipulation. As he walked over to the waterfall, he noticed that Nidame was missing. In his place was his brother the Shadai. And next to him was an Anbu with brown hair. Um. I thought I was supposed to be training with your brother today. Naruto asked. Yes. Well, it turns out Hiruzen needed some help with the administration of the village. Things haven't been easy since it was found out that Danzo was a traitor. So either my brother or I would go help him, Shadai gave a nervous chuckle. You don't like politics do you? Naruto stated. And you simply left it all to him didn't you? The man who was thought to have been the greatest ninja to ever live simply bowed his head and sighed, my brother was always the no-nonsense type, serious type. Politics and administration was always right up his alley. So who is this guy? Oh, right. I haven't introduced you guys yet. This is Tenzo. He is going to help in your training with the Kaiubi, the Senju founder explained. He's going to help me. How? One of the reasons why Arachimaru ran from this village was because of some of the experiments he did on children. One of those experiments was implanting some of my cells into these kidnapped children, trying to get one or more of them to gain the power of Mokuten. Only one child survived, and this is him Tenzo. But for this mission and his hand in training you, he'll be known as Yamato. It's nice to finally meet you, Yuzumaki-san, the mask Anbu introduced himself by taking his mask off. He offered his hand to Naruto. Accepting the offered hand, it's nice to meet you too. How is this going to work then? Well according to you, the Kaiubi is able to freely give you as much power as you need. So, we are going to let you try to draw on as much power from the Kaiubi as possible. The object of this exercise is to see how much of its chakra you can take on before losing control of yourself. When you lose control, Yamato and I will be there to suppress you, the Shadai stated. And you think this will eventually allow me to completely master Kurama's chakra? Naruto questioned. In theory it should. From Jiraiya's information on the current Jinchuriki, the more tails your Bijuu has the harder it'll be to control. Each tail basically represents a new level of control you'll have to attain. Usually, your Bijuu would fight you for control, but since that is not the case, that should make things slightly easier. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get started, Naruto said getting into the lotus position. Kurama, are you ready? I'm always ready, kid. I, myself, am interested to see how well you can control my power, Kurama stated. There won't be any surprises, right? Maybe. Naruto could practically feel the nine tails grinning. Naruto decided to ignore his partner's vague answer in favor of meditation. After several moments of concentration, a red cloak began to envelop Naruto. Behind him, one menacing tail started to form. That's right Naruto. Keep going. Try to draw on as much of his chakra while staying in control. Nodding, Naruto continued to draw on even more power. He reached down into his subconscious to get to Kurama's. When he brushed against Kurama's own mind, he felt an enormous rush of power and a second tail. Well, that wasn't so hard. That's it Naruto. Keep going, don't be afraid to go as far as you possibly can, the Shadai encouraged. Naruto simply nodded telling his sensei's present that he was going to proceed. But actually making progress was very difficult. He wasn't sure why it was suddenly so much harder to get another tail. The first two tails had been relatively easy. He knew that each tail of control would be progressively more difficult, but that didn't explain why the third tail's difficulty level far exceeded that of the first two. Was there something special about the third tail? There probably was and Kurama was being all snotty and secretive about it. Naruto mentally gave a sigh as he continued to probe Kurama's chakra to gain access to the next level of control. Outside of his mind, both the Shadai and Yamato were beginning to worry. The first two tails had come to Naruto rather quickly which wasn't surprising, since he and the Kaiubi were on pretty decent terms with each other, to say the least but this third tail was taking quite a while, which meant one thing. If Naruto were to attain this third tail of control, it would likely provide a rather large boost in power. So, both of them began to make preparations. Each summoning Mokuten binds around Naruto at the ready. It wasn't until minutes later that Naruto had finally been able to breach Kurama's consciousness and what he felt was indescribable. The rush of power was absolutely intoxicating. 
He had never felt anything like it. It felt as if he could do anything in the world. It was the shod eyes voice that brought him out of his hazy trance. Naruto. Naruto. You're losing control. Focus. Don't let the chakra control you. Control it instead. And he was indeed starting to lose control. As his third tail took shape, his chakra became far more volatile. The ground underneath him began to melt when it came in contact with Kurama's chakra. At this, Naruto reeled in his feeling of power. If getting to the third tail was hard, maintaining its power was damn near impossible. Holding such power back and trying to control it was probably the hardest thing Naruto had ever done. It was taking every last ounce of willpower he had to maintain and control. Eventually, Naruto was able to stabilize the third tail. Once he was able to hold all of it back, he felt incredibly calm and serene. It wasn't the adrenaline rush of being all-powerful, but it felt amazing nonetheless. That feeling of calm was the last thing he felt as he fell into unconsciousness. Hours later, Naruto woke completely exhausted and aching everywhere. It wasn't as bad as after the invasion, but it was still pretty bad. As he looked around, he noticed that the sun had begun to set and that he was leaning against the side of a rather large tree. Yamato and the Shadai probably propped him up on the tree to let him rest. Ah. It seems you've awoken. How are you feeling? Yamato asked. I'm okay for the most part. I'm pretty sore. Do you have any idea what happened when I went into three-tail form? It seems that the three-tail form possesses far greater power than the first two-tail forms. Your chakra was rather tame during those two forms, but your third form was basically uncontrollable. Why, though, we have no idea, Senju answered. Well then, I'd better ask my tenant. You got anything to say about Karama? The last part of it was directed toward his partner in crime. Use my chakra to do what your father copied from my Bijuadama tailed beast bomb, was all he got as a reply. Copied from the Bijuadama? The Rasengan. Why that one? It seemed Karama was enjoying keeping secrets from him, so the only way to get answers would be to follow his instructions no matter how sure he was that it'd likely end up badly. Calling upon Karama's chakra, he prepared one of his father's signature jutsu. He felt rather proud to be able to use such an infamous jutsu. As far as he knew, this still struck fear into the hearts of Iwa Shinobi. Good thing Iwa was a little too arrogant to care that Odo had put him in their bingo book as an air ankh genin. As the shining orb the Rasengan was known for started to form, he noticed something shocking. A normal Rasengan was a bright crystal clear blue. Using Karama's chakra, it came out an angry blood red. When he first began learning the jutsu, he had to use a shadow clone to help him control its amazing destructive power. But over time, his chakra control had gotten far better allowing him to use the shining ball of destruction with only one hand. But in his hand at the current moment wasn't an ordinary ball of destruction, this one was several times more destructive and several times harder to control. Before Naruto could even react, his Kaiubi empowered Rasengan blew up in his face. The resulting explosion sent him flying backward several feet, making quite a dent in a tree he had hit. Hashirama and Yamato had barely been able to use Mokuten. Makijiki would release. Would lock wall to protect themselves from the blast. Kurama. What the fuck was that? Naruto groaned. In his head, he could hear the fearsome Kaiubi laughing beyond comparison. Of course, Kurama would derive pleasure from his pain. After the laughter had died down, Kurama began to explain, do you remember when I said each biju offered its jinchuriki different powers? Yeah. You hinted that you might have had a few more powers besides chakra regeneration. I'm guessing that that weird red Rasengan was another one of them. He guessed. Yes. As the strongest of the nine biju, I have inherited some of my father's most prized powers. I and as a result, you have inherited my father's ability to use yun release and yang release. At the three-tailed state, you unlock the power to use yun release. As you learn to control more of my tails, your control over that power will increase greatly. At six tails, you will unlock yang release. And at nine tails, I can learn yin yang release Naruto finished for him. When he had heard from Kurama that his father, the Rakuto Senen, had created physical bodies for him and his Biju siblings out of thin air using yin yang release, it sounded unbelievable. Naruto couldn't believe it. But the possibility of having the same power as the god of shinobi was making him absolutely giddy. Unfortunately, Kurama's rather boisterous laughter broke him out of his thoughts. As if you could have yin yang release. No. Neither you nor I can use the power of god. I am not the Juubi and you do not possess the Rinnegan. No, at nine tails, I will be able to physically manifest myself through your body. Naruto really didn't like getting his hopes shot down like that. TSK. Whatever. What does Yun release do anyway? Yun release is the spiritual energy that governs imagination. It can be used to create a form out of nothing. You mean I can create stuff out of thin air, once again Naruto was getting pretty giddy. Yes. With Yun release you can create inanimate objects out of nowhere. But Yun release covers a broad range of abilities. 
among them is the illusion creating ability you humans call Jinjutsu and Irio Ninjutsu Medical Ninjutsu. You mean I can learn Jinjutsu and Medical Ninjutsu? That giddy feeling was growing. No, you will probably never be able to use Yun Release for anything outside of creating objects and Jutsu like the Rasengan and your clones. Why not? Naruto whined. He was rather looking forward to learning those branches of Jutsu. It's the same reason why you never could do a simple bunch in Jutsu. You mean I have too much chakra? Naruto asked. No. I mean I have too much chakra. Because my chakra reserves are higher than anything you could possibly imagine, there's no way you could possibly ever have enough chakra control to do Jinjutsu or medical ninjutsu using my chakra. So, there's no way I could possibly learn either of the two. As you gain more control over my tails, you may perhaps be able to start using your own chakra for yun release and not my own. But by then, your chakra reserves would have also increased greatly, and then you would be in this exact situation again too much chakra and not enough control. Ironically, because I and eventually you have so much chakra, creating inanimate objects will actually come very easily to you. Also, I believe Yun release will help increase the raw destructive power of the Rasengan and make your cage bushin vastly more durable. Hmm. That's pretty awesome. I can't wait to try and master this. Creating inanimate objects and increasing the power of his Rasengan and cage bushin wasn't a bad deal at all. I don't suppose you know any Yin chakra control exercises, do you? As if I need such things. No. I was born with this power so there was never any need for me to learn to control it. All I know is that your control over yin release will grow as you gain control over more of my tails. Any other ways to increase your control in the meantime will have to do of your own doing. Satisfied with the knowledge bestowed upon him, Naruto nodded. Alright. Thanks for the help Karama. Whatever, kid. The powers I have gifted you are incredible, you'd better not waste them. After his conversation with Karama, Naruto told the Shadai and Yamato about his newfound ability for yin release. Needless to say, both were shocked. This new development would have to be discussed with Siratobi. But the injuries Naruto sustained from the Yin release Rasengan and the aching he experienced from controlling Kurama's three-tailed state, it looked like Naruto would be spending another night in the hospital much to his chagrin. Fortunately or unfortunately whichever way you look at it his broody teammate came by to drop off his Chunin flak jacket. How the hell can you be back in the hospital after leaving it this morning? Ichiha mocked the jacket throwing his blonde teammate in bed, not caring that he may have been injured. I might have overdone it with my training. I discovered a new ability that's probably going to change my training regime quite a bit. DSK. Only you, dope. For a while, neither said anything. But from Naruto's point of view, he could see that something was troubling his teammate. So he simply waited for his friend to say something. Have you ever felt like your entire life was a lie? Sasuke began. Yes. Twice, in fact. Once when I found out I was the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi and another time about a month ago. Another moment of silence occurred until the last loyal Ichiha spoke again. I found out today that my brother massacred my clan because the Ichiha were planning a coup d'etat. He knew that an Ichiha rebellion would cause a civil war in Konoha and likely entice one of the other four great villages to attack us thus, causing the fourth shinobi world war. So to save the world from much unneeded bloodshed and to save our clan name, he took it upon himself to kill our entire clan. But no matter what happened, he couldn't kill me. Apparently, he loved me far too much to kill me. My brother now wants me to kill him so I can bring justice down upon the Ichiha killer. At this point, Naruto could see that Sasuke was very confused. Sasuke had trusted him with one of his greatest secrets, perhaps it was time to return the favor. My father is the Yandame Hokage, Namakiz Minato, the same man that sealed the Kaiubi inside of me. Sasuke's eyes widened at that. That was not something he was expecting. When he thought about it though, it made sense why Naruto was chosen as the Jinchuriki and not someone else. Kami must really hate us. Perhaps. It was probably true. They both had terrible luck. So what are you going to do now? I don't honestly know. My life had purpose before. It was meant to kill Itachi so I could finally avenge my clan. Now, I don't know what it is that I want to do. Naruto could tell that he truly was lost. Perhaps, that was why Sasuke sought him out for suggestions. You won't know until you face your brother again, Naruto said with finality. Get stronger. Get strong enough so you can finally look in your brother's face as his equal. When you do face him, keep your mind open and listen to what he says, and just do whatever your heart says for you to do. Nothing needed to be said as the two newly minted Chunin looked back on how their lives had changed so much in the last month. They were interrupted by two rather loud feminine squeals. Sasuke-kun. Sakura and Ino both screamed, rushing into the room, nearly breaking the door down. Naruto had to smirk at Sasuke's situation. He could literally see a tick mark appearing on the Ichiha's forehead. The joys of fangirls. Sasuke-kun. I heard you got promoted to Chunin. I knew you could do it. You're totally the strongest Chunin in the world. Ino giggled. 
One month ago, Naruto would have taken exception with that comment. But now, he found himself rather amused by Ino's declaration. It was rather funny to see her delude herself. He chuckled to himself as he simply locked eyes with Sasuke and raised an eyebrow. Seeing Mount Sasuke erupt from irritation and anger was also amusing. Surprisingly, it was Sakura who was the voice of reason and defused the situation. Actually Ino, I think Naruto was the strongest genin at the exams. What? No way. Yeah, Naruto's definitely up there now. I saw how fast and strong he was when he beat Niji. But Sasuke Kun learned Kakashi's most prized technique. Jidori. That totally means Ino rambled. DSK. The dobe also knows the technique, the Achiha grunted. What? You know it too, Naruto. Ino asked incredulously. Finger pointing abounded. How come you didn't use it then? Better yet, how did you learn it as well? The dobe knows it because Kakashi taught it to the both of us. And as for why he didn't use it. That's pretty obvious. He didn't need it, answered Sasuke. That was probably the most words he had ever spoken to Ino so far in his entire life. Also, only one of us in this room is in the bingo books as an air ink thread. This news positively shocked Ino. She couldn't believe it. Naruto the class dope was actually in the bingo books. She looked to Sakura for confirmation. The pin cat gave her a tight nod, Naruto defeated the entire Odo army on his own Ino. In Odo's bingo book, they are calling him Kanoha's Kamikaze or Divine Wind. She then looked at Naruto in hospital gown and all in awe. He even had a cool nickname as well. Naruto chuckled, put his hands behind his head, and leaned back on his bed. The story is that it is only through my divine intervention that the invasion failed. Although, it was rather arrogant for them to believe that their invasion was going to work anyway. Naruto simply gave into an amused smile as she squirmed under his gaze. For a while, no one said anything. Once again, it was Sakura who broke the silence. Naruto. If you don't mind me asking. How did you get so strong? Sakura asked in a timid voice. Naruto wasn't sure if he should answer that question. Just look at her and how she asked that question, it was quite clear that Sakura was feeling very self-conscious about her skills as a ninja. Both her teammates had far surpassed even her wildest imaginations. They had shown great performances at the Chunin exam finals and had done a great service to the village for their part in the invasion. All the while, she hadn't even made it out of the preliminaries and had served no purpose in the defense of Konoha other than helping move straggling civilians. Inadequate indeed. Naruto sighed. This wasn't going to be an easy conversation to have. The encounter with Orochimaru in the Forest of Death really changed my mindset of why I became a ninja. Tell me about Sakura. Why do you want to be a ninja? If it's to impress your precious Asuke-kun, then you should probably quit now. The three of us nearly died in the Forest of Death, Sakura. If that doesn't teach you about the horrors and rigors of being a ninja, then I don't know what will. People die in this profession, Sakura. And if you ever hope to progress your career, you'll be expected to kill people as well. Hey. That's not fair. You can't just trample on Sakura's Ino tried to stand up for her friend. No. Naruto is right. If you don't have a good reason to be a ninja, then there's no way you can withstand the challenges that come with our lifestyle, the Ichiha interrupted. Oh yeah. What are your reasons for being a ninja? She demanded. It was rather surprising that she would yell at her precious Asuke Kun like that, but the two new Chunin suspected it was because her reasons for being a ninja were at least in some part similar to Sakura's. She probably didn't appreciate her reasons for being a ninja to be seen as foolish either. I'm a ninja because of what happened to my family. I strive to get stronger in order to finally find closure with what happened to my family, the Achiha stated. I am a ninja because of the sacrifices made so I could be here today, Naruto thought back to his parents. And I strive to get stronger to make those who care about me proud. One day, I will surpass all the Hokages of this village, he said a little glassy-eyed. You don't want to be Hokage anymore? Sakura questioned. Naruto used to scream to the world that he wanted Hokage, but now. I don't know if I could ever be a Hokage for this village, after everything that's happened to me in my life. We'll see in a few years, he answered. Sakura and Ino both looked shocked at how quickly and how much Naruto had changed. Naruto a month ago was a totally different person from the one sitting in front of them today. Perhaps, it was time they did some soul searching and changing as well. Soon, the nurse came to tell Naruto's guests that visiting hours were over. As each guest left the room they all pondered over the words spoken within that room. Ino and Sakura began to truly question their reasons and drive to be a ninja, while Sasuke thought about what he would say to his brother when they would meet again. Naruto, on the other hand, thought about why he was training so hard. He didn't want their sacrifice in vain, and he wanted to make them proud by surpassing all their expectations. Thinking back to today's development and the discovery of his new yin release power, he knew he probably should change his training regime. Water manipulation training would have to wait. Exploring the possibilities of yin release was a far more intriguing task than Suetin at the moment. 
Naruto thought back to the applications of Yin release from Kurama. If he was going to use Yin release to take the Rasengan to a new level and pay homage to his father, then he damn sure was going to pay homage to his mother as well. And I know exactly how to do it. He grinned. Chapter 9. Power. When Hiruzen and Tabarama were informed of Naruto's new ability they were naturally shocked. Yin release. The ability to materialize inanimate objects using only chakra and our own imagination. On top of that, Naruto found Yin Release did some amazing things to the Rasengan, as well as his shadow clones. He found out that Yin Release shadow clones could no longer be dispelled with a simple hit. It appeared that they now required a debilitating, paralyzing, or fatal blow to be dispelled. But that was nothing compared to what Yin Release did to the Rasengan. If you hit a tree with a normal Rasengan, it would grind into the tree, leaving a hole in the tree's bark similar in size to the Rasengan that it collided with. The Yin Release Rasengan exploded on contact with the tree taking the tree out completely, leaving no traces of bark left. It basically annihilated the tree. Needless to say, Naruto was absolutely giddy with anticipation of the day where he could master the Inten. Rasengan Yin Release. Rasengan. At the moment, Kurama's Yin Chakra was just too chaotic for him to do that particular Rasengan with just one hand. So he had to go back to using a Shadow Clone to create it. All Naruto didn't like the idea of using Shadow Clones to use the Inten. Rasengan it would likely take up too much time on the battlefield the sheer destructive power of the technique was simply too much to ignore. To further his control of Yin Chakra, Naruto had been trying for weeks to create inanimate objects. It was much harder for Naruto to do than he previously thought. He found that smaller and precise objects were the hardest to create. His four-pronged metal star shurikens actually came out with rounded edges. Not the best tools on the battlefield. Contrast to that, he found that larger and less imprecise objects with uniform shape were the easiest to create. He could easily create large round boulders. Because Naruto was channeling so much of Kurama's chakra when practicing Yin Release, Yamato became his major training supervisor for the first few weeks after discovering Yin Release. It was more of a safety precaution than anything. Ashurama it appeared couldn't escape the political aspects of being resurrected and was forced to assist Abarama and Hiruzen in their political maneuvers after Danzo was exposed as a traitor to the leaf. He hoped that he would be able to elevate his control over Yin Chakra enough that he could fulfill his plans to honor his mother. Hirama didn't like what Naruto had planned to honor his mother with good reason. But even he acknowledged that her chakra chains were useful in battle and that when used correctly, deadly. The day Naruto, Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru got their Chunin flak jackets, and the Kanoha 12 were throwing them a party at a local BBQ restaurant. Shikamaru took a nap on the table, while Shino and Sasuke didn't even bother touching their food. Naruto, on the other hand, was very much enjoying the BBQ pork free of charge of course. The remaining genin were pretty reserved, except for Choji who was chowing down the pork, and Kiba was chatting up everyone. So, it was the Inuzuka who started the conversation, yo, Naruto. What the hell happened to you? How'd you go from dead last to the strongest one of us here? I've always had the potential to be great in myself. It just took the forest of death for me to focus my potential, Naruto cryptically said. But potential. You didn't show anyone we were at the academy together. Naruto thought it was perhaps time to tell his friends at least one of his secrets. Tell me. When is my birthday? Oh, oh, oh October 10th. Hinata stuttered. Yes. Was there anything else big that happened on that date? At this, Shikamaru woke up from his nap. I see. You're Jailer of the Kaiubi, aren't you? He asked Naruto. What? I thought the fourth Hokage killed it. Sakura asked, astonished at such a revelation. You can't kill a sentient and living mass of chakra, Naruto simply stated. I'm what's called a Jinchiriki. Jinchiriki. The power of human sacrifice. Shikamaru asked. Naruto simply nodded. Troublesome. I always knew you were different from everyone else, and I'm assuming the Kaiubi's the reason why all the civilians rather ignore and glare at you, right? Ah. So you've noticed that as well haven't you? Those glasses were far too hateful for someone getting pranked. I realized a long time ago that there must have been a better reason for those glares than pranking. But I was simply too lazy to find out the exact reason. Naruto. Is that why you don't want to be Hokage anymore? Sakura asked. You don't want to be the Hokage Kiba asked. You used to scream to everyone that you'd be Hokage. Most of the gen in there looked at Naruto curiously. Hinata was saddened when she found out Naruto had given up on his dream because of the villagers of Konoha. She thought the scorn and indifference of her father and clan elders were hurtful, but it was nothing compared to what Naruto had experienced. Niji's thoughts were along the same lines. It seems Yuzumaki was right about more than just my own hate. My status as a branch member doesn't even begin to compare to his problems. Lee and Tenten were saddened by how they had ignored Naruto's suffering. The treatment our civilian showed you was. Most youthful. The other rookie genin were ashamed of themselves for letting Naruto go through all that pain alone. And now, the village had caused him to give up his dream. 
Choji had even stopped eating. Yeah. I can't really see myself as Hokage anymore. Even if I've gained more respect from the village with my deeds this week, they still don't trust me. And even if the day where I gain their respect and admiration comes to pass, I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive the village enough to lead them. Everyone could understand his decision, if it were them, they didn't know how they would turn out. So, if you don't want to be Hokage anymore. Why are you training so hard? I heard that you're being trained by Jiraiya of the Sanin, Choji asked to resume eating. I want to make all those who care for me proud. I want them to know that their sacrifices for me weren't in vain. One day, I am going to surpass both the Shadai and Yandame Hokages and become the strongest ninja to ever walk the elemental nations, Naruto said with that glassy-eyed, faraway look. Even Sasuke had to raise his eyebrows at that one. Strongest ninja to ever walk the elemental nations, huh? You really think the class can reach that level of power? There was a distinct lack of animosity in his words. There was actually a hint of curiosity. Naruto actually threw his head back against his seat and let out a laugh, no, team. Not if. When. Naruto smirked back at him. What? When. You can't be serious the Shadai and the Yandame are the two strongest ninjas to ever exist. You can't say when I surpass them. Kiba screamed. To the Uchiha, it sounded like Naruto thought he was on his way to surpassing his father. And it sounded like there was definitely something Naruto was hiding from him. There was only one way to find out what he was hiding. Fight me Naruto. This immediately put everyone on edge. Sakura remembered how angry Sasuke used to be when he saw how powerful someone else was. Shikamaru and Shino were very unsure of how far the two Team 7 Chunin would go. These were two changed shinobi. There was no telling what they were capable of. Everyone else was rather excited for the possibility of seeing the two strongest of their generation clash. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow at Sasuke. The look was returned in kind by the Achiha. So, I assume you've picked up a thing or two from our one-eyed sensei, and you want to test them out, don't you? At Sasuke's nod, he continued. And in the process, learn what I've been doing under the Shadai Hokage, right? Wait. What? How come you get to learn from the Shadai Hokage? Kiba screamed. I'm not really learning anything. The Shadai is simply helping me learn to control the Kyubi's power. I don't really gain any special powers from the Kyubi. All I'm really doing is augmenting my current powers. And besides I've only had two days with the guy. Sasuke's probably spent weeks on end training and learning under Kakashi Sensei, Naruto responded. So how far are we going to go? 15 minutes. No maiming. No killing. The blonde nodded. Shikamaru will be the referee. Let's go to training ground 7, he said getting up. There was an unspoken agreement between the two that there would be no playing around. This was a serious match that was to showcase what they had learned or in Naruto's case what he had improved over the last few weeks. Naruto knew that Sasuke had taken his advice and started more advanced chakra control and taken steps to increase his speed, stamina, chakra capacity and endurance. He probably wanted to test his new physical abilities against his shunpo. Shikamaru stood between them as the rest of the Kanoha 12 looked on from the sideline. You have 15 minutes. No maiming. No killing. If I think the match is getting out of hand, I'll stop it. Now, go. Naruto disappeared in a flash. Sasuke immediately turned his Sharingan on. With the Sharingan, Sasuke could see the remnants of Naruto's chakra. While he couldn't see exactly where the blonde would end up or do next, he could at the very least tell in what direction he would be attacking from. With that, he was able to block an incoming kick with his forearm. Although, blocking the kick hurt quite a bit since Naruto definitely hit harder than he did. Immediately, Naruto disappeared again and Sasuke went on the offensive. Seeing Naruto's chakra trail lead away from him and towards a pack of trees, he gathered lightning chakra into his hands. Tidori Senban. 1000 bird Zenban. He said, aiming at where he thought Naruto would return to view. Naruto had apparently noticed Sasuke's counter because when he returned to view, he already had a jutsu ready. Futen. Shinkuha wind release. Vacuum wave. The Futen jutsu easily discarded the lightning charge Senban racing its way toward the Achiha. Using his training to the max, Sasuke was able to dodge the blast of wind. He was now definitely faster than Lee ever was. Hmm. A variation of the Chidori, huh? Not bad. I like it. And you're definitely faster than you were before, team, Naruto commented from on top a tree branch. You haven't seen anything yet, Sasuke grunted. I should hope not, the blonde replied. Five hand seals later, Futen. To top a wind release. Great breakthrough. Sasuke smirked. Let's see if I've got this down, he thought to himself. Tiger. Hare. Boar. Dog. The Achiha slammed his hands onto the ground. Doton. Doryuheki Earth release. Mudwall. A large stone wall rose from the ground in order to block the incoming jutsu. Tatapa heavily scratched the wall, but it stood. That is until Naruto decided to punch it with a large amount of concentrated wind chakra. 
Chunks of earth flew everywhere as Sasuke moved to avoid the debris. Earth release as well, huh? And advanced manipulation at that. Doryuheki is supposed to be high B rank to low A rank, Naruto said impressed. And he really was. It had only been a few weeks, and Sasuke already had enough control over earth manipulation to perform a rather powerful jutsu. Without the training modifier he had with Cage Bushin, Sasuke's rate of growth was indeed pretty impressive. It seemed he really had wanted to finally be able to see eye to eye and face to face against his brother to talk about the massacre. But on the other hand, Sasuke's control over Earth was taxing. Naruto could already see that the Chidori variation and the mud wall had taken quite a bit out of him he was breathing pretty hard and sweating quite a bit. Got anything else you want to try? Naruto asked. Sasuke gave his trademark smirk. As a matter of fact, there is one more thing I want to show you. You said you've improved on some of the techniques and skills you've already got, well let's just say I did the same. Naruto watched as Sasuke performed three hand signs, and Chidori came to life. Seconds later, Sasuke continued to press more chakra into the technique turning it from white to blue. Ah. That explains it. If you have the required nature control to do the Rikiri lightning cutter, then you certainly have enough nature control to create Chidori variations. How many can you do a day? Only once a day so far, the Achiha grunted. This was definitely going to be his last move of the night. Well then, let's see what yours can do, shall we? Naruto moved aside, giving Sasuke a free path in the trees behind him. Sasuke screamed and charged forward. The ground underneath the Rikiri started to tear apart. Aiming for the middle of a tree, Sasuke was able to slice through the bark with ease. There was no resistance as the Rikiri cleaved the tree in two. Without a middle, the tree toppled over with a thud. And with that, Sasuke also keeled over nearly out of chakra. The spectators ran over to help the Achiha up. By the time Naruto made it over to him, Kiba and Choji were already helping him up off the ground. You know, at this rate, you could easily be Jonin level and strength in a few months, Naruto commented. DSK. I still have to catch up to you, Achiha muttered. If I'm right, you've managed to take that technique you showed me to the next level, haven't you? Show me what you've done to it. I want to see how it compares to the Rikiri. Naruto immediately knew he was talking about the Rasengan. Guess it couldn't hurt to show him the new Rasengan. Very well, was all that he said as he walked over toward the stump of the tree Sasuke had used the Rikiri on. Watch closely, he said as he used his right hand to summon a large blue orb of destruction around 8 inches in diameter. Rasengan. He screamed as he slammed it into the stump. The Rasengan easily grinded into the stump. The screech as Chakra met the tree was painful. After several seconds, Naruto releases Jutsu. That should be enough of an example of a regular Rasengan. The other Genin and Chunin beside Sasuke were absolutely bewildered. What the hell was that? They thought. It was Sakura who knew the answer. NNN -N -N Naruto. Isn't the Rasengan? That's Yandame's prize technique. Naruto smirked, yes. The Rasengan and the Horatian are Yandame's prize techniques. Hiro Senen taught me that one. Hiro Senen? Choji asked. Hiraya of the San and also known as the world's largest pervert. He writes the smut books Kakashi Sensei always reads. And he gets inspiration for them by peeping on women in the hot springs. As the female members of the Kanoha 12 cried in indignation, Sasuke interrupted, show me what you've done with it. Alright, let me show you the difference in power. Naruto walked up to a different tree and summoned a cage bushin. With his clone, he was able to channel Karama's chakra into an angry blood red Rasengan. While it was slightly smaller than the Rasengan he had just shown, everyone could tell that this one was far more powerful just by the ominous power it exuded. Naruto rushed to the tree and slammed the yin release Rasengan into it. Immediately, it exploded on contact. The force of the explosion caused a huge aftershock, actually knocking all his teammates off their feet. When the dust cleared, the Kanoha 12 saw Naruto standing next to what was left of the tree. All that was left were a few branches without the leaves on them the explosion must have blown the leaves off. There was no trunk of the tree. Apparently, this new Rasengan had destroyed the tree trunk. Or to put it more accurately, this Rasengan literally disintegrated the tree. DTT there's NNN nothing left. Tenton cried. What the hell was that? Everyone thought. They couldn't actually believe their eyes. That level of destruction was incredible. That is a Rasengan powered by the Kyubi's chakra, Naruto answered the unspoken question. Alright. That's the end of our show folks. Let's get Sasuke to the hospital to be treated for chakra exhaustion. I don't need to go dope. The Achiha growled. Maybe. Maybe not. But I want to put you in the hospital so I can annoy you as much as possible while you're stuck in bed, he grinned. The next day, Sasuke and Naruto went back to their own training. And the rest of the Kanoha 12 called an official meeting. The exhibition match between Sasuke and Naruto had really opened their eyes. The two male members of Team 7 were absolutely leaving the rest of them in the dust, and they couldn't accept that. The ten of them swore to get stronger to catch up to the Achiha and the Yuzumaki.
they weren't going to let them continue to carry the weight of their generation alone. Two weeks later, Naruto had finally managed to summon his mother's chakra chains. But he didn't have much control after the initial summoning and command. For example, if he summoned the chains to attack or bind a trie that would be all the chains could do. The chains would not be able to disengage from trie and attack tree B if he wanted them to. Garama told him that in his mother's prime, she could use her own chakra to manipulate her chains to her every command at will. It would take many more months or years before he could replicate that feat, but for now the actual summoning was an accomplishment on its own. He had also begun his suetan training under the Nidame. Unlike his older brother, Tabarama was rather strict. There were strict checkpoints that Naruto had to learn in his quest to master water nature manipulation. Some of them were simple and some of them were absolutely ridiculous. It took Naruto days to reverse the flow of a river and this was even with a liberal use of cage bushin. Seriously? Trying to change the flow of a river this was nearly impossible for anyone not named Senju Tabarama. When Naruto asked him if reversing the flow of a river was really necessary to learn Suitan, Tabarama answered no. But then, he continued on saying that reversing the flow of a river was the first step to doing Suitan Jutsu with just water molecules in the air or, as he called it perfect water manipulation. And as his student, Tabarama was not going to accept any less than perfection. Naruto was a little bit put out at how ridiculously difficult the Suitan training was at first, but eventually he got the hang of it. And his training bore fruit. He could now do some very powerful Suitan Jutsus in the presence of a water source and some minor ones in areas without a water source. Tabarama said that the final exercise to gain perfect Suitan manipulation was to be able to make a large waterfall flow upwards for several minutes. How in the holy hell was he supposed to learn how to do that? At the same time Naruto was learning Suitan, Tabarama and Naruto both created shadow clones, so Tabarama could Naruto the basics of Jikikin Ninjutsu space-time Ninjutsu. Tabarama explained that Jikikin Ninjutsu basically affected the space-time continuum. The most common example was the use of summoning Jutsus. For example, using hand signs and chakra Naruto could summon toads from practically out of nowhere. Such a summoning could only be described as a type of space manipulation. From how Hiruzen and Jureya had described the Horatian Flying Thunder God, Tabarama theorized that Horatian was actually a rather advanced form of space manipulation and few Injutsu sealing arts on his Horatian Kunai. Nidane could not however describe how he combined the two. Naruto chalked figuring out the Horatian as another of things on his to-do list, along with complete control over his mother's chakra chains, doing the yin release Rasengan one-handed, learning few Injutsu, perhaps learning Kinjutsu, and trying out that sage mode thing Jureya and Hashirama were talking about whatever that last one was. But all those things would have to wait a bit. Hiro Senen had just come back to the village after scouting out what Orochimaru was doing in Odo. The snake Sanin was apparently rather distressed about losing over 80% of his entire ninja force in the invasion of Konoha. As a result, Orochimaru had to replenish his forces with quite a few mercenaries to avoid Odo being a rather easy target for other villages. The Toad Sage also found some information regarding Orochimaru's immortality jutsu as he called it. It was how Orochimaru was able to shed his skin in their last encounter. For the jutsu to work, Orochimaru would need an actual sacrifice which disgusted all of those who heard that particular piece of information. His original plan was obviously to make Sasuke his new body in order to gain the Sharingan. With Sasuke's cursed seal sealed up twice over by Kakashi and Jiraiya, that would be rather unlikely. Information gathered from spies suggests that his next possible body would be a Kagaya. The problem was that this Kagaya had contracted a fatal blood disease. As a result, Orochimaru was searching for someone or something to cure Kagaya of the disease. As far as Hiruzen and Jiraiya were concerned, there was only one person alive that was capable of curing that disease, and that was Senju Tsunade. Speaking of Tsunade, Jiraiya thought it was perhaps time for Sirotobi to step down and someone else to take over. And that someone was Tsunade. Hashirama was actually rather horrified about the idea. When asked why, he said that when Tsunade was younger, he spoiled her rotten and even showed her how to gamble. Saratobi and Jureya weren't sure how to react to that particular revelation. Nonetheless, whether or not Tsunade became the Godame, they all agreed that at the very least, Tsunade should be brought out of her funk and back to the village. And that's where Naruto was at this moment and time on the road with Jureya of the San and on a mission to bring back Tswant. Between Jureya's escapades to do research at Hot Springs and actually searching for Tsunade, Naruto could tell they were going to be away from Konoha for a while. So he decided to work on his Suetan manipulation, chakra chain summoning, and the yin release Rasengan in the meantime. It had been nearly two weeks since Jiraiya and Naruto had been on the road and they were no closer to finding Tsunade. Whether it was because of the Toad Sage's constant trip to brothels and hot springs or whether it was because finding a Sanin wasn't easy, Naruto couldn't tell. And that was where we find Naruto today lying in a hotel room bed with no trace of his godfather. He was broken from his thoughts by a knock on the door. 
he quickly put on a pair of pants and a shirt. Opening the door, he saw two people standing in front of him wearing long dark coats adorned with red clouds. The taller of the two had light blue skin, strange gill-like markings on his face, and a long broad sword on his back wrapped in white cloth. The shorter of the two had black hair and red eyes that displayed to the world his identity Ichiha Itachi. A rather protracted silence occurred between the three shinobi. It was the Ichiha who spoke first. Hello, Naruto K. Sorry. I don't talk to strangers. You know, the whole stranger danger thing. Have a nice day, bye. He smiled slamming the door shut in their face. The two Akatsuki members stared at the door in shock. Uh. Itachi. Did that brat just shut the door on us? Sasuke's older brother blinked once, twice, and a third time before turning his head to his partner. I think he did kiss him. Even the always stoic and expressionless Itachi was shocked at Naruto's audacity. The Kiri missing Nin's face contorted into anger. I'm gonna kill that he screamed, taking Samahada off his back to break down the door. The loud crash reverberated as the door that had originally been there crumbled into shambles. Both Akatsuki members peered inside the room to see a now fully dressed Naruto jumping out the window. The shout of Cage Bush and No Jutsu was heard as several hundred Naruto's poofed into existence. Well then. Looks like we'll have to split up to find the real one, kiss him, suggested the stoic Itachi. About 10 minutes later, Itachi found Naruto sitting on the roof of a local brothel. The blonde gave no indication he was going to leave. In fact, he seemed like he was waiting for him. You do not seem at all concerned that I have found you, Itachi commented. Iro Senen is downstairs. If I need to, I think I'm at the very least fast enough to call for his help before you catch up to me, the blonde responded. Ah. That is probably correct. So why are you here? The Ichiha questioned. Naruto responded with another, have you talked to your brother yet? Yes. I have. Flashback start, Ichiha Itachi was a hard person to get to show surprise. But when he'd captured Hada Kakashi and his Tsukiyomi, he would definitely say he was surprised. Kakashi went on to tell him that he, Sasuke, Jiraiya, and both of the revived Hokages knew the truth about the Ichiha massacre. Apparently, Hiruzen Saratobi thought it was about time that that secret was to be revealed. The son of the White Fang then went on to tell him that Sasuke was training himself into the ground for the day that he could look him in the eye, fight on level with, and talk to him one on one. Itachi couldn't hold back a smile when Kakashi talked about the progress Sasuke had made, and most importantly, when Kakashi talked about how he had made a friend in the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. After being advised to meet up with Sasuke at their clan home, Itachi let Kakashi out of his Tsukiyomi. Kakashi would be unconscious for a few hours, but there would be no mental damage done. Itachi told Kisum to hold off the Jonin in front of him so he could find information on the Kaiubi. Knowing Kisum could not turn down a fight, he knew the swordsman would not resist the order. A few minutes later, Itachi found himself back at his old home. Walking inside the walls, he saw his brother lying on the ground unconscious. It was very evident that he was training hard. Kakashi had not been lying. Itachi simply sat down in the lotus position in front of his sleeping younger brother. Not long after, his younger brother awoke to see his older brother sitting in front of him. Ugh. Kakashi was right. I should slow down on the training a little bit. I'm seeing things, he groaned thinking his older brother was an illusion. No dot I am very real, Itachi said with a slight hint of amusement. Immediately, Sasuke was on his feet in a defensive posture. The two Ichiha brothers stared at each other for a few seconds unmoving until Sasuke's shoulder dropped a little. Did you really kill everyone because we were going to have a coup at it? He asked. So, the Sandane did tell you the truth. Why did he tell you? I asked him to never do so. He said that he had already made the mistake of keeping Naruto's secret from him, causing him more pain and suffering. He said he didn't want to make the same mistake with me. He didn't want to see me actually complete the quest to kill you and then regret it later. He also felt that you had suffered enough and didn't want you to continue to sacrifice yourself for Konoha in this manner. And with Danzo now dead, there was no need to keep me out of the loop. At that, Itachi had gone quiet. Itachi knew how much he had sacrificed for his brother and for Konoha, but none of it bothered him at all. He actually felt as if his brother and Konoha gave him the courage and strength to go through with the sacrifice. It was his best friend Shisui who taught him that the true mark of a shinobi was to protect his village from the shadows as he was doing so now. My friend Naruto told me that I should get stronger. He told me that I should get strong enough to look you in the eye to talk to you as an equal. It is only then that I would be able to decide what to do with my life, Sasuke said, breaking Itachi out of his thoughts. Your friend is very wise. Sasuke nodded, I may not be strong enough to face you one-on-one, -on -one, but I still want to know. I still want to hear your side of the story. Very well. After our parents and the council decided to rebel, my friend Shisui and I needed to do something. We were planning to talk our clan out of it using Shisui's manjiku, but Danzo somehow got his hands on Shisui's eye. Apparently, Danzo wanted us to rebel. 
he was most likely going to use our rebellion to usurp Sandame Sama for the Hokage seat. And if our rebellion were to happen, it would have dire consequences for our clan, our village, and most likely the entire shinobi world. Without a way to stop our clan from destroying the lives of so many innocent people around the world, Shisui entrusted me with his last Manjiku eye and the task of saving both the Ichiha clan name and Kanoha. And I did the only thing possible. I took it upon myself to quell the rebellion before it began, thus becoming the greatest Ichiha traitor to the village after Madara himself. My plan was for you to one day become strong enough to defeat me so that you could revive our clan and become Kanoha's greatest heroes in the process thus letting the story of our rebellion die with me. Neither brother said anything for the longest time. They watched as the wind around them picked up and moved leaves around. Ever since the night of the massacre, my life's ambition was to avenge the deaths of our clansmen. Do you still wish to do so? Itachi asked. I don't know to be honest. About a month ago, Naruto beat me to the ground and then asked me what I planned on doing after I killed you. And I had no answer for him. Now, after learning the truth of why you killed our clan, I don't even know if I want to kill you anymore. I feel like my life has been a lie for so long now. My life used to have purpose, but now it doesn't anymore. Your friend is very wise. He above all would know how it felt to be lied to your entire life. DSK. He used to be the class dope, but our run-in with Arachimaru really changed him. He told me up until that moment, he never really acknowledged the fact that he was the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. He didn't want to be known as a human sacrifice. But once he got over that, he was able to harness the Kaiubi to become stronger. Much stronger. Yes. I have heard about him being the a rank gene in Anoto's bingo books. Quite an accomplishment for someone his age. You two seem close, the older brother observed. We simply found common ground on the fact that Kami hates us and has cursed our lives, the younger brother replied curtly. Itachi gave a slight smile at that for a split second before his face turned serious and stoic again. You should know that the organization I am currently a part of is after Naruto and the other Jinchuriki. What? Why? Sasuke screamed getting up. I do not know the reason, but it can't be a good one. The Akatsuki as we are called are composed of highly skilled s rank missing nin like myself. Arachimaru used to be part of this organization as well. And its leader claims to be our ancestor Ichiha Madara. Shouldn't he be dead? Sasuke questioned. Yes, that is why I believe that he is lying about being Madara. But that does make him any less threatening. This Madara Artobi as his alias is these days was the reason behind the Kaiubi attack all those years ago. The Sandame told me that some shinobi thought that an Ichiha with a Manjekyo was behind the attack. It seems like they were right. Yes. Toby's Manjekyo provides him with incredible Jikikin ninjutsu abilities, as well as the ability to control the Kaiubi. You don't sound like you like what he's planning. I do not. After I killed our clansmen, he was the first one to offer me a place in the Akatsuki. For that sake of the village, I couldn't let the chance to spy on such an organization go to waste, so I took it. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. I was planning on gathering as much information about the Akatsuki, its members, and its purpose, while I bided my time for you to become strong enough to kill me. What are you going to do, yourself Sasuke? Naruto's going to need all the information you can provide us if your organization is coming after him. As long as you keep providing that information, I really can't find a reason to kill you. Until then, I'm going to get stronger. Strong enough to beat not only you, but also this Toby. And I guess I'll have to learn some politics as well. Sandame told me that once I become a jonin, I'll be able to take up the Ichiha seat on the shinobi council. I don't really want to deal with that stuff, but I guess I don't have a choice in the matter. Itachi smiled. His brother was going down the right path. But there was one thing that Sasuke needed to see. Sasuke. I think you deserve to see our parents' final moments, Itachi said, unleashing Tsukiyomi for the second time today. Seconds later, Itachi walked out of the Ichiha compound. He had shown his younger brother the deaths of their parents. The scene brought back haunting memories for both of them as tears were shed inside the world of Tsukiyomi. The pain and grief of that moment awoke the Manjekyo Sharingan for Sasuke. His Manjekyo consisted of three intersecting ellipses that formed a six-sided star. But the Manjekyo awoken, Itachi pokes Sasuke on the forehead as he did many times in the past and tells him that he would continue to do everything in his power to protect him and Kanoha and end the Jinjutsu. Waiting for him outside his compound was the Sandame Hokage the man whom he had the utmost respect for. Itachi got down on one knee and bowed to the professor. Sandame sama I cannot thank you enough for how much you have helped me and my brother. No Itachi. It is I who should be thanking you. You have sacrificed far too much to protect our village. You do not need to continue to do so. I cannot keep asking you to continue to sacrifice. No. I am simply doing what must be done. I will continue to spy on the Akatsuki and continue to pass on information to Jureya-sama. 
For the sake of this village and the peace of the elemental planes, I must continue, Itachi simply stated. I see. The elder Hokage said. Very well. I know that when you have decided to do something, I can't change your mind about it. But I will say that with Danzo dead, it will be very easy for you to return to this village, should you ever need to return. You are much more valuable to the village, the world, and most importantly your brother, Itachi. Always remember that. Of course. Thank you, again Sandame sama Tell my brother once he wakes that his new eyes give him great power, but his eyesight will deteriorate the more he uses them. When the time comes, I will return to the village so we may exchange eyes to cure ourselves of the blindness. Siratobi nodded. I will do so. You should probably get back to your partner. He is making quite a ruckus within the village. Bound one last time to the Hokage, Itachi disappeared in a murder of crows. Flash back end, so, I take it the talk turned out okay? Naruto asked. Yes. My brother has gone down the right path. He has freed himself from the hatred that has cursed our clan for so long thanks to you, Itachi replied. I didn't do anything. I simply beat the shit out of him and told him he was an idiot for being an Avenger like he was, Naruto grinned. Nonetheless, you have helped him and for that I am eternally grateful. I can tell that you are a strong Naruto-kun. Very strong. I have no doubt that one day you will go on to surpass your father. So before I go, I have a gift for you, he said creating a murder of crows. Naruto's eyes widened. Before he could react and the crow rammed its way down his mouth, nearly choking him. What the fuck? He coughed. What kind of thanks was that? He continued to cough. Itachi smiled. That particular crow contains the manjekyo eye of my best friend Shisui. Shisui dreamed of peace for Konoha and most of all peace for all of the elemental planes. You are the only one worthy of carrying his eye. You are the only one worthy of carrying on his will. You are the only one worthy of carrying on his legacy, he said disappearing in another murder of crows. Chapter 10. Sanadi. Naruto was rather angry at Jureya after his encounter with Itachi and Kisum. The stupid great toad sage had abandoned him to spend time at a whorehouse. Seriously. What the hell? What if he wasn't able to run away from Kisum and Itachi? Or what if someone who didn't have an alternate agenda was sent to capture him from the Akatsuki instead of Itachi? He'd be screwed right now. For those reasons, Naruto stalked into the brothel, right up to his sensei who was grinning like the pervert he was, and kicked him in the balls. Again. He was also probably mad at Itachi for force-feeding a crow down his throat, but he couldn't really find the elder Ichiha brother at the moment, so Jureya had to do it. A gifted man Jekyo Sharingan was cool and awesome, but was stuffing it down his throat really necessary? What the hell happened to that crow anyway? After he swallowed it, he couldn't feel the lump of mass enter his stomach because he was still relatively hungry, having not eaten breakfast due to being woken up by the pair in black cloaks. Furthermore, how was he supposed to gain access to you said Manjekyo? These were all questions that were pondered as Naruto left the brothel in search of food after being satisfied with his handiwork and pain he had inflicted upon his godfather. About 15 minutes later, his godfather walked limped into a local noodle house where he bought and was currently eating some ramen. Oh right brat. What was that for? I was having the time of my life. Jureya groaned. What else? You left me to go to a whorehouse. And then I ran into two members of the Akatsuki. Naruto all but screamed. Immediately the goofy and annoyed face on the sanin turned serious. Tell me everything that happened. It was about 10 minutes and 5 Raymond bowls later that Naruto had finished his story. Jureya was trying to comprehend all this information. Hmm. I didn't expect this. But at least, we have a spy on the inside now. And what was this about planting a Manjekyo Sharingan inside you? Yeah. Apparently, he stuffed some guy named Ichiha Shisui's Manjekyo inside me. Something about how I was the only one he could entrust it to, Naruto said in between slurps of Raymond. This got Jureya's attention. Are you sure he said Ichiha Shisui's Manjikyu? Yeah. Why? Was this Shisui guy really famous? I don't remember hearing much about him from anywhere. Ichiha Shisui was the second best Ichiha prodigy of the last few generations right behind Itachi his best friend. Not many know this, but Shisui's Manjekyo was perhaps the most prized Manjekyo to ever exist. This particular Manjekyo possessed an incredible Jinjutsu known as Kodamatsukami Distinguished Heavenly Gods. This Jinjutsu actually alters the memories of the victim and compels them to think that the actions they are performing under the Jinjutsu are their own. Naruto's eyes widened at this. And now I have his Manjekyo lying in wait somewhere inside my body. The jerk didn't even have the common courtesy to tell me how to use it. He just forced a raven down my throat and disappeared. So you don't know how to use it, huh? That sucks, Jiraiya mumbled. You could use any help you can get. Naruto nodded in agreement before bringing up the other point of inquiry. And what the hell were we doing at a whorehouse anyway? Ha. Ah, you wouldn't understand. The pleasures of the female form elude you my young apprentice. Shut up you stupid pervert. I don't want to hear this from you. 
Do you not understand what could have happened if I hadn't been able to run away from the Akatsuki? Or what would have happened had it not been Itachi who was my hunter? DCH. Relax. You got out of it all right. Besides, that whorehouse as you call it, also happens to be part of my spy network. That brothel is part of your spy network. Naruto asked incredulously. Hiraya puffed out his chest, as a matter of fact, never mind. I don't want to know, Naruto shook his head in disgust. Did this trip to your spy network produce any leads? Hiraya turned serious. Yes. It seems we were correct. Arachimaru is searching for Tsunade as well. My sources say that he is headed to Tenzaku town. That's also the last place Tsunade was spotted. We had better start there. A day's travel later, Jiraiya and Naruto found themselves in the rather shady town of Tenzaku a rural paradise for gamblers and drunks. We should find a place to eat and then get settled in before searching for Tsunade, Jiraiya stated. Naruto agreed with the logic. As luck would have it, the bar they decided to eat in contained two people of interest sitting in a booth in the back of the bar. Along with a pig. The first was a woman of average height with shoulder-length black hair with black eyes, holding a squealing pig to her body. If Jiraiya's information was right, this was Shizune. The second woman was fairly tall. She had straight blonde hair tied into two short bangs, framing both sides of her face. Her most distinguishable feature was her rather large bust that seemed to scream for people to stare. And she didn't look a day over 25. The confused Naruto stared at his godfather with questioning eyes. Weren't Sanadi and he supposed to be the same age? He thought. His godfather ignored the unspoken question and instead let out a loud laugh, ha 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 ha. Tsuheim. By now, he had drawn the attention of everyone in the bar. Tsuheim. It's been too long. The toad sage was absolutely giddy to see his teammate again. The senju did not share his excitement. Jiraiya. What do you want? This can't be good. I've had enough reunions for one day. So, you've seen our wayward teammate, have you? What did he want? Jiraiya scooted into the seat next to Shizu and pouring a cup of sake for himself. I don't see how that's any of your business. Now, what do you want? It can't be a coincidence that I see both of you in one day. So, spill, she demanded. Always right to the point, huh? Well, our sensei is getting up there in years, and he needs someone to replace him. It's been decided that you would be best for the Hokage position, Jiraiya stated. By this time Naruto had made his way over to their booth. Absolutely not. Who the hell would want that job? Only idiots take up that job. Protecting the village. Everyone who takes it dies a premature and futile death. The last part caught Naruto's attention. What did you just say? He growled. Who's the squirt anyway, Jiraiya? Tsunade completely ignored him. This is Yuzumaki Naruto. He's my newest apprentice, Jiraiya grinned. He's going to be my greatest apprentice yet. Ha. That's what you said about your last one. And look what happened to him. Took the Hokage seat and died by the time he was 25. Pathetic. Tsunade said completely unaware of Naruto's reaction. She simply raised her jug of sake to pour into her cup only to find her cup smashed by a fist. What was that for you brat? And there was that famous temper Tsunade was known for. I don't care what you think of the village. And I couldn't care less what you think about the Hokage seat. But I will not stand idly by and let you mock my father's sacrifice. Oh, and what are you going to do about it? She mocked. We're taking this outside, Naruto said walking towards the door. DSK. All right. I guess it's time someone beat some respect into you, Tsunade followed him out. Shizune, who had been quiet for the entire time, spoke up. Jiraiya-sama, aren't you going to stop this? Your apprentice is going to get seriously hurt. She asked, pleading for help. Jiraiya shook his head. Let's see where this goes, he said getting up. You are way out of your league, kid. You have no idea who you are fighting, Tsunade stated. I know exactly what I'm doing, you old hag. The tick mark appeared on the Senju princess's head. She looked about ready to burst until she took a few deep breaths. Calming down, she simply raised one finger. One finger. That's all I'll need to beat some respect into you, Tsunade stated. And if I win, I get all your money. Whatever. Your loss, Naruto didn't particularly care for her overconfidence. He was going to show her that underestimating him would bring dire consequences. And with that, he used Shunpo Flash Step to get behind the female Sanin. Caught off guard, she was barely able to stop a kick aimed at her right flank with her forearm. She then brought forth the one finger she had pointed out to him in an attempt to flick him as if he were an annoying bug. With that one finger, she was able to send him flying several feet backwards. It seemed like Naruto wasn't ready to fight a Sanin. Nonetheless, Sanadi was impressed with his skills. You're a pretty fast kid. What are you, Jonin? No. I'm a recently promoted Chunin, Naruto said from his place on the ground. Hmm. You are pretty strong for someone your age, but your arrogance is going to kill you one day. You aren't ready to fight someone on my level, so give up. 
I know I'm not ready to fight someone like you or the pervy sage, but I'm not going to let you tarnish the names of the Hokages. Why? You want the title yourself? Tsunade mocked. To her surprise, Naruto shook his head, no. I don't want the title. I just respect the people who have held it. You of all people should understand. Your grandfather and granduncle brought peace to the land of fire by building Konoha. Then there's your own sensei. He trained you. Taught you. He held Konoha strong through two shinobi world wars. Naruto screamed before calming down and talked about the last of the four great Hokages. And then there's my own father. He loved my mother. He loved Konoha. And he loved me. He died protecting all the things in the world he loved. I won't stand here and let you call his sacrifice foolish. Naruto snarled that last part. You know nothing of what I have dealt with, boy. Tsunade retorted. I have lost everything I have ever cared about for that village. I am the last of my clan. I lost my brother. I lost my lover. There's nothing left for me there. There's nothing left for you there, so you decide it's okay to drink and gamble your life and sorrows away. Tsunade isn't that way, Tsunade. Instead of scoffing at their accomplishments and drowning your sorrows, you should be doing something to honor your family and loved ones. I know more about sacrifices made for the good of Konoha than anyone else. After all, my name literally means the power of human sacrifice, Naruto stated. Tsunade's eyes widened, you mean you're, yes, I am, Naruto cut her off. You know I have more reason than anyone to hate Konoha for being shunned my entire life, but what would that accomplish? Absolutely nothing. Instead, I choose to rise above the hate and the ignorance. I choose to continue living with the hopes of my parents alive within me. And I choose to strengthen myself so that one day I can protect those precious to me as my parents did in their final moments. For several moments, no one spoke. It wasn't every day someone spoke so passionately about their goals in life. Hiraya. We should leave. She's a lost cause. If she's going to continue to dwell on her past, then let's leave her to it. I'm going back to the hotel room, Naruto declared as he eased himself out of his fighting stance and flashed away towards his hotel room. It was two hours later that Jureya found Sanadi alone in the same bar booth he had found her earlier. Her eyes were red with unshed tears. It seemed Naruto's words struck home. I hope you don't mind the company Tsuhaim, he said bringing over a jug of sake. We got a lot to talk about. Where do you want to start? Who is the kid? There aren't a lot of people with the Yuzumaki name anymore. Tsunade trailed off. Well, as he so eloquently put it, his father's the fourth, Jureya stated matter-of-factly. Tsunade narrowed her eyes. You said his family name was Yuzumaki though. From his mother, Yuzumaki Kashina. A faint smile appeared on the Senju princess's face. I remember her. She used to be such a tomboy. She had a terrible temper, beating up all the boys who teased her. Her son is different. He's got the best of both his mother and father. For the most part, he's calm and calculating like his father, but once in a while he's got a temper to be feared like his mother. He even inherited many of their skills. He seems strong. But that's not always enough in the shinobi world, she said longingly. No. Naruto's different. He's going to change the world. I can feel it. He's the child of the prophecy, the toad sage said without a doubt in his mind. Tsunade raised an eyebrow, what makes you so sure this apprentice won't go the way of his father? I don't know. Call it a gut feeling, but the kid has limitless potential. Three elemental affinities, unlimited chakra, and the drive to get stronger. What the hell? That just sounds ridiculous. I know being a Jinchuriki gives him access to enormous amounts of chakra, but three elemental affinities, that's one in a million. Billion even. Hiraya chuckled, yeah. Well, he's got them. Wind and lightning from his father and water from his mother. But that still doesn't make sense. Sure elemental affinities are generally passed down from parents to children, but there should be no way he inherited all three of them. One or two of the affinities should have overpowered the others and won out. What do you mean? Jureya asked. Elemental affinities are genetically passed on. That's why you see certain clans or even villages are more inclined to a certain affinity. When parents of different elemental affinities reproduce, one of the elemental affinities will become the dominant trait and the others will become recessive traits and not actually show up physically. The only exceptions are elemental bloodline limits like ice release, lava release, or wood release. To have three elemental affinities without a bloodline is unheard of. That does make sense. Naruto's affinity for wind is much stronger than either his affinity for lightning or water. Perhaps, this all happened because he does have a bloodline of sorts. You think that the Kaiubi had something to do with it? Tsunade questioned. Hiraya looked around to make sure no one was listening in on their conversation. This is actually an S-class secret, but when Naruto first came in direct contact with the Kaiubi, the Kaiubi started to pump a lot more of its chakra into Naruto's system melding, with Naruto's own chakra in the process. One of the side effects of this is that Naruto has awakened the ability to use Yin release. Yin release that's preposterous. Tsunade screamed. Yes. 
And when he gains sufficient control of the Kyubi's chakra as well as his own, he'll be able to use Yang release as well. Sanadi looked positively shocked. It wasn't hard to figure out why. She took pride in her medical knowledge and for someone to come along and shatter her previous notions. After a few moments, she collected herself. You're not going to tell me he can use yin yang release as well, are you? She joked. No. The Kaiubi said that he'd need the Rinnegan to use yin yang release, Jiraiya started with a pained look on his face. That particular Dejutsu always brought back unsavory memories for him. Another student he had lost. It's very likely that such an infusion of Biju Chakra could have provided the necessary stimuli to make those recessive elemental affinities show up physically. Who knows? He might even develop an elemental bloodline limit down the line, Sanadi mused. Maybe he can actually surpass your grandfather one day Tsuhaim, Jiraiya grinned. The SH. Just because he has all these things going for him doesn't mean he'll go that far. Hashirama Ajayasan was the strongest shinobi to ever exist. Just because he has a few advantages doesn't mean he'll be anywhere as strong as my grandfather, the Senju scoffed. Jiraiya turned serious at this, there's something I need to talk to you about Tsuhaim. We know what Orochimaru wants from you. And from what he did recently in Konoha, I think I know what he offered you. What did he do to the village? I don't know if you know this, but the wayward teammate is the leader of a new shinobi village Odo. He was also able to manipulate Suna into launching a dual invasion onto the village. Thanks to my student and timely information, we were able to escape the invasion with very little losses. But there were consequences. What happened? Being the snake he is, Orochimaru could pass up the chance to take out Sensei for good. To achieve that goal, he used your granduncle's jutsu the Ido Tensei to try and revive both your granduncle and grandfather to finish the job. What? That bastard. Tsunade screamed, jumping out of her seat. Relax. I took care of it. I looked into your granduncle's jutsu. For the user to gain full control of the revived corpses, he needs a special sealing tag to tie the bodies to the user. I was able to get to the sacrifices without the snake realizing too late. As a result, Orochimaru ended up reviving your family with them out of his control, Jiraiya smirked very happy to have gotten one over his former teammate. I see, the fact that some of her family was alive again brought many long dormant feelings in Tsunade up to the surface. I know you've lost a lot of Tsunade. But that doesn't mean you can keep running from your past forever. That doesn't mean that you can keep thinking the worst of everyone you meet. And that doesn't mean you can keep drinking and gambling away all the pain. Jiraiya gave a heartfelt chuckle. Would you look at me? I'm starting to sound like that brat. But the fact of the matter is that you need to find closure, and it starts with what Orochimaru offered you to heal his next vessel. Naruto was really really starting to regret coming on this retrieval mission. First he gets visited by Ichiha Itachi and Hashigaki Kisum of the Akatsuki at his hotel room. And then this morning, he gets woken up by Tsunade's assistant, Shizun, carrying a totally smashed Jiraiya. For a spymaster, he really did let himself go sometimes. Naruto also noticed there was a rather large trail of dried blood coming from said Toad Sage's nose. Whether it was because someone decided to break his nose or because he knocked himself out with another perverted fantasy, he didn't want to know probably both knew the man. So. You don't look so well, Naruto remarked to his godfather. Shut up you brat. Can't you see I'm not in the mood for your smart talk at the moment. Sanon groaned as he found it hard to even speak without having to deal with his bad hangover. What happened? And where's Tsunade? And here Naruto was 20 minutes later standing in front of all three of the Sanon. Orochimaru was standing next to Kabuto from the Chunin exams and an older teenager with pale skin and two dots on his forehead the Kagaya, who was going to the snake Sanon's next body. Next to Naruto was the hungover and drug Jiraiya. He was still feeling the effects of the alcohol and whatever drug Tsunade had slipped him. But he was feeling a little bit better since Shizun had given him an antidote that was slowly doing its work. And speaking of Shizun, she was kneeling next to her master who seemed to be going into shock. Apparently, after drugging and indisposing Jiraiya, Tsunade attempted to finish business with her wayward teammate alone by knocking out her student as well. That plan obviously backfired seeing as she was on the ground going into a panic attack because there was some blood on her hands. It appeared that the world's greatest medic had a really bad case of hemophobia. Well. 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 The whole team is back together again after all this time. How delightful, Orochimaru mocked. And you brought a guest. He gestured wildly to me. You know Naruto-kun. I am very interested in how you were able to become so strong in such a short time. I mean you were nothing but a weak genin without a shred of talent, and now you're the hero of the village. He drawled. The seal I placed on you should have weakened you greatly, but instead the opposite happened, and I have yet to understand why. I think I will enjoy experimenting on you. Naruto shivered. If this pedophile was going to try and get him angry then two could play that game. Sorry, dude. I'd rather not become one of your experiments. You have an unnatural interest in younger boys and their bodies. I mean seriously. 
You gave my 12-year-old teammate a hickey. A fucking hickey. I mean I know that you do some pretty terrible things in your life. You experimented on people. You abandoned your village. And you tried to destroy your village. But going after little boys. That's a totally new low. Naruto cried. The young blonde was rather happy to see the snake Sanin's face turn sour. It looked like he was about to explode from anger for a second. But being a ninja with decades of experience, Orochimaru was able to calm himself quickly after, hmm. I see that you are not the same hyperactive knucklehead I fought in the forest of death. At first, I wanted to capture you and experiment on you to find out why my seal didn't work. But now I see that you are merely a nuisance that needs to be eliminated. Naruto didn't take kindly to being called a nuisance and was going to respond before Jiraiya decided to step in by placing a hand on his shoulder. Relax, kid. My teammate has always been known for his arrogance, cockiness, and downright dismissal of others. Just let it go, he'll get what's coming to him. I'll deal with him while you deal with his butt buddies, okay? Jiraiya jokes. It always felt good to get a small laugh at the expense of his former teammate. Even Naruto had to grin at that last line. Alright, I've been itching to get into a fight anyway. I might as well take it out on them. With that, Jiraiya and Orochimaru moved to take their fight elsewhere, leaving the excited Naruto, the worried Shizun, the still catatonic Sanadi, the calm Kagaya, and the traitorous Kabuto. Shizun, I want you to keep Kagaya busy so I can protect the old lady. I'll handle the four eyes. This snapped Sanadi out of her stupor, you can't possibly mean that. The kid in the glasses is probably an elite jonin on Kakashi's level. Kabuto decided now was the best time to speak. You know you should listen to her Naruto-kun. I know all about your shunpo technique that allows you to move at incredible speeds and your powerful wind manipulation. But that won't be enough against the two of us. So, that's the extent of knowledge they have on me. I think I can win this if I bring out the chains Naruto thought to himself. Shizun looked at Naruto with worry. I'll be fine. Just keep the Kagaya busy and I'll deal with the traitor. With that, Shizun and Kamimuro exited stage left. Stop trying to be a hero. If you stay here, you're just going to get yourself killed. Tsunade yelled. Naruto stayed calm though. Without even looking at the female Sanin, he spoke. You know, you and I are actually very similar. The village we both are from has caused us a great deal of pain taking our loved ones away from us. But do you know what's the difference between the two of us? You decided to let the dreams of your loved ones die with them. But I, on the other hand, have kept the dreams of my parents alive and I will fulfill them, the blonde said with utter conviction. Tsunade's eyes widened at her fellow blonde's words. The Budo mockingly clapped his hands, what a touching speech. You almost made me shed a tear. The medical ninja wiped away a fake tear for dramatic effect. Tell me, Naruto-kun. Who were your parents? You seemed to hold them up to great esteem, but last time I checked, you were a clanless orphan. They couldn't have been very good ninjas seeing as they died fighting the creature now sealed inside you. You shouldn't bring up someone's parents, Kabuto. It could be. Hazardous to your health, Naruto threatened. And with that, Naruto was gone in a flash. Immediately, Kabuto jumped out of the way of one of Naruto's swift kicks and readied his chakra scalpels. Careful to not let those chakra scalpels hit his naked skin, Naruto resolved to only try to hit Kabuto without getting in range of suffering damage from those scalpels. Kabuto saw what Naruto was doing and changed his focus and aimed for Naruto's unprotected sternum. Before he could connect, Naruto flushed away. Hmm. I'm very impressed by Naruto-kun. You are as fast as I say you are Kamikaze. So much so that I can even land a proper hit on you. But your problem is that you can't land a good hit on me as long as I have good form and stay on the defensive with my chakra scalpels. Otherwise, you'd risk suffering major damage yourself. As such, it seems we are at an impasse. Unfortunately, Kabuto, you are wrong about that. Oh. And how exactly am I wrong in my assessment? Do you remember what I said about how dangerous it was to mock someone's parents? Naruto asked. Well, this is why. Naruto screamed. Inton. Rocket Chan Yin release. Binding chains, slamming his hands on the earth below him, Naruto was able to catch Kabuto completely off guard as multiple large black spike chains erupted from the ground underneath him, each aiming for a different appendage. But he was unable to escape all of them as one last chain was able to wrap around his right ankle. With a heavy thud, the chain dragged Kabuto back into the dirt. Tell me Kabuto. Do you know what the punishment is for traitors who turn on their village? Naruto asked as he summoned a shadow clone next to him. Instead of answering, Kabuto tried to use his scalpels to destroy the chains, but they wouldn't break so easily. Something was definitely different about these chains. At Kabuto's refusal to answer him, Naruto continued speaking, no answer. Pity. The punishment for treason is death. You made the wrong decision when you decided to aid the snake pedophile's plans to hurt the village and my friends. Naruto held one hand out to his shadow clone. If Orochimaru wanted to try and experiment on him, then he was going to experiment his intent. Rasengan in release. 
Rasengan on the snake second in command. It was time to see what this jutsu could do to the human body. For the first time in his life, Kabuto was afraid. Very afraid. The amount of dense chakra that was forming around the young blonde's hand was not good news. The blood-red color of the sphere didn't make him feel any better. There was no way he would be able to get away from the chain in time. Kabuto wasn't the only one to notice jutsu. It can't be. Sanadi said in awe. It was astounding for someone his age to be able to perfect the jutsu. Maybe his dream to be the strongest shinobi ever wasn't all that far-fetched. So, he's going to test Rasengan on the traitor, huh? Jiraiya thought. He, like Naruto, was interested to see the power of the yin release Rasengan. Orochimaru, however, wasn't willing to let his second-in-command be a test dummy for that jutsu. To think that the brat had managed to master a jutsu he couldn't even master. That simple fact alone spoke to the potential pain in the ass the young blonde would be to his plans should he survive this day. Making up his mind, he regurgitated a long black katana blade first to Kusanagi no Tsurugi, the grass long sword and launched himself at the young blonde before the boy could complete the jutsu. Naruto's senses picked up on the approaching danger in the form of the snake Sanin and a katana sticking out of his mouth. And I thought this guy couldn't get any weirder. If he thinks that's going to intimidate me, then he's got another thing coming. Naruto thought to himself as he prepared a counterattack. Naruto. Look out. Sanadi screamed. Rungaki. Jiraiya yelled. Both Sanin felt their hearts skip a beat when they saw Naruto complete his Rasengan and start running towards Orochimaru. The entire battlefield seemed to slow as the spectators watched as Naruto and Orochimaru drew closer and closer. Just as the two were about to collide, Naruto aimed his Rasengan down towards Orochimaru's stomach. In doing so, Orochimaru was able to stab the Kusanagi right through Naruto's neck. Orochimaru expected Naruto's jutsu to immediately dissipate. From what Orochimaru understood about the Rasengan, it required the utmost chakra control at all times. Surely, a sword through one's neck would cause a momentary drop in control, should it not. Unfortunately for him, Naruto did not lose control and slammed the Inten. Rasengan right into his stomach. With his job done, Naruto dispelled to reveal that he was in fact an Inten. Cage Bush and Yin release. Shadow clone. The resulting explosion from the Inten. Rasengan was thunderous. Blood spewed everywhere. The grass longsword flew through the air towards Naruto. And the mangled mess of body mass that was left of what used to be called Orochimaru was sent in the opposite direction. After the smoke cleared, the snake Sanin looked black and charred. He was missing both legs, half of his right arm, and several internal organs, if the amount of blood and the gaping hole in the sternum was any sign. Everyone watched in shock as Orochimaru wheezed, struggled to breathe, and coughed up copious amounts of blood. It was Orochimaru's loyal Kagaya that sprang into action first. Orochimaru-sama. As the pale white teenager ran to his master, a hand shot out of Orochimaru's mouth. And then another. And then a head poked out. With Kamimuro's help, Orochimaru was able to free himself from his skin. The sh. Figures, the stupid snake wouldn't die, Naruto remarked. Upon hearing the clanking of chains behind him, Naruto realized that Kabuto had finally managed to cut himself free from his chakra chain. Immediately, the traitor ran to his master to assess the damage the Rasengan had done. You little punk. Orochimaru continued to cough blood. Naruto gave a smirk as he walked over towards the fallen blade of Kusanagi and picked it up. You know, I always wanted to learn some kinjutsu eventually. It's rather generous of you to give me a good reason to start learning. The traitor Asan and wanted nothing more than to rip the cocky young blonde to pieces, but in his current condition, it just simply was impossible. He had made the mistake of underestimating the child and now he was paying the price. He was going to have to abandon his plans with Sanadi and his prized sword. This isn't over. I'll get you for this. Orochimaru hissed as he, Kimimuro, and Kabuto sunk into the ground and disappeared. As Naruto continued to study his new sword, Jiraiya Sunshine went over to his student and smacked him upside the head. What the hell was that you nearly gave me a heart attack? Hey. I knew exactly what I was doing. I knew that he would continue to underestimate me so if I used the Kawarimi body replacement with an Inten. Cage Bushin, he wouldn't know the wiser. Naruto's logic didn't prevent Jiraiya from smacking him on the back of his head again. That was a gutsy move kid. But next time, don't scare me like that. It's not good for my heart to see Orochimaru stab you through your throat with his sword. Shizun and Sanadi then approached the pair. The most notable thing was that Sanadi was no longer having a fit due to the blood on her hand. Sanadi sama Your hand. Are you okay? Shizun asked in concern for her mentor. Sanadi studied her hand and didn't flinch. And for the first time in a long time, the Senju princess smiled. Yeah, Shizun. I'm fine. Hey, Brett. Naruto and Jiraiya turned to Tsunadi. Yes. I wanted you to know that that was a pretty dumb move going at a Sanin like that. You just lucked out because the snake was too overconfident and arrogant for his own good. If you had gone up against either Jiraiya or me, you would have gotten destroyed. 
Naruto's eyebrow twitched a little bit. And also. You were right. I shouldn't have scoffed at Dan's and Nawaki's dreams after their deaths. I should have kept those dreams strong. So, thank you. Naruto's face immediately softened. You're welcome, Bachan. Suddenly a more demonic killing intent than the Kaiubi flooded their surroundings. What did you just call me? Tsunade screamed and her face contorted to show her full fury. Iraya simply face palmed. Just when they'd just gotten rid of a headache, his apprentice had to go and mention Tsunade's age. Well, on the bright side, the worst was probably over, and now they could all go back to Kanoha in peace now. Maybe now he could peek at Tsunade. Better yet, he could peek at Tsunade while she was in the hot springs with other girls. Oh, the possibilities. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.